Sir, you're charged with especially aggravated kidnapping. You're also charged with aggravated assault. And you're charged with theft of a firearm worth less than $2,500. You're talking about stuff that is not relevant. Hello and welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the recovery addict, and boy do I have a case for you today. Why is a dog Whoa. chewing on this guy? I think they have got the wrong guy they there. Got the wrong guy. The dog was, was biting him. He roughing him up quite a bit. There's a lawsuit. Nine out of ten judges prefer watching the recovery addict live stream in their court. The fireworks are not done. Oh, the commentary on the kid. That me he angry on for in service for the I didn't ask you to interrupt me. Oh, for Trump's sake. Bring the jury. Bring the jury. Bring the jury. There's a good old Judge Newman. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? Oh, we probably should. I need to turn this off. I want that to be the least intrusive possible. Is that right? All right. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Happy Friday. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. I am the recovery addict. I object. And I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. We can start now. I'm a tiny, tiny, tiny bit late, but it almost doesn't count because I'm so close to being on time. Happy Friday. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all of you that joined us for the podcast last night. If you missed that, uh, you might want to go back and rewatch it. It will take you down memory lane. And uh, and we'll throw you uh, throw you into the world of reruns and, and TV shows from from yesteryear. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I always feel a little dizzy at this part of the song. All right, uh, let's see live chat. There we go. Where are we at? We need we need some uh, comments on screen. That's not. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? Let's toggle that back off. That was no good. There we go. Um, that's that's not what we wanted. How about this one? Sample user uh, sent me well, a video of roaches fighting. I don't know who won. You don't know who won. You need to watch the video again. Uh, not sample user. Sample user did not win. Eighties music man first in chat. Congratulations, eighties music man. You were here uh, bright and early. Bright and early. Got got in first in chat. Uh, you know what happens. Although you haven't been first in chat very much, I think this is a repeat offense for you. But I, I think this might only be like a second time. A second time offense, so you're you're not you're not necessarily like a habitual offender, but this is a troublesome path that you are on, um, and and so to to help dissuade you from this this life of crime which you seem to have chosen, uh, we're going to punish you. When are we going to break for lunch, Judge? Uh, around lunchtime, we're going to punish you with internet ownership, and uh, you have to maintain everything internet related worldwide. In addition to uh, being the uh, the expert you are on everything related to eighties music. Uh, congratulations, it is Music Man. Emily, Emily Gunin, welcome to the gallery. Good to have you as a brand new member this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Krista, she says, <laughs> she's been here for nine months. She says, longer than all four of my pregnancies. <laughs> Krista, thank you. Thank you. Hopefully more enjoyable. Somebody just sent me a video of roaches fighting. I don't know who won. You know, you've got to watch those videos. I'm going to have to YouTube roach fight videos. Uh, shells, yay, a new color left to all. Shells, you have an orange courthouse. It blends in almost almost perfectly. Let's see. See, it's right here. See, right, right here. I can drag it. I can drag it off and put it, you know, on my shirt or something. It is orange. I can see it. I can see it. Uh, congratulations, Shells. 12 months of support from you. Appreciate it. Would not be the same without you here, Shells. Thank you so much. Someone with more experience. Uh, I need to I need to fix those ones so they don't talk over each other. I rescue dogs. Woohoo! 11 months from snowy Wisconsin. It is it is cold. Winter is winter is here, folks. Folks, it is here. Uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, it is cold outside and it's getting cold inside as well. <laughs> so please stay warm, stay safe. If you have to drive, uh, do so carefully and, and follow a snowplow. I rescue dogs. 11 months. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you being here as well. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? We probably should. Uh, Karen, uh, great podcast last night. Thank you. Thank you. Last night was a lot of fun. Had a, a, a great, a wonderful podcast. Had a lot of good people there. Uh, good comments, good suggestions. Man, I, I found out that I watched, I watched way too much TV. For, for, a, for being a kid that grew up in a house without a television, I watched way too much TV as a kid. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, we're not uh, we're not streaming the the status hearing at ten thirty Central. I dropped murder. We're not doing that one, Rosebud. We're following the treehouse murder right now out of Florida. We're trying to play catch up. That's why we're starting a little bit early because we have to catch up on everything that's uh, that's going on in in that case. And uh, so we're we're trying we're trying. Oh my goodness, we're trying to to get caught up. Hopefully today we can do it. Is there a cure for recovery addicts? No, it's uh, unfortunately it's terminal. Recovery is terminal. Uh, isn't the perks of living in an old house a really good insulation? Uh, or isolation? Do you mean insulation? Angela, the, the problem is when you get old enough, uh, like before asbestos was invented, which worked really well for insulation and things like that, before that was invented, then the insulation was poor. And, and, I, and that's where I'm at. I'm at the poor insulation stage. So... It was uh, frost outside the house, very, no frost inside the house, although my, my water bottles nearly froze because we have an unheated accessory room where we, we, it's our, we use it as our laundry room. Okay, so it's, it's a, it was built onto the house. Uh, they sort of like just built it and sort of attached it to the house and then cut a hole in to make a door, access upstairs and access downstairs. In that room, that's where we keep my water bottles that I use for my show. And uh, they're very nearly frozen very nearly frozen uh, in that room because it's unheated but very very chilly all right uh let's see who else do we have here in chat we had uh we had becky new member for five months the longest membership i have is this channel not surprising because i love your channel thank you becky i appreciate that thanks for the kind words sen advocate says loved last night's podcast i'm from the uk so i stayed up late to watch uh, and now you're up you got very little sleep sen advocate please uh Make sure you take care of yourself. Thank you very much for being here from the UK. Bug Duggar, love being here with you all. Eight months. Thank you, Bug Duggar. Love having you here with us. Uh, let's see. Snowy in Montello, Wisconsin. Working from home. I, I love that. Working from home is great. Draft Guild House here too. It's, it's got personality. It's got a lot of personality. If it helps anything, I'm currently in a building that is like 300 years old. Angela, that is that is very old. Much older. We, we don't have... A lot of structures like that here in the United States. Obviously, our our national history is is uh, is abbreviated uh, for for most of us. There, there's obviously some history that goes back a lot further, but um, that history usually doesn't include architecture. Um, usually, so so yeah, I, it's interesting. You go over to Europe. I I was over in in England one time. I was staying in an apartment that was built in like 1100. We were throwing darts and uh, darts at the wall. Apparently, it was like a historic house, and like the plaster and everything was that old. Crazy, uh, crazy, crazy. Uh, big, big Mary Tedeschi, big gift from Mary Tedeschi. Uh, five recovery addict memberships. Thanks for starting off with that big, big gift this morning, Mary. Thank you so much. Um, looks like Angela, Angelo, Marmite, Regina. Oh, sorry, not Regina. You talked in the middle of it. Uh, Misty Beard, Becca, and Missy Didi Moo. All, uh, all gifted memberships from that. Buffer sound, buffer sound. Um, we have Gia with a birthday tomorrow. Krista Johnson has a birthday tomorrow. Miss Kitty has a birthday on Sunday. So we've got three three birthdays to sing to. Uh, you guys know the drill. Everyone is required to sing. It's part of, uh, it's, it's like a YouTube terms of service thing. You've agreed to it when you, when you download the app. So uh, join in here now. We're going to sing to these three. Everybody, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Gia, Krista, and Miss Kitty. Happy birthday to you. Have a have a wonderful birthday weekend, all of you. That sounds that sounds amazing. Finally, chat. Let me chat. Great podcast last night. Thank you, Helita. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's lovely summer here in South Africa. Gerda, we might need to visit. We might need to visit because it's it's chilly. Um, it's windy inside. <laughs> EJF, this is the best description of an old house I've ever heard. I've ever heard. It's windy inside. The walls the walls are more... Um, they encourage the weather to stay out, but they don't keep it out. They're not, they're not very good at that. To everyone who's celebrating a birthday today or this weekend, happy birthday. Thanks for being here. It's wonderful to to be with all of you and enjoy all the good things that are coming your way. And I hope you get them all, including free pancakes. All right. Uh, with that, uh, with that, not out of the way, but with that accomplished, I think I, we don't want to say we're getting 
birthdays out of the way. That that seems like it seems not as nice. Need to make sure we've got different feeds. Okay. Everything's good. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to pick up uh did you guys notice my uh, my thumbnail today? Did you notice my thumbnail? Let's get to court. Come on. We're going to do it in just a second. Uh the thumbnail today, I I will have to tell you, I I did it myself. <laughs> I drew it myself. It's a little kid's drawing of a treehouse with a crime scene. I, I think I'm going to add items to it because there's a lot of space. There's a lot of real estate in the picture that uh, that as, as court develops and maybe maybe different um, facts get introduced in the case, we, we have some room. So we have some suggestions on what to add um, in the same style as the original uh, drawing. Uh, we're going to update the, the thumbnail as the trial progresses. So. What we used to make it. I used Canva on that one, people for real. Um, I've got a pro version of Canva, so it gives me a few more options than the free version. And it had some, it was, it was basically click art, uh, clip art. All right. Uh, let's see. It used the, the sky was a background. The grass was a background. The tree was a picture. The, the tape was a picture. The sun was a picture. And I added text. I think that's it. So it was just those elements. All right, we are going to uh, we're going to get started on the trial right now. Court is now, in session. Court is now in session. All rise. Yes. Now realize we're picking up still on day one. We're picking up still on day one, so we've got a little bit of of catch up to do to get caught up. We are watching this a little bit faster, so we can get caught up because we do we do eventually want to be real time with the trial. Somebody so. just sent me a video of roaches fighting. Mm -hmm. I don't know who won. Don't know who won. That's that's distressing. How do you how do you determine which roach wins? Is it the the one who was able to crawl away? Anyway, we'll uh, we'll talk about that later. Let's uh, let's go back to court here, uh, where we have another witness getting ready to be called on the stand. On the right, we have our defendant, Mr. Tucker. Uh, he is a pro se defendant, meaning he's uh, he's he's his own lawyer, and he's doing an okayish job. We also have a. Uh, a counter that we're going to bring on screen for you here in just a minute. The counter is how many times Mr. Tucker gets educated on like lawyer, lawyer in 101. How many times that occurs during this, uh, during this trial. And we think it's going to be, it's going to be a lot. He's already had two times where the judge is like, okay, now this Mr. Tucker, um, this is, this is the part where you do X, Y, Z. Um, Mr. Tucker, I believe I'm, I'm just guessing here. I think he moonlights as a as a casino card dealer, and he came straight from work. I'm just I'm just guessing on that one. Uh, key lime is what we decided the color of the walls were. By the way, key lime. We've already had the opening statements. We had those yesterday, Tina. So you'll you'll have to go back and rewatch. We're we're catching up quickly. We've had opening statements on the first witness. And we're ready to. Uh, to go from there so let me uh let's see oh, that's a that's a close shave um good good focus there on the <laughs> on the not bald head but nearly i mean it's uh it hurts the eyeballs avocado you think would be a little greener this is this is florida and it's it's down south in florida i believe so it's like key west key lime i thought those two would probably go together Okay, let's see. We had storms and tornado warnings all night. We've got more of those tonight as well. Uh, Thomas might be doing a live stream tonight as, as things get a little crazy after after court ends, so keep that in mind. Did someone say a little greener? It says greeners. All right, we're going to we're gonna get everything uh, going here. Let me, I need that. To, let's see, where are my presets? I know what I need. I just need my, my computer, my, my broken iPad, which is smashed. I can literally see the back of my iPad through the front of my iPad. But it still turns on. Okay, so we have, we have a downstream keyer to turn on as well. I think it's on two. Yep, Law 101, and now we cut to, there we go. Here's our counter. 
All right, did iguanas fall out of the trees this morning in Florida? I'm I'm waiting for a video. Somebody needs to send it if it happens. I I don't want I don't want you to send me a video from the internet. I want you to film it as it happens. Okay, like uh, find an iguana that's just like about to give up and and just say forget it. I'm bailing out of this tree. It's too cold, and film it. I'd like to see you know your own footage of an iguana falling out of a tree. That way we know it's not like CG or AI created. Um. If I used this courtroom as a backdrop, it would be transparent. Wondering. I could key out I could key out their walls. I could make their walls turn black, but then I'd have to have something in back of it. Hmm. It would be a flat color. I could put a flat color in back of the, the, the image that we're watching right here and key out their wall color. And so the flat color would come through. So we'd have like purple walls instead. Is that? When are we going to break for lunch, Judge? I might, I might play with that, but not live. We're, we're trying to follow court here. And Angela's like, no, 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 don't do that. Uh, 74 in Fort Lauderdale. That is not uh, iguana falling weather. Kevin Bacon, good morning, fellow jurors. Happy TGIF. Thank you, Kevin. I had the little bacon this morning as well. I like a little, uh, I know this is a break, we could probably fast forward through this, but we are getting to see, you know, a little, a little about the courtroom, the clerks, the personnel in the, in the room. There's the judge's bench. Camera's just, just, you know, getting a feel for the room. Practicing on the Zoom. You know, there's there's a first time for everything. Sometimes there's a first time for a cameraman. Sometimes there's a first time for a lawyer. But no no time like Have the present to practice. With more experience. Nicole Wise, yay for two months. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's been a wonderful two months. Hope you, you're here for many, many more. Let's see. Camera Somebody making just me sent me a video of roaches fighting. I don't, I don't know, know who, who won. won. I don't know who won. Love that audio we got this week uh, from uh, Judge Boyd. That was hilarious. Uh, we can skip the dull moment, moments. Moments. Just give me one minute, and we'll uh, we'll get it. We'll get it skipped. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We're waiting. Are we going to address subject matter jurisdiction? Not yet. I'm going to skip through this part. Oh, man, it's taking a long time. I thought it was just a brief break, but it's it's actually substantial. Oh, there we go. Hang on, hang on. Almost there, almost there. Bring the jury. Okay, here we go. So we're going to switch to... I'm not Super a camera. Super source box source two is going to be camera two. How about that? We're going to jump ahead just a tiny bit because, wow. Okay, so now let me fix box three. Is that correct? Now we go back to three. Here we go. Him that they're having a difficult time hearing you. So uh, I, I'll try to speak to my yeah, I'll try Somebody to just sent me a now. video of roaches Definitely fighting. To your benefit to uh, speak louder or into the mic. I think it's funny that the judge is saying. Better, Your Honor. Actually, is there anyone turn this up? We're having a difficult time hearing you. Uh, I think it's probably there. We can't hear the judge. When you're at the podium and uh, um, questioning witnesses, and you tend to be a bit soft-spoken, so. Okay, I'll try and speak louder. Yeah. All right, so we've got all the jurors in the jury room. Yes, uh, the state's got their next witness standing by. Yes, Your Honor. Right. So let's bring the jurors back. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Uh, Cakesboo just gifted five memberships. Thank you. Thank you, Cakesboo. Uh, Divine Creations by Melanie, Deborah Larson, Karen Powers, <laughs> Nanar, Jen W. All gifted memberships by Cake Spoon. Thank you very much. 
Yes, the defendant is pro se. This is this is not the same as a sov sit. Oftentimes we see sov sit and pro se together, but sov sit believes that uh, the government has no power over them and they're their own person and no one can control them. Um, that's not what he's saying. He's just, he is his own lawyer. I believe he wanted standby counsel and was not be seated, granted that. Eric, yeah, this is this is definitely a, a risky move. For sure. Welcome back to the courtroom, members of the jury. I hope you enjoyed your break. Uh, at this particular point in time, we're back on the record. We're going to resume with presentation of the state's case in chief. So, counsel, your next witness. Yes, Your Honor, it's time to do a call. Detective Marcus Del Valle, the U.S. Court. All right. Detective Marcus Del Valle. Detective Marcus is headed up to the stand. He's our second witness. The first, uh, the first uh, witness was the police officer, the lady police officer who was first on scene um, and realized that this is, um, when, we when we talk about on scene, we are talking about a actual tree house. Okay? We're, we're, talking about, um, we're talking about this tree house right here. This, this was the murder scene. This, was, this is where it all went down. Sir, uh, please come forward through the gate, approach the deputy right in front of the witness stand there. Closer there. Um, that's good. Turn, face the clerk, raise your right hand. Be strongly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give and the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and what we got. Yes, ma'am. Please have a seat on the witness stand. She has that memorized. Who's mumbling just off the camera? Commissioner, proceed, Your Honor. Yes. Detective, good morning. Good morning. Please state your name and spell your last name for the jury, please. Uh, Marcus Del Valle, last name is D-E-L-V-A-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And how are you cu currently employed? Excuse me? Where are you currently employed? <clears throat> city of Key West Police Department. And how long have you been employed with the City of Key West Police um, Department? Since 2012, and prior to that, a year and a half as a reserved uh, officer. Okay. And uh, I'd like to direct your attention to November 17th of 2017. Were you working as a detective at that time? Uh, yes. And did you have an opportunity to, to respond out to an uh, alleged incident in Stock Island? Yes, sir. Okay, and what, what was your role out there? Um, I was called in. I was off that day, but I was called in by a sergeant on the unit. Uh, there had been an incident that occurred, and they needed uh, somebody to process the scene. We already had one detective out there that worked for QS Police, and they needed a second one, so I responded to assist him in processing the scene. Do you remember what the name of that other detective was? Uh, Stephen Mitchell. Okay, very well. Please describe for the jury your responsibilities and duties in processing the scene. What does that entail? Uh, process, I'm one of the uh, field evidence technicians uh, in processing the scene is picking up evidence, uh, documented evidence, um, <coughs> taking measurements and whatever needs to be uh, done to processing, which includes also photographing the, uh, the scene. Okay. When you responded there, did you uh, respond to what's commonly referred to as a treehouse? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to walk through the scene? Uh, briefly, I did. When I got there, I met up with Detective uh, Mitchell. Um, and he gave me a little tour of what was going on. Um, there was two scenes, one outside, one inside. I took a walk through the treehouse, which was a wooden structure, and walked through. He showed me what was going on so I could get uh, just of what was going on. And, and yes, I did walk through it. Okay. Permission to approach the witness, Sean? Yes. Yes. Yes, you may approach. It is Key Lime on the walls. We are in Key West, Florida. The law tracker is how many times the defendant, who is pro se, has to be educated on what he needs to do as his own defense. So basically, the higher the score, the worse job he is doing. Okay. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure. He's looking at this exhibit like he's never seen it before. One more, right? Or is that the last one? That's the last one. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yep. Yes. Detective Devine, I'd like to show you on the previously marked state exhibit B12 for identification. Actually, take a look at the photos. Please let me know if you recognize it. I believe he's in custody. Um. But he, he can't be, like, shackled for his own defense.
Oh, he's out on bond. Okay, that that's even better. My understanding is he has yes, no standby. Yes, that's um, beginning counsel. with the first photo is going to be the um, interior looking out of the property, okay. um, and then the rest of it's going to be going up the stairs up to the to the area where uh, where they had the couch uh, located at. Um, we walked through that. I walked up up the staircase and then back up down, and then <clears throat> that was pretty much what I'd done on that portion of the uh, the treehouse itself. It would be safe to say that's the walkthrough portion, correct? Yes. Yeah, it was okay. the walkthrough that I'd done. And do they accurately and fairly depict the way the treehouse looked on the night of the incident? Yes, absolutely. Any objection? Nope. All right. Nope. No. Let's get a mark. We'll admit <coughs> the, uh, the ID exhibit into evidence as the states. Two A through two A to two L. Composite exhibit for state two A through L. Angela, Angela, thank you very much. Love it. Eight months. Check the value while the clerk is marking that. Uh, a couple of questions. Do you remember what time you responded more or less that evening? Uh, to the minute I can. It was later. It was mid after late afternoon, like maybe seven or eight o'clock. Can't uh, remember exact time. The end of the day, correct? It was towards the end of the day, yes, So he was bonded out by his girlfriend, who was a co-founder of CrossFit. Possibly got married, but now they're no longer together. Although I think they still remain friends or something. It, it's it's bizarre. I'm not sure if that's going to play into this trial yes. at all. That's the entrance into the yard. Yes, and this is this is going to be the yard here. That's going up to the, that's. I think that's the first floor of the, uh, the treehouse that's going Gotta up. Got to try there. to speak up, please. I'm sorry, sir. That's the um, the first floor. That's the stairs going up to the first floor. That's part of the deck. I don't know exactly which part, but that's part of the deck. Uh, the stairs going up again. So it was three, three sets. I believe it was three sets. And that's the area where they were staying at. It's like a makeshift bed. Yeah, makeshift bed that they had, like a little common area that they were staying at. Same. This is all the same floor. Makeshift living areas, correct? Yes, sir. And that same thing there, the little the bed in the back that <coughs> they were staying at. Yes. Trouble publishing things, I think. Hopefully, it'll show up on this big screen for us. Someone's either like reading to themselves or mumbling to themselves or humming. There's some crazy facts around this case. They might not ever come out in the trial itself, but it's it's a little bit bizarre. We're just trying to publish the pictures. I'm not sure what's taking so long here, but does the treehouse treehouse have running water or electricity? I don't think it had any, any no running water, no. Uh, I know for sure no electricity. Okay. 
Now, that was your first part of your investigation, just taking a walkthrough and just kind of surveying what was going on inside to make sure everything was okay and secured. Uh, you would agree with me that one of your responsibilities as a crime scene investigator is to secure the scene and make sure that the, the scene and, and the evidence, if, if there's any, would be, would be safe, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, please explain to the jury what, what was your next part in this investigation. Uh, next part, when I re <clears throat> just to clarify, when I arrived on scene, uh, the sheriff's department already had the scene secured with crime scene tape and it was kind of isolated to that area where it happened at. Um, I went outside my, um, there was two scenes. One was the inside of the property, mm -hmm. which Detective Mitchell processed. The second portion of that was the outside, which was the street, um, all the way down to uh, running east on that on the main street. So I started picking up uh, <clears throat> evidence that was laying in the street that was part of the scene. Uh, that was my my primary task in that scene was uh, collecting the outside evidence. You remember what type of evidence, evidence you collected on the outside of the scene? Yeah, there was um, prior to me getting there. There was uh, Detective Mitchell collected a hundred dollar bill that was laying outside. He showed it to me, showed me where it was at. We then I it. went down the street. I collected a uh, numerous amount of change, quarters, dimes, nickels. Um, there was um, a lot of uh, personal items as far as makeup that was strong through the, the whole street wow. that I started marking and photographing and, and collecting. But it's it was mainly um, uh, personal items, and it appeared to be like a, from possibly a female's purse. Did you ever have an opportunity to speak to Ms. Belmonte? I spoke to no one on the scene. Okay. Yes, that's the uh, the same property, and that's the the mailbox going to the property. Is that the outside the interior? Yeah, property? yes, sir. Okay, do they fairly and accurately reflect the outside and interior, exterior of the property as they were on the evening? Of course. Yes, sir. Permission to stay with them to move this new trial. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Admit that exhibit the state's next in order, which I believe would be three A three. Really briefly with uh, with their wall colors, if you guys can indulge me. What were the next things you did on this case that evening? That evening was uh, collect all the items that were strong on the street. We photographed it, like I said, you know, photographed it, documented it, <coughs> collected it, packaged it, and then we passed it on to the detectives that were with Monroe County Sheriff's Office okay. that were working the case. And the street you referred to, what street was that? I believe Laurel. Laurel. Yes, Laurel. sir. Okay. time did you finish on the scene that evening? Do you remember? That evening, I believe it was like 11 o'clock at night, 11.30 at night. It was late. Okay. Did you have an opportunity to go back the next day, or did you need to go back the next day for anything? Uh, the next day, I did go back. It was later, <clears throat> excuse me, later in the afternoon. I did, I did go back. Uh, Detective Mitchell called me. He had been called out because they had found some other evidence um, in a yard. So I responded and uh, assisted Detective Mitchell as he collected some evidence. Okay, let's hold it right there and let him finish. Okay. All right. Uh, nothing like doing it in live in prod. Um, I need to figure out how to, uh, what I want behind it.
source camera on. Lots of pauses here. Um, the prosecution should be the ones that are on the ball. I, I would expect, I would sort of expect the defense to be the one that's sort of going slowly. I think the pause we're having right here is they're, they're physically handing the pictures around to the jury members. And they, it's like, it's like when you take something really cool to your, your class, like your Disneyland pictures to your third grade class for show and tell, and you pass around every single picture your family took and everyone has to look at each one and pass it to the kid behind. I think that's what they're doing right now is they're passing the pictures around to the jury members and the jury members are taking their, their sweet time looking at it. Are the walls really that yellow? Yes, we're in Key West. So Key Lime Pie, it's, uh, it looks like uh, breadcrumbs or I guess it's uh, graham cracker crumbs and Key Lime is the, the theme they went for decorations in this courthouse. So that, I'm sorry. The next day you went back out because what, 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 you received a call from uh, Detective Mitchell? Yes. And what was the purpose of that call? Um, Sheriff's Department, I guess I got a call. Um, from a gentleman that owned a trailer part, uh, trailer on the property, that he had found uh, possible evidence uh, in his yard um, off of Laurel Avenue. If you go down, um, I guess to the east, to the end of the street, there's a trailer there at the time, and he had called that he had found uh, evidence, which uh, was a knife. Okay. So, you, did you respond to the scene? Yes, I responded there and uh, uh, met up with Detective uh, Mitchell, who was already on the scene. He was uh, in the process of taking pictures of the knife that was in a planner. So you assisted Detective Mitchell in recovering the knife? Yes, sir. And do you know exactly where the knife was located? On the the knife was located on this uh, gentleman's property. Um, as you walk into the property, to the left of the property, there was uh, like a planner, and the knife was sitting inside of the planner. Permission to push the witness, Yes. That yes gets me every time. I can key out any color. The problem is uh, some of the skin tones are very close, like where he's got lighter colored hair. His skin tone at the right angle with the lighting uh, is the same color as the wall. And so it would key that out as well. It would also key out the reflections in the coffee pot. It might yes, sir. key out some of the back of the monitor. This is a... Um, I'll play with it later. The knife that was inside of the planner. It, it's still sitting in the planner, but it's a um, knife that did have what appeared to have uh, blood on it. Is that the knife you recovered? Yeah, I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Any objection? No. Well, it's admitted as four, and it's a composite with how many parts? Four, eight, three, eight. Ashley, we're still on yesterday. This is the second witness of the trial. It's the detective. Uh, the first, the first responding officer has already testified. We need a slice of key lime pie added to our our thumbnail image. So when they say "publish to the jury," that's that's keyword for we're all going to stand around and wait while the jury members one at a time review the printed out pictures. Let's see. Let me check Canva for key lime pie. Yes, we have a key lime pie. I think we should put the key lime pie on the, uh, the tire swing.
The floor, yes, the floor would also be colored out. It would also disappear because the the I don't know. Generally, you want to have like accenting um, colors between the floor and the wall, but they've they've gone with the same same. There's probably like a a sale at, at the Home Depot on Key Lime for that time. So. <coughs> DMB. I've heard we've we've got some crazy witness situations uh, taking the stand. Some of the witnesses are participants or were involved in this incident. Okay, some of them were pled guilty. Some are testifying against him. The the lady that was apparently robbed is testifying for him. Like he called her as his witness. How long this trial is? I I don't know. It's still going on. I don't know how long it's slated to last though. If somebody could find out, that would be great to know. Detective Devine, after you and Detective Mitchell secured the knife, what did you do with the knife? The knife was uh, collected. It was boxed, and uh, the Detective Mitchell passed it on to the uh, Monroe County Sheriff's Office uh, detectives with a proper chain of command, uh, custody uh, form and all that. Do you have any other involvement in this case as far as investigation? Uh, as far as investigation, that was it. Um, prior to, yeah, that was it. We collected that, and I think that was it. Uh, Detective Mitchell did collect some stuff before I got there, mm -hmm. but I wasn't present for that. Very well. Thank you for your testimony. Mm -hmm. I have no further questions, Sean. Say we're The bailiff butler has refilled the judge's mug twice so far in court. That's why his only job is to refill the judge's mug. Detective Duvalier, right? Yes, sir. We just met <coughs> outside, right? You know, we just introduced ourselves. Um, first time I've ever met you, right? Yep. Okay, good. Um, now, that investigation, I, you know, I know I remember a lot about Stephen Mitchell and what he did. Um, I wasn't sure how much you were there for. Um, was there any problems with gathering any of the evidence? No problems at all. Um, what about uh, tire tracks from the truck? Tire tracks, uh, yeah, he's, that was, uh, he took a uh, sample of the tire tracks mm -hmm. and due to the, um, the kit that we used that was out of date and it didn't adhere to the tire track that was next to uh, Cos uh, Cosmos uh, Yes. Next to the marine, but that was, was it, it's a marina or yes, a marina or a marine store. Right? Uh, marina, uh, marina, marina. They work on engines. But uh, there were tire tracks there. You guys tried to get it. Yes, and he, yes, and uh, Detective Mitchell tried to pick them up. You know, uh, here and put a it's a form that you put on there, and it's uh, you use like plaster of Paris, put it on, mix it with water. He's the one that done all that process of doing it, but it didn't uh, it didn't adhere to it, so he wasn't able to pick nothing up. No, um, any uh, you know, I asked. Uh, Deputy Mueller, same thing. Uh, you said when you got there, they'd already blocked off the street? Or was it yes, still the street just the was, was, everything was the Yes, the scene was secured and blocked off. Okay, it was already secured and blocked off? Yes, sir. Um, so you weren't there prior to that? Prior to so them blocking off the street? No, the street, when I got there, the right. uh, scene was already blocked off and secured. Okay. No I was not there. No pedestrians was, going through? Wait, we got to yeah. take one at a I'm time, sorry. so yes, sir. let him finish, and so we can keep it separated. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, when I got there, uh, that I was called out, mm -hmm. scene was secured, there was yellow tape up, and uh, they had police, uh, deputies were already securing the scene, so I didn't I did not get there at the beginning of the call. Okay, just checking, because again, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Um, how about, um, you <laughs> know, did you guys I make sure you got all the evidence, you know, from the treehouse, or was there any left over? I mean, okay, did the, you know? The treehouse itself? Yeah, the treehouse property Detective uh, Mitchell would have to answer that. As far as the outside that I could see and saw and documented mm -hmm. that was all picked up okay. um and that the only thing that i did collect and helped him collect was the knife okay. um uh, anything that he collected you would have to talk to him to see what he put in and uh, the knife went into a box and then went to the evidence room is that, is that yes correct? sir that was uh once that was collected all items that were collected once we collected it it was turned over to the sheriff department because mm -hmm. uh, we work for the city of key west right we just assisted them and assist other agency mm -hmm. all items that were taken were properly given to the sheriff's department and documented with property receipts and chain of custody. Uh, how long receipts. that took? You're awesome. About how long? How long? That was done that yeah. night. That was passed oh, that over. same night. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Now, you said you, you know, you handled the knife that went into property. Did it ever go to the? The medical examiner? Yeah. I, make I cannot answer that thing. because it's not my case. Okay. Uh, that's something that the sheriff's department. But you would, guys boxed it up. Yeah. All we do is collect it, yeah. give it to them. Sheriff's Department is in charge of the investigation. They're the, they're the primary response uh, 
department yeah, yeah. and the detectives that are working the case ahead, the lead detective are the ones that take care of that property, send it away. Okay, good. I yeah, just want to make sure we know where all the evidence went and what okay. would happen there. Um, so that was the extent of your, you know, your investigation with this, though, right? It's just the crime scene when you first got there, the knife, and is there anything else? I think I seem to be forgetting something here. Um, pretty much that's all I've done. Uh, uh, detective... Uh, Mitchell did collect a mask, and he did put that in evidence. But you'd have but to talk to him. Yeah, you'd have to talk to him about that because he's the one that collected it. Now, is it normal for you guys to get called out when the sheriff's department investigates something, or is that, or is that kind of abnormal? We do help each other out. It's a stellar agency, which would be helping sense. each other out. On this case, um, the I believe the uh, crime scene technician was uh, out. I believe he might have been in the hospital that night, so they didn't have nobody on call to do. Uh, evidence collection, which is crime scene investigation. So we went out to assist them to, to help them do it. Okay, and, uh, you guys don't remember taking any DNA or scrapings from Paul Belmont? Uh, all that is going to have to be under Detective Mitchell's. Okay. Um, Good. You check his report, everything's in there. On I, that remember being I, can't, I cannot you. testify to something I did not do. Okay, no, I'm just checking because okay. I, I remember I even told you in the hallway, I don't even remember what you did for yeah, the most part. I'm going to object. There's no questions, counsel. Mr. Trevor trying to testify. Okay, as I said, we want to take it one step at a time in terms of question, pause, answer. So okay, I'll take it a little slower for the prosecution. For the judge as well. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Actually, uh, I don't think I have any further questions for the witness. I think you, you pretty much explained what you did. Thank you. Thank you for okay. your time today. Right. Is there a redirect examination? No, Your Honor. Right, and what about this witness? Is he, he be subject, this time. He's subject to recall or he can be excused? He may be excused. <laughs> Thank you. You Thank can step you. down and be excused. Yeah, there, there is a mic short somewhere, I think. Hopefully this gets resolved. Maybe we can approach the bench here a moment, to both sides, and address uh, scheduling. Okay, so they're going to talk about scheduling briefly. Um, okay, I'll take it slower for the prosecution. Yeah, he just throws that in. I'll take it slower because our pro the prosecutors are a little... Uh, uh, dim-witted was what he was he, what he was trying to say and the judge is like uh, it's for me too uh, not just for me but for the court clerk uh, I, I imagine that uh, that particular objection by the judge is is going to right, arise again let's see he can have a legal advisor but that person cannot sit at the table with him so it is truly standby counsel they're standing by. Maybe the sound is the Geiger counter detecting the uranium in the wall paint. Mathis, you might be on to something here. Please fix the wall color now. I'm working on it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit. I, Well, I'm, I'm not working on it, actually. I'm, I'm working on the thumbnail. I'm adding the tire tracks right now to the picture. We've already added a, a slice of, well, a whole key lime pie that's on the cut tire swing. I'll show you this when we're done, maybe at the break. But this might be one of the busiest thumbnails we ever we've ever created. Uh, we need to add some money on the ground, right? We've had money on the ground outside the, the treehouse. So let's do some. Uh, we've got a hundred dollar bill. With everyone about uh, scheduling, I like to keep the jurors as uh, apprised as I can in terms of what our schedule is. So. Uh, the state's going to call their next witness in a moment, and his testimony may have to be broken up before lunch and after lunch. So I figure uh, we'll break for lunch somewhere, you know, 12, 10, 12, 15, something like that. And you have some idea, so for purposes of planning. So, state, your next witness? Yes, sir. The state's going to call Roger Raggett. All right. Here comes Roger. So the detective's off the stand. Roger's on his way down. Um, let's see how this goes. According to Wu, from Cash Baby to Key Lime, thankful for this crew. <laughs> Thank you, according to Wu. Eight months of, of amazingness. Wouldn't be the same without you. Thank you. Sir, would you please come forward right through the gate there? You uh, get close to the deputy right here by the witness stand, this gentleman right here. That's good. Thank you very much. Stay right there. Face this lady. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in the cause now hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you God? I do. All right. Have a seat right here on the witness stand and speak loudly and clearly so we all can hear you. All right. Thank you. 
May I proceed? Yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right. I'm going to ask you for your name. What's your full name, sir? Roger Ellen Rugget. I like Rugget. How do you spell your last name? R A U G U T T. All right, Mr. Rugget. First of all, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for being here this morning. Mr. Rugged, I want to talk to you a little bit about an event that happened to you a few years ago. Yeah. Do you live in Key West? It, yes, I do. How long have you lived in Key West? Since 84. So, a long time. Long time. And um, where were you born and raised? Mulberry, South Dakota. Okay. Came to Key West in 84, you said. Is that right? Yes, I did. All right. And have you lived in Key West ever since? Yes, I have. All right. Are you currently employed? Oh, yeah. What kind of work do you do, Mr. Rugged? I'm over here at the golf course. Over at the golf course? Yes. Here in Key West? Stock Island. Stock Island, okay. And what kind of work do you do over there at the golf course? Maintenance. Maintenance work? Cut, cut grass. How long have you worked there, Mr. Rugged? Since 84. Been there since 84? Yeah. All right. And do you live down here? Stock Island, Key West, yes. Okay. Do you have a home or an apartment? Where do you, where do you, what kind of uh, uh, do you I live have in? A, I got a trailer over here. All right. Now, Mr. Rugger, you said you've been in Key West since 1984, is that right? Oh, yes, 84. All right. And you've lived your life down here, right? Since 84? Uh, yeah, 84. During your yeah, lifetime down here, did you become friends with a woman known as Paula Belmonte? Yes, I have. All right. Why don't you tell the jury, how did you become friends with Miss Belmonte? We partied together. You partied together? Yes. All right. Tell us about that. What does that mean when you say you partied together? Well, we had uh, drank, smoked. All right, well, let's break that down. You said you drank. You drank alcohol? Yes. What kind of alcohol did you drink with her? Bud Light. Did she also drink Bud Light? Occasionally. Um, was beer your beverage of choice? Yes. All right. What about hard alcohol? Did you, did you uh, used to uh, intake Captain, any hard Captain alcohol? Morgan, Captain Morgan. All right. A little well, bit of Captain Morgan. And what about Miss Belmonte? Did she also enjoy hard liquor, too? No, no, I don't think so. Nope, she stuck to the beer? Yeah. All right, now you said you used to party together, right? Yeah. How often would you get together with her to party? Daily, weekly, once a month? Yeah, well, yeah, three times a month or three, I mean, uh, three times a week or something. <laughs> month, three times a week? week. Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> All right, remember. and when you'd party with her, where would you party? My place, her place. Okay, you said your place, you have a trailer over on Stock Island, right? Yes, yes I did. I what, did. What was her place? Like, where did you used to party with her when you went to her place? Different places, you know, uh, where she used to live. Did she have a permanent home? Not really. No, she moved around quite a bit, like like me. Was she ever homeless? Oh, yeah. I'm L sure she was. Living on the streets? Uh-huh. Yes, she was. And you guys would still get together and party and what have you? Yes, we would. Now, you said you used to party together, and you said you used to drink, right? Yes. And you said you guys used to also smoke. Yes. What did you guys smoke? Tobacco? Tobacco. All right. Did you ever do any hard drugs with her? Like coke and crack. Like cocaine, cocaine? Yeah. yes, sir. Yeah, we smoked crack and snorted coke and smoked cigarettes and. You smoked crack with her? Did you smoke the crack? Yes. Did she used to smoke crack as well? Yes. We're talking about crack cocaine, right? Yes. And how do you smoke it? You 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 smoke it? You put it? You heat it up? How do you, how do you do that? You, you put it in a stem. They call it they call a stem, and then you light it up and puff. And, and that's how you get the high from that, from ingesting the, the smoke, I guess, from it? Yeah, you get high from ingesting the smoke. All right. And you said you used to smoke crack with Miss Belmonte, right? Paula. Or Paula. Okay, fair enough, Paula. How often would you guys smoke crack together? Uh, three times a week. Okay. Who used to supply it? Did you supply it? Did nope. she supply it? She did. She supplied it? Yes, she did. Did you used to pay her for, your, for what you smoked, or did she just share it with you? She shared it with me, and sometimes uh, I paid for it. All right. And you guys would, would, I guess the word you used was party together, right? Yes, I would. All right. Um, it's a hard lifestyle, right? Uh, yeah, it's, you don't lose a lot of sleep. Yeah? Takes its toll, right? Takes its toll. Yes, it does. All right, but you've, this is the lifestyle you've lived. Is that fair to say? Say again? Is that, but that is the lifestyle you lived, right? Oh, yeah. Is that fair to say? Lifestyle. And is Lincoln that the lifestyle? Smoking. Drinking and smoking, yeah. Okay, and is that the lifestyle that Paula lived as well? Oh, yes. Oh, now, at some point, did Paula take up residence in something called the Treehouse? Oh, yes. All right, let's tell the jury, what is this place called the Treehouse? What exactly is it? A man has built a stairway up around on top of his trailer, and, uh, 
And Paul needs to stay up there. And that was there was it an actual tree in, in, in the center of this no, structure? It just wasn't no, it was no tree. It was just actual uh, part that a man built. Stairway going up. Next to his trailer, you said, right? Over the top of his trailer. And the man that built it, do you know what his name is? Yeah. What's his name? Fred. I mean, uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Matt. Matthew? No, it wasn't Matthew. Either. It was. He's just guessing. I, 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 you don't remember? Know. Fred. Or Ed or Fred. Like okay. That. He's the one that built this structure. Yes, he did. Now, you said Paula was living there, right? Yes, she was. Or she was staying there, so to speak. She was living there. All right, now you say she was living there, but um, Mr. Ragan, I want to be clear. This is not a, a fully functioning home, per se, right? No, it's just a deck up there. I mean, is there running water in this structure? No, no running water. No, no bathroom facilities? No bathroom facilities. What about electricity? Is there any electricity? No electricity. So at nighttime, I guess it gets pretty dark, right? Yes, it did. So what'd you guys do for light at nighttime when you'd be over there partying? Flashlights. I couldn't hear you. What was that? Flashlights. Oh, flashlight. Okay. Fair enough. So there were flashlights, and I guess that was the way you guys would uh, would illuminate the place at night. That's how you bring some light yes. to the place. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, how long? Do you remember, like, how long Paula had was staying at this place called the Treehouse? Six months. I'm six, you know, about six months, I reckon. Was it was it normal for her to, to move around a lot, or did she stay put? It was normal for her to move around a lot. Okay. Do you remember, or do you know, rather, was she paying anybody money to stay in this facility? Like, did she pay anybody rent to live there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I never mentioned okay. money. Did you know a man named Matthew Bonnet? Matthew Bonnet. No, I didn't. Didn't know him? All right. But you knew Paula, right? Yes, I knew Paula. Okay, so you're there partying with Paula. Um, I want to take you back to August of 2017. Do you remember that month? Uh, August 17, yeah. All right. Something big happened, right? while you were over with Paula one night? Yes, it did. All right, let's tell the jury about what happened. Do you remember the specific date? No. And I'm sorry, I said August. Let's, I, I think I meant to say November. It was uh, November of 2017. Do you recall that date? Yes. All right, and do you remember where Paula was living at that point in time? Yes, I do. Where was she living? Up in that tree house. All right, now I want to talk about the date specifically, November 17th of 2017. All right. Is that where she was living? Yes, she was. All right. Um, had you been over there to visit her yes, when she was living there? Yes, I was. And on November 17th, were you over there on that particular day? Yes, I was. Was that the first time you'd gone over there, or had you been over there no, before? I've been up there several times. All right, and again, you guys would party. Is that fair? Yes, we were. Yes, we were. So when you went over there on November, when you went over there on November 17th, did you go? What was the purpose in going over there? Well, it was a visit with Matt, which I remember now. Matt or, or her, you know. All right. Which now, you said Matt. You do remember Matt. I remember now. Okay. Who's Matt? Matt is the owner of the property. All right. And is that the one that lived in that trailer? Yes. All right. Do you remember his last name? No, I don't. If I told you the name Bonnet, does that ring any bells? No, it don't. All right. Well, how did you know him as? Matt? Just Matt. Just Matt. Okay. So, would you ever party with Matt? Yes. And where would you party with him? In his, in his trailer? Yes. And what kind of stuff did you do with Matt when you partied? Play, play chess. Play chess? Did you ever drink alcohol with him? Yes. And again, what kind of alcohol did you guys drink? Beer. Is that what Matt drank as well? Yes. Ever drink, Matt ever drink hard alcohol? No. All right. What about the crack cocaine? Did you ever share or, or do crack cocaine with Matt? Yes. Did he used to do it as well? Yes. All right. So you were friendly with Matt as well as Paula. Is that fair to say? Uh, Paula, Paula and Matt, yes. Now on November 17th of 2017, do you recall going over to the treehouse that day? Yes, I do. All right. Do you remember what time you went over there? Oh, it was about 2.34 o'clock. Sun's still up or had it gotten dark the already? Sun was still up. Sun was still up? Yeah. And when you went over there, who did, do you remember who you went to visit that day? Paula. Was Paula? Was she there when you went over? Yes. Now, did you have a way to contact her? I mean, did she have a phone or anything yes. like that? Yes, cell phone. And did you have a phone? Yes. So when you'd go to visit her, would you contact her first or would you just show up? I'd just show up. Or, All right. Or just call her. All right. On November 17th, do you remember, did you call her that day or did you just show up? No, I just showed up, I believe. Just showed up? Yes. All right. And um, Mr. Um, Raggett, if you need any water, I can get you some water just so you know, okay? No, I'm fine. You all right? Okay. Um, so, Mr. Raggett, you said you went over there to visit with Paula. Is that right? Yes, I did. Sun's still up? Yes, it was. Daylight? Daylight. And is she at the treehouse? 
She's in treehouse. And do you make contact with her? Yes. And where did you make contact with her? Inside the treehouse? Yeah, upstairs, not the treehouse, yes. All right. And did you guys do any partying that day? Yes. All right. And again, just so we're clear, Mr. Raggett, so the jury's clear. When you say partying, what on this particular day, what were you guys doing? Were you drinking? Yes. Alcohol? I was. She wasn't. She wasn't drinking alcohol? No. What were you drinking? Beer. Okay. Bud Light. Bud Light. All right. And you said Paula wasn't drinking that day, right? She wasn't drinking. Okay. What about what about the crack cocaine? Were you guys doing crack cocaine that day? Yes, we were. Were, were was Paula doing crack cocaine? Crack cocaine? Yes, she was. And were you doing crack cocaine? Yes, I was. All right, and again, that's where you heat it up and in, inhale it, I guess, yes, right? We, yes, we did. Okay, so uh, where did the supply come that day that you guys were smoking? Did we, you bring it or did Paula have it? Paula had it. She had the, the, the supply. Yes. Did she ever sell it to you? Yes. Did she sell to other people? Yes. Were you ever there when she sold to other people? Yes. All right. So explain that to us. Her customers would come to the treehouse, I presume? Yes. And she would sell them what? Crack cocaine. Okay. Did she sell any other kinds of drugs besides crack cocaine? No. And did she do this regularly? Yes. And you said you were there when, at times when she would do that. Is that fair to say? Yes. And Truth. Truth. Yes, sir. That's what we want, the truth. Um, did you used to sell it? No. You didn't sell? No, I just smoked it. Just smoked it, okay. Um, Why well, sell On November 17th, when you were her with her, you said she wasn't drinking, but you were, is that right? Yes. And you guys were both smoking crack? Yes. Now, at some point, did day become night that day? Yes, it did. All right, sunset? Yes. Got dark outside? Yeah, it's getting dark. So when it gets dark outside, what's the lighting like inside of that treehouse? Well, it got, uh, Get the lights from a store, store and stuff. Uh, you know, it, it, I mean, is it as bright right as it is in this room right now? No, not at all. Not at all. Darker. Dark? Not dark. Hard to see it when it gets dark in the treehouse? Is that that's a question? I'm sorry. Is it hard yeah, to yeah, see when it gets it, dark? It's definitely hard to see. Um, did you do you remember using flashlights on that particular day or not to to help no, with lighting? No, no it, didn't, it wasn't that dark at the time. Okay. What what you getting into? All right, and. You had been. How long had you been there until something happened? It was getting dawn, you know. I mean, uh, Having some feed problems. Hang on a second. I mean, uh, you know, it was getting it was getting a little bit dark. Not much. So not dawn. It was getting it dark, down, right? Before it went down, yeah. All right. Were you there after the sunset and it actually got dark outside? Yes. Now where were in the actual treehouse structure where did paula where did she sleep and what was her area in that treehouse right but right in the middle uh tarped around with tarps around her okay in the middle you said right uh-huh now was there anything higher up in the treehouse that other people stayed in no just her and you said she stayed in in what you call the middle portion is that right uh-huh. with tarps around her with tarps yeah just with tarps and what would, what would be the purpose of the tarps yeah just keep you out of, try to keep the rain out and stuff like that yeah keep the rain out yeah Okay. Now, you guys were partying, right? Yes, we were. At some point, did something happen that night while you guys were partying? Yes, it did. All right. Well, let's tell the jury about that. What happened? You, you're partying. At this point, it's nighttime, right? Getting dark. Yeah, it's getting a little dark. All right. And what happens, Mr. Ragged? What happens while you're in there with Paula? First of all, let me ask you, was anybody else there with you besides Paula? No, just me and Paula. Just you and Paula? Do you remember seeing Matt that day? Earlier. Earlier, earlier the day earlier you saw him? downstairs in his place. But as, as it became nighttime and you were in the treehouse with Paula, was Matt with you guys at upstairs, that time? Upstairs in the treehouse, yes. That's where you were with Paula, right? Yes, I was. So where was Matt? As, as, as it became nighttime, where, I know you and Paula were in the treehouse, but where was Matt located? He was downstairs in his trailer. All right. Do you remember if anybody was with Matt or if he was alone or do you know if he had no, people over? He was alone. He was alone. <clears throat> okay. Now, at some point, you said something happened, right? Yes, something happened. All right, well, let's tell the jury. What happened? Uh, two guys came up the steps, looked around the corner. They were wearing, they were wearing a skull mask, and they came up, and they, I stood up. Nailed, one of them nailed me, knocked me right back into the chair. All right, and let me stop you, um, Mr. Raggett. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down, okay, because I have questions while you're, while you're giving this jury the story. Um, you said two men came in. Questions. Is that right? Two people with a skull mask. With skull masks. Yes. Now, how do you know it was two? You were able to see them? Yeah, they looked right on the corner. And I go, what the hell is this? 
And they came right on in? Yeah, they, well, they came right around, yeah, you know. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, sir, that wasn't clear. Could you repeat what you just said? They just came up the steps and right around, they got to make a turn on the steps, you know. Okay. Uh -huh. Then they just, then they right on the top there, and then they came walking up, and they popped me in the head. All right, they popped you in Let me ask you, Mr. Raggett, how, how are you able to tell there were two of them? Are you able to see enough? Yeah, yeah. Even though it was dark? Yeah. Could you make out their faces? No, they were wearing skull masks. Okay. Could you tell what ethnicity they were? Were they black, white? Could you tell anything in that regard? No, nope, they were wearing gloves as well as a skull mask. So you couldn't even see skin to tell if, they, if, if what ethnicity? That's right. All right. And you know there were two of them? I knew there were two of them, yeah. Now you said when they came in, what was your reaction to it? I stood up. I stood up and said, what the hell's going on here? You know, and they hit me, knocked me back into my chair. All right. And they, Do you remember I, if they hit before you? Before I get back up again, this person took a knife and put it to my throat. or well, I put it right here in front of my face. And it gave me the motion like this. You know, don't say, don't want to hear, don't want to hear that damn thing out of you, you know? What, and what did you take that to mean, that gesture? And judge for the record, the witness is. is putting his finger over his mouth. What did you take that to mean, Mr. Riot? Don't, don't, don't. Don't talk? Don't, don't talk. Don't do nothing. So I sat there. Now, you said you took a couple of hits from this person, right? Oh, he hit me, yeah. Um, how many times did you get hit? Well, four. All right. And then you said when you stood up, they knocked you down again? Yeah. When you were being hit, do you recall it? Were, was a weapon being used or was it a bare hand hit? Yeah, it was a bare hand. It was a glove. I could feel the glove, you know, hit me too. Yeah. Okay. So you felt the glove on his hand? Yeah. And that's what you felt. Um, where on your body were you being hit? In the head. In the head. All right. Did it hurt? Yeah. And when you got hit, you said about four times? Three now, or four, three or four. Were both men hitting you, or was it just one of the two men hitting both you? Both of them were hitting me. <clears throat> both, <clears throat> both of them were hitting you? Uh-huh. All right. And ultimately, you said one of them gave you that sign, right? Yeah. Now, when he did that, did, did, he, did he leave you alone, or did he stay with you? He kept that knife in front of my face, yes. All right. And then at some point, do you re remember seeing Paula during this, this struggle? Oh, yeah, she was sitting right there getting beat up, too. And they were, and who was beating her up? The other guy with the skull mask on. The other guy with the skull mask on? Uh-huh. Um, so were they both beating on Paula, or at this point was one with you and one with Paula, if one you remember? One was beating on me, and the other was beating on Paula. Okay. Do you remember any description as far as the size of these men? Yeah, I don't remember the size of them. I know I could tell by the Swayzer who... The, who that one was, you know, by meeting him different times up there at Paula's. I knew Swazier. Is, get that word right, Swazier? Uh -huh. Okay. I don't know what that word means, so I'm sorry. Well, his style, his, oh, his walk, his talk. Okay. Were they, it was like, height wise, were they tall guys, short guys? Was one, were they the same height, or was there a difference no, between the two? Tall, one short. I'm, I'm sorry, and I talked one, over you, and I apologize. Tall, one short. Okay. One's tall, and one short, you said, right? You've got to say yes or no, sir. Uh-huh, uh-uh, if you could just... Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. So, Mr. Raggett, you said one of the men was tall and one of the men was shorter. Is that right? Yes. Do you recall which one was focusing attention on you and which one was focusing attention on Paula? Yes. Okay, which one was on you, the tall guy or the short guy? The tall guy. And the other one on Paula was the shorter guy? Yeah. All right. Now, did this... Yes. Okay. No, you did okay. Um... How long did this go on for? Well, uh... I know it's probably hard to say. Ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes is a long time. Yeah, it was. All right. And at some point, what were they doing to Paula? Were you able to observe what they were yeah, doing to they Paula? Yeah, they jerking her around, uh, saying, we cut your damn throat, you know? Do you remember them you know, doing up, any... I'm know, sorry. Give, give it up, give it up, you know? Give it up, Paula, give it up, you know? She goes, Roger, Roger, help me, help me. I said, yeah, give it up. You know, give them what they want. Get the hell out of here, you know? Nothing to, nothing to get poked about, you know? Sure. At some point, do you know if they inflicted any injuries on Paula? Yeah, yeah. And what they do to her? Hit her in the head. Hit her in the head? Did yeah. they cut her? Yeah. Where'd they cut her? Neck. It's right here, I guess. Do you remember seeing that? No. Nope. Then how do you know she got cut there? Because, uh, yeah, I caught her. I handed her, a, I handed her a rag before I ran down steps. Well, let's talk about that. Okay. At some point, did, when they kept saying give it up, did they ever, were they, Specific about what they wanted her to give up? Yeah. What they want? Money and drugs. How do you know that? Because they said give up the money or the drugs. Either right. one. Take them both. And did she ultimately give up the money and drugs? Yeah. And did yes. she just hand it over? Do you remember how, how she was able to give it to them? She said, right there it is. 
take it and get the hell out of here. And what's she point to? A little container on a on a on a on a, on a, on a little container. All right. A, a small container, you said, right? Yeah. A little container. All right. Um, when she pointed that out to them, did they grab the container? Yes. And did they leave? Yes. All right. Now, did they leave? Pretty much together? Did they leave, like did one leave before the other? Or did they leave at the same time? No, no, they left. They left because uh, the man with uh, was putting a, holding a knife in front of my face, hit me, knocked me through the tarp, jumped over a railing after Matt, and uh, ran down steps and struck that man, and then ran back up steps and said, "We got to go." All right. And all the time I was under that tarp, you know. Okay. Now. Were you guys calling for help while this was happening? Matt did. I heard him yell. Matt and Matt said what? Help. Okay. Did Matt come up the stairs to where you and Paula were? No. Well, yes, yes, he did. He came up steps and he turned around and went right back down. All right. So, Mr. Raggett, I, I want to make sure that we're clear for the jury because even I want to make sure this is clear. So, during the struggle with these two men, at some point, did Matt come up to that platform where you and Paula were? Matt made up to the platform, seeing what was going on, turned around and started walking back down. <coughs> And that man hit me, knocked me through a tarp, and... And you said you heard Matt yell for help? And yeah, then I heard yeah, Matt yell for help. Okay. And then that, that man would knock me through the tarp with that skull mask on, said, we got to go to the other guy. All right. With a, mask, with a skull mask on. And they left. And do you, do you know if they ever made contact with Matt? No. Do you know if they ever got to Matt? I mean, were they able to get to him? Do they interact with Matt at all? Yeah, they interact with Matt when that, when that person jumped out of the steps there and stabbed his ass. Stabbed Matt? Yes. All right. Do you remember where they stabbed Matt? Was where on his body he got stabbed? No. And you said he came back upstairs, this man, this man in the mask, and said to the other guy, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. That's the only thing you said. Did they leave? Yes. Now, when they left... What, what did you do? What's the first thing you did? Did you go to Paula? I, I went to Paula, see how she was, found a rag for to put on her wound, and I ran down steps. I ran down steps, I jumped over Matt, and I headed out to, headed out to, to the alley to see what the, where they went. All right. Were you able to see where they went? No. no. When you got down no, to the alley? They were already gone. Already gone. Uh -huh. Did you go back into the treehouse then after you went out to the alley? Nope. I took off. Took off. Yeah. Did you ever render any aid to Matt when you saw no, Matt? When you last not. saw Matt, was he standing or was he on the ground? He was laying down. He was laying down. Do you remember if he was bleeding at all? No. You don't remember or he wasn't? I don't remember, but I, don't, I didn't see it. I didn't see no blood. Okay. But you did render aid to Paula. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I gave her a rag. I found a towel there and I grabbed hold it and I gave it to her and I ran down steps. Okay. If you're just joining us, this is the state prosecutor. This is witness number three. The defense that was just handed these pictures is the defendant. He's a pro se defendant. Have you shown the defense to the approach witness? Yes. Mr. Wright, I'm going to have you take a look at these photographs, okay? Okay. Tell me if you recognize them. Before we talk about them, tell me if you recognize them. Yes, yeah, Paula. Okay. Yeah, there's just Paula. Don't recognize that. Okay. <laughs> Probably Paula's hand, but I would. Okay. I wouldn't know. Um, let me ask you: Do these photographs appear to show Paula? So these two, you don't, you don't recognize. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, Judge, I'm gonna these on. Yeah. Let's go with the two that you do recognize. Okay. That's Paula. Do these pictures fairly and accurately show the injuries that Paula received on that night? I believe so. Is that what you observed on her that night? I didn't. I didn't look. All okay. I did was head her, head her, rag and leave. Okay. Judge, at this time I seek to move in with the previously marked as echo one and two to evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right. So admit uh, states E for identification one and two. And it's five A and B. Yeah, give, give the ones that want to do it. Oh, yeah. 
Crawford, give it back to the prosecutor, Mark, and admit the two. Okay, now that they're in evidence, that states Exhibit 5, Composite A and B. Mr. Rabbi, I'm going to show these to the jury. Let's keep this one first. I'm going to have you tell them what they're looking at here. Is this your friend Paula? Yes, that's my friend Paula. All right. She's got some redness on her face. Is that from the beating she took that night? Oh, yeah. It worked over good. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. And this one here, you said you put a rag to her neck, right? I gave her a rag. I didn't put it there. I gave her a rag. All right. Why'd you give her a rat? She was bleeding. Okay. Well, she said she was. And after you gave her the rag, uh, you, that's when you went downstairs, is that right? Ran downstairs. Okay. This guy is a great witness. Um, I mean that 100%. Do you know Franklin Tucker? Say again? You know, He's very uh, believable. Franklin Tucker. Do you know a man by the name of Franklin Tucker? No, I don't know, know Franklin Tucker. I'm going to have you take a look at the defense table. Do you recognize that man? No, no, I don't. Okay. Now, on this particular night, you, let me ask you this. How did you know it was two men? I, I know they had masks I on. I didn't know those two men. They had skull masks on. I didn't know them. But how do you know it was men and not women? Say again? How did you know they were males and not females? <laughs> you know. That's a, that's a hard one. Okay. <laughs> but in your memory, it's two men. Yeah. Okay. Now... Did you ever have contact with Paula again after this particular day? Oh, yeah. You've seen her again? Oh, yeah. Seen, uh, have you guys talked on, about her? Later on, yeah. I'm sorry? Yes, I've seen her later on that day. Not that day, but uh, after, after everything was over with. And have you guys partied together since then? No. Nope. Never again since that night? No. Nope. Now, all those events that happened here in Monroe County, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um... Do you remember, you said you saw a knife. Do you remember how many knives you saw? I'd seen two knives, yeah. You they think? were carry knives. Big ones, big knives. Okay, they were or were not stick knives? No, oh, it was a big old white handled snake knife. Okay. Right in my face. And you think that there was more than one knife? Uh, the other guy was carrying a knife too. So you think they both had a weapon, or a well, knife they, rather? Yes, they both had weapons. <clears throat> Mr. Rocky, give me just one second. Let me check with my partner, okay? Hmm. He checks with his partner uh, by standing right in front of the pool camera. <laughs> I, I I appreciate the comments here in chat. This is this is an interesting trial. We are not making fun of this guy. This guy's had a hard life. Uh, choices he's you know possibly made situations but uh very believable very believable and he's telling a, a traumatic event uh, and doing a great job doing it it is sped up and that makes it that adds a little bit to the, the situation it sounds more um i don't know comical in the exchange because it is sped up The, uh, the way the court uh, shares or, or um, publishes to the jury is, is the, uh, the old third grade show and tell method where you hand the picture to them and they pass it around physically. Yes, you may. Mr. Rudder, I'm going to show you a photograph. Okay, tell me if you recognize this person. It looks like Matt, doesn't it? Is that who you know as Matt? I thought, no, maybe. I don't know who that is. Right. You, you, don't, you do or you don't know? Uh, it looks like Matt. It looks like Matt, personally. All right. So at this time, I think to move in F for uh, evidence. Is there any objection? No, Your Honor. All, All right. States, F for objected. identification is admitted as next in order being state six. So, Mr. Raggett, Yaku, you I remember your name. No, uh, uh, it kind of looks like him. Kind of looks like him? Yeah. But you can't say 100%. Well, his hair's a little shorter. Okay. Fair enough. But you think it looks like Matt? Is that right? Yes, it kind of looks like Matt. Yes, I did. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Fair enough. Mr. Rackett, I don't have any other questions for you, sir. Thank you. No, you certainly set me up. Okay, sir. Um, 
if you just kindly stay in place there, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to address the jury, members of the jury. He's thank you so much for your up. patience and attention during our morning session. As I told you, when this witness was called, we'd break for lunch about now, and that's what we're going to do. Now, um, leave your notepads there on the seat when you get up. Uh, I have a hearing, a short hearing in a separate matter at uh, 1.30, so I'm going to ask that you please be back in the jury assembly room by, uh, let's see, it's uh, 1.45. That's about an hour and a half for your lunch break. Follow the cautionary instructions that the court has consistently given you. Enjoy your lunch, 1.45, be back. You'll be excused for that. All right, so they're going to take a quick break. We're going to cut away so we can uh, update. We've got to do some refreshing on some things, some feeds. Oh, my goodness. This is a, this is a interesting, interesting witness. A couple key, w key parts out of this, uh, this testimony that, uh, that stand out to me. He does not recognize the defendant. I wait to hear the doors closed. Okay, so the jurors are now gone. He does uh, not, Mr. Raggett, hang on a um, second. You're going to be back in the witness stand after lunch because the defense has the right to uh, ask you questions also. Uh, sure. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I don't know if anybody wants me to give them any special instructions uh, during the lunch break or not, you know. I, I don't think it's necessary, Judge. Nothing from the state. Boy, talking about the case. It's, it's, you know, oh, okay. So the rule of sequestration of witnesses has been invoked. That basically means that you shouldn't be discussing the, your testimony or the case with anyone during the lunch break. All right. All right. Yes. yes okay. Yes. Otherwise, um, you know, enjoy your lunch and please be back here uh, at like 1.40. All right. It's like 12, 16 right now. So you're back by 1.40. Okay. Um, that should give you ample time for lunch and we'll see you then. All right. Ample time for okay. lunch. Yes. All right. Thank you. You can be excused. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. For until after lunch, 140. We're going to skip lunch. He keeps talking, though. Man. Nothing from the state, Judge. I'm sorry. Nothing from the state. Right. Mr. Tucker, anything before we break? Um, no, Your Honor. All right. Enjoy your lunch. Thank we'll you, Judge. Enjoy your lunch. Good, Good luck. luck. Okay. Um, no, I don't need that. Thank you very much. I'm good without it. All right. So we're going to skip lunch here really quickly and, uh, and see if I can get this. See if I can get this fixed. We're having some trouble with some of the feed. Um, I've got some. Thanks. Okay, after lunch, we get an hour lunch. We're coming back. All right, ready camera two. My computer is struggling here, so let's see if I can get this. I don't know why it's struggling either. Somebody just sent me a video of Roaches fighting. I don't know who won. Don't know who won. Okay, we're gonna save that. Sorry guys, I've got to shut down a bunch of stuff on my computer so it uh it doesn't crash on us midstream. Then we'll pick up with the uh, the afternoon. We're cutting the lunch part out because we are trying to catch up on this trial. Let's pause right here. Super source camera two. Let me just switch it live. Firefox. Something, something's running really heavy on my machine, tying up all my memory, so I'm just getting it all sorted out right now. Please hold. We are professionals. This will make it so it doesn't skip and the, the image is a little clearer as well, so bear with me here. There's nothing else running. I think my computer's just dying. Might need a reboot. Oh, 
have them send someone with more experience. You know, that's a great idea. Okay, now are we good? Yep, it was Firefox. It was, uh... Firefox was eating on my memory. All right, turn this off, turn this back on. So I'm back on screen. We are going to take camera two. Somebody just sent me a video of roaches fighting. I don't know who won. When are we going to break for lunch, Judge? All right. Ready, camera two. Here we go. Box source two. Come on. Still going so slowly. Is camera two. And take super source. There we go. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. Mr. Raddick? Yes. Could you come back up to the witness stand, please? Right back up to uh, where you were seated before we broke for lunch, sir. No, I'm fine. Thank you. All right, so we have everybody by way of jurors in the jury room? Yes, sir. Bring them in, please. Our counter is how many times the judge has to instruct the defense, who is the defendant, on what to do in his own defense. You know, we're up to two so far. It's not going to be a high counter. It's not like the objection counter that will reach 1,600 in like the Maya trial. Call back after lunch. Hopefully it was pleasant. Um, we're back on the record. State versus Tucker. By way of recap, this morning um, you were given formal preliminary instructions. You heard opening statements from both sides. The state began presentation of its case in chief, called a couple of witnesses, and then Mr. Raggett here, he was called as their third witness, and the state had completed its direct examination when we broke for lunch. So now he's back on the witness stand, still under oath, and we're going to give uh, the defendant an opportunity for cross-examination. Would like to? Hi, Mr. Raggett. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Good. I'm going to try not to be too long with you, man. I know we've held you up quite long enough already, you know, so I'm not going to keep you up here forever, okay? Okay. Um, try and be quick about this. Um, let's see. You know, going over some of your testimony. Um, now, you said you, you didn't know my name. You don't know me, right? We've never partied together, right? No, I don't know you. Okay, good. Um, now, you said, uh, you know, when you were being attacked, right, and uh, the one guy had you, was it, he was holding up a knife, correct? Right in front of my face. Right in front of your face. Now, do you think you'd recognize that knife again if you ever saw it? Oh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, Mark oh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's exhibit one. Well, that would be defendant's exhibit A. Sorry. But uh, as the clerk, quite a lot of Mr. Tucker, the clerk has to, first of all, see it and put an official uh, sticker with defendant's exhibit A there on. <laughs> So you're showing the witness what's been marked as defendant's no, exhibit no, A, sir, sir. Let me just, uh, for the record, state the witness is being shown defendant's exhibit A for identification. Okay, and you're asked if you recognize that. No, it had a white handle. White handle. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, okay, so again, we're going back over this attack, and you said somewhere in there when Matt came upstairs, right? When he actually came up the stairs, right? Um, you said that. What did the guy say? He said something. He said something, and they jumped down the stairs or something like that. Do you remember that? No, he hit me. Uh -huh. He hit me and knocked me through a, a tarp. Okay. Did he say anything before? You know, after or before or after he did that? 
No, I didn't say nothing. Okay. Uh, I must have misunderstood you then. Because um, I thought you said something like, uh, what was it, you know, we got to get out of here or something like that? He did say that, but he said that later when he came back up the steps. Oh, when he came back up. Okay. I just want to make sure. And just like the knife, you know, would you recognize his voice again if you ever heard him? He didn't say nothing. Well, I mean, if he said, didn't he say we got to get out of here? That's about it. Okay, but you wouldn't recognize his voice? No, I don't think I would. Okay, just checking. Um, now, again, I just confirmed, you know, just a second ago that, uh, you know, you don't know me, don't know my name, anything like that, right? We've never met. He was wearing a skull mask. Right, I got that part, but, you know, but you, you don't know my name, correct? No, I okay, don't good. know you. Good, so if, you know, if investigators, and uh, I'm going to read this to you just, you know, just to make sure, but if investigators said something along the lines of, Roger stated I'm, that. I'm objecting, Judge, to this. Would you like me to have one either? From well, then I, I guess. Well, 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 one second. Take it easy. Um, you wanted to see what was. Uh, Judge, yes, he's reading from a document that's not in evidence, and I don't know where this line of questioning is. I'm reading it from. Well, 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 would we like to have a bench conference to address the issue? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you don't go pro se. There are procedures, there are processes, there is policy, there is law. You need to know all of them, and you need to follow them to get evidence into, into court. Uh, I, I, am, I am convinced that what Mr. Tucker is holding in his hand would be very insightful for the jury to hear. It may not be legal evidence. It may not be something that is admissible in court. It may be hearsay. It may be, it may be something that is admissible, but has to be first have the foundation laid to make it admissible. It is, uh, again, yes, let us lawyers do our job. We went to school for a long time. I say we like I'm one of you. No, I'm not, Ken. We're going to let you do your job. You went to school for a very long time uh, to learn these things. So let's see if he, if he gets through this hurt. Hey, so soon, but it happened. So Bear with me, please. Jury's already been kicked out. Kicked out. We're going to settle this with mutual combat. Uh, judge will be referee. Defendant, choose your member of the, uh, the opposing team. And uh, let's duke this out and come to a resolution. Okay, so now the jurors are gone. And we can... Uh be heard without whispering, and what, when I have a copy or see this uh, document that's the source of this uh, question, thank you, okay, it is an affidavit, so this is the arrest affidavit, okay, and we're going to switch the feet up because it's it not waiting on this one. Is sworn out by Daniel Malone, okay. is, is that? That's right. Okay, and arrest can affidavit you direct is sworn out. please to the portion of it that you wanted to inquire about? Well, I don't know, but I don't know. To, uh, okay, so the state has a Where'd the audio go? Come on, give us some audio. So what question did you want to ask? What was your specific question? Well, that's not the question you're going to ask. You're going to have to hear the exact question. Did you answer? I mean, I'm just reading something about that. That's fine. That's fine. We're going to pause this just for a minute because oops, I faded to black on accident. We're going to pause just for a minute. This is, uh, this is struggling. We're going to change the speed back to our normal speed. Because 1.25 is just, it's dying. And I take the jury out. I like to know exactly what the question is because many times, um, somehow or other, things get um, 
altered between the time of this here, and I'm not talking about you, and I'm just talking about my experience over the years, that unless I nail it down, then somehow or other the question changes and the issue changes. So I, I would like to hear exactly what question you want to ask. That's that's a I was going to say, did you say this and then read that? Thank you, sir. Just, just like, no, I, I anticipate there's going to be instances okay, Roger. Bear in with the me. course of this trial where we're going to have these sessions and proffers and the like, so it's, it's all part of the process. Okay. So um, go ahead and ask the question you'd like to ask. Okay. Roger, I, I'm just going to ask you a real simple question, okay? When you were, when this investigation was going on, did you ever say that at Franklin Tyrone Tucker put his finger towards his mouth and made a sound? Okay. Wait, wait, that, 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 you, don't, you don't have to answer that right now. That's the question. State? I, I have a no problem with that question, Judge. Okay. That, I mean, that, what I understand Mr. Tucker is trying to do is he wants to show the jury this tainted investigation and how they went out for him. And it's improper for him to stand and read from a document that obviously he's going to make sure the jury tell about the jury. Here's a, <clears throat> an affidavit from my arrest and they lied in it. That has nothing to do with this trial. He was arrested already. So any inadequacies in that affidavit are done. He's here facing trial. Mr. Tucker, don't please. Uh, <clears throat> you don't have to see, give me weird looks or threatening glances or whatever that's supposed to be. That was not supposed to be a threatening glance. I, I really take offense that Anyhow, you would say that. In any event, um, Anyhow, Judge, I it was a glare, but regardless, um, I understand your point. So, uh, and, and again, based upon what I heard in the opening, this may become an issue. And you know we'll we'll have to deal with it as the time comes. But all these alleged infirmities in the investigation, I, I'm not sure how that's ultimately relevant. Our arguments will be relevant all the way through, every single time. So it's not relevant about the inadequacies of this affidavit. You're telling me the inadequacies. You need to ask this defendant. I mean, this witness is. Have you ever ID'd me during the dependency of this investigation as being the second? The person who stabbed, or the person who held you to participate in this robbery, and I believe the answer is going to be no, I haven't. And then that's it. Oh, wait a second. No Just, uh, I want to be clear here. Mr. Tucker, you have a bad habit, sir, of interrupting and not allowing people to complete what they're saying. I'm I thought he was done. I'm going to give you the same opportunity to speak uninterrupted that I expect everybody else to have. So, um, I don't know if he has to say, did you ID him? I think he can ask about this specific, did you ever say um, such and such? Okay, Judge, I agree with that 100%, but what I, what I think is not relevant or permissible is, it's, it looks like he's trying to impeach this witness. There's been no, there's been no in, in, in proper statement made. There is a statement made in that affidavit that according to this witness, Tyrone Tucker, did these things that I understand the officer's belief or perspective, but at the end of the day, it's, it, it's not impeaching this witness, it's simply asking this witness a question. And the question is exactly what Your Honor stated. And I think that that's what we're stuck with. If he can ask the question, he'll get an answer, and that's as far as it can go. Well, I think he's trying to show that in this particular statement, he, if, depending upon how you interpret it, he knew. Tucker's name, Correct. which is contrary to his statement here that he doesn't know his name. Yes, you can ask the question that you uh, posed when I asked you what it is. Uh, so was there anything else you wanted to say? No. No, I mean, I just wanted to answer that question, Your Honor. That's it. Okay, so the court will allow that, and we'll go from there. So then also ask the court, listen, <clears throat> the defendant has, has a, an act to turn and Look at me or ask me questions, you know, before I objected to something. He turned to me and said, Why? That's improper. He needs to correct his inquiries to your honor as to what's going on. I don't want communication with this defendant in any format of that variety. Mm -hmm. Well, I think so far.
Um, at least Earlier he said, I'll slow down for the state, like, like we couldn't keep up. I mean, these little comments. And I think I interjected quite rapidly for the judge, is what I said. So I, I think overall, um, so far things have been very, fairly amicable. I mean, is so far. over time, as the trial goes on, I've observed inevitably in almost every case, you know, things get a bit heated and we have to stay within bounds. But uh, it is true that whatever mm, arguments or concerns should be uh, directed towards the judge and by way of argument and objection and uh, the uh, mm. interpersonal dynamics between the lawyers or the defendant and the lawyers, uh, other than basic communications needed, should be avoided. That's so, um, May I speak, Your Honor? Yes, sir. In my defense, as far as that went, I wasn't the one who jumped up and started getting animated about the whole thing. You know, it's like you're telling me that a statement that the, you know, the witness supposedly made, I can't ask the question. It's not relevant. Mr. Tucker, I, I, I don't want to disparage you, but uh, lawyers and judges spend years studying rules. I get this. And they're more subtle than you um, realize. Sometimes. I would imagine. So I said that uh, you could ask the question that you posed, and I don't really want to go any, I don't think I need to go any further. Yeah, I think we're fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, bring let's jury. bring back the jury. Subtle rules of evidence. Very subtle. Yeah, uh, I was joking about mutual combat, but uh, it's looking more and more like that might be a, a final outcome in this uh, in this trial between prosecution and defense. Yes, this is this is the most important rule of court. You can, you can make all sorts of egregious errors, but do not interrupt the judge. Uh, Jimmy, this is the tree treehouse murder trial. The defendant is pro se, representing himself. Uh, I would say unwisely. When you're charged with murder, uh, that's there's there's a lot there's a lot at stake. Get a professional. Get a professional. All jurors present. All right. Welcome back, members of the jury. Thank you for your patience. We appreciate it. Uh, we're ready to proceed in your presence. So we'll let the defendant uh, continue with his cross-examination. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, I would like to apologize to the jury for no, don't that. Just go back there and you know, take a break. Objection, Your Honor. It's, it's fine. Let's just move on now. And Roger, I'd like to apologize to you, too. No, no. Well, um, yeah. But. Absolutely not necessary, and we're going to just go on to the next inquiry. Okay. All right. Again, just a simple question for you, Roger. This is it, okay? Um, did you ever say that Franklin Tyron Tucker put his finger towards his mouth and made a shh sound? No. Okay, no. No, I said he put his finger to his mouth, and that's it. Okay, I good. Say no name. No, no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any redirect examination? Yes, Judge. So, Mr. Ragged. Yes. When you, were, when you were describing the attack earlier to the jury before lunch, you talked about these two men, correct? Yes, yes two men. You don't know this this man sitting here, right? He, he, no, I don't know him. Um, what about the other man? Have you ever heard of a man named Rory Wilson? No. Maybe known as Detroit? No. You don't know that person? No. All right. Before, when you described the two different men, you said one was bigger and one was smaller. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, were you talking height-wise, were you talking weight, or were you talking weight both? Weight and height, weight and height. So one guy was definitely taller? Yes. And was the taller guy also weighed more than the other guy? No, he weighed less. Okay, so explain that to me. You got a tall guy and then a shorter, heavier yeah, guy? The, the, the guy I knew by his swazier and, the, and the meeting him before, you know, was the heavier, shorter, heavy guy. And the man would 
took that knife to my throat and told me to shut my mouth, you know, didn't tell me, just you know, gave me a suggestion, was taller and skinnier. Okay, and when you looked in the other room, at some point, was the taller man in there with Paula attacking Paula? No. Okay. And then the man that went downstairs to help Matthew, do you remember if that was the taller man or the shorter man? Taller man. Okay. All right. And when he went downstairs to, I guess, to address Matthew, who was still upstairs with you and Paula? The shorter, shorter okay. man wearing a skull mask. And, and where were you during that process? When he went downstairs to Matthew, where were you? I was, I was hung up in a the tarp. They hit me and knocked me through the, off the chair and into a hanging tarp. Okay. I was coming out of, I was coming out of there. I was trying to come out of there. And as I was coming out of there, I seen the taller man jump over the rail, and then I heard Matt scream. Okay. And again, the guy that the guy that was attacking you and punching you, that was the taller one you said. Yeah, he hit me and knocked me through that. Okay. All right. One second, please, sir. All right. So this uh, the state's witnesses. I have no further questions for you, sir. Thank you. It's not saying everything they'd so, like. May this witness be excused? Yes, sir. Actually, could I get a redirect, Your Honor? Uh, just answer a couple questions. You me. want to do some recross, yes. which generally Here comes not allowed. But uh, okay. but if you want to stay within the scope of the direct, I'll I'll give you the opportunity. So go ahead. Just curious about the scope of the redirect. Right, just, uh, just the questions you just asked. Right. That's what I mean. Um, Roger, you know, yes. um, you just described both both men that, that that attacked you, correct? You know, you described one as a short, stocky guy, and another guy as a tall, skinny guy, right? Just to make sure well, I'm clear. Well, it wasn't that tall, but you know, he oh, was, not this tall. It wasn't that tall. Okay, how about like this tall? No, well, you both like in between. Height. About your height. Oh, about my height. Okay, and but but fatter, right? Or is that no, the or is that the don't, bigger dude? No, don't it the the man I know was a short fat one. He was black and I knew him oh, by okay. his by his, the way he moved and talked and because we talked before. I got you. You know, we knew it was him, but uh, okay. the tall guy I didn't know because he didn't say nothing. He didn't say Did much. Did you know at his all. name by say chance? Nothing. He didn't say nothing except for we gotta go. That's the only part uh I can say. The, the guy you knew, did you know his name? No. No, you didn't know his name, but you saw him around. Say again? You saw him around, so you said you knew him by his, his swank, I think is what it was. Slander, you know, his style, his walk. Style, style, you know? walk, okay. I met him before, you Okay, know? gotcha. And, but that was at that tree house where you met him? In other places. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Uh-huh, in okay. other places, yeah. No more, no, no more questions, Your Honor, I'm good. Thank you. So now may he be excused? I have a direct redirect. Re redirect. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. So Rugger, you just said that the taller guy was about his height, right? Yes, I did. That's what you just said, right? About his height. A little taller than the other guy. This guy right here, his height. Yes, I said that. Nothing further. Thank you, Judge. Okay, now may the witness be excused. Yes, sir. All right. That was the worst so, recross you, sir, you question you could ever excuse. ask. Not knowing the answer. Yes, sir. You had a witness who said, it doesn't look, I, I've never seen this guy before in my life. I don't, can't identify him. I don't know who he is. Uh, there was a tall guy and a short guy. It wasn't, you know, he basically said it wasn't this defendant. And you got up there and okay, say, oh, so wait, you look just like me. Another witness to call? Mr. Cosby. We are back on normal speed. We're having problems with clipping at uh, 1.25. Okay. Uh, just finished my uh, my glass of chocolate milk out of Mrs. R.A.'s mug, which is a gift. Thank you very much.
didn't say look just like it was just his his height and build. So, got your phone secure? Yeah. All right. So why don't you come on up here by the deputy? And if you'd stop right there, turn and face the clerk. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give and the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, please have a seat on the witness stand, sir. Speak loudly and clearly so everyone is able to hear you. Thanks. May I proceed, Judge? Yes. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Cosme. Good afternoon. <laughs> I know we've kept you waiting all day. I appreciate your patience, sir. I'm sorry, but I appreciate you being here. Thank Could you state your full name for the record? My name is Juan Luis Cosme. Juan Luis Cosme, right? Yes. And, sir, uh, where do you currently live? I live uh, in uh, Big Pine Key, 1212 West Shore Drive. Here in Monroe County? Yes. And how long have you lived down here, sir? 27 years. Okay. Um, where'd you come? Where'd you live before you're Monroe County? Orlando. Orlando. Okay. Very well. So you've been in Monroe County quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. All right. No worries. Uh, what kind of work do you do, Mr. Cosmo? Well, I own a uh, Suzuki and a Yamaha outboards dealership. Uh, you know, we do repair boats. We, we sell the engines. We, you know, we sell the boats or, you know, blue water sport fishing boats. Uh, that's what we do. And where is that business located? That's at 5670 Laurel Avenue. 5670 yeah, Laurel? Stock Island. On Stock Island. Here in Key West? If you need an outboard yes. motor, Key West, this is your man. We're still on now, yesterday's feet. Is your so, uh, uh, building, is it like an outdoor marina with, you know, boat dock or boat lifts and everything? Well, it's, it's just a, you know, it's not in the water, you know, it's just a building, you know, a you know, okay. Uh, what is it? Uh, on the ground, you know, ground level. Sure. How long have you had that business? Uh, I started in 2005. And you've had it ever since? Yeah. Yep. All right. Coming up on 20 years then, right? Yeah. All right, Mr. Cosby, let me ask you on that business, is it equipped with any kind of surveillance videos or surveillance cameras? Yes, yes. And explain to the jury, what kind of a surveillance system do you have there? Well, we, we have a Barnes alarm system. You know, that's our provider. And we have cameras facing everywhere because that, you know, Laurel Avenue, it's a, not a good place. You know, when I first bought the property, I was like, wow, look at all this stuff happening here, you know. Especially that house that we're talking about here, the tree house. Uh, but you know, I I started you know telling people you, know, you can't do that here, you can't do that here, and I'll call the cops. You know, there was uh, a lot of stuff going on. You know. Okay. So, so you were you were familiar with the structure that was referred to as the tree house? Yes. And can you just explain, describe for the jury what exactly was that structure? <laughs> it was. Uh, I don't know. It was like. I never went in there, you know, it, it was like a this house, you know, you can barely see it, you know, it was all overgrown with weeds, and uh, there was a lot of activity there, you know, that's one of the places that I always look, I always look, and like, when that place right there, you know, it's, it's a lot of prostitutes, you know, uh, coming in and out. Uh, not a good place. Not a good place, you know, no, you know, I mean, the, the, it's Laurel Avenue, Stock Island, you know, but it's better now. Was, okay. Yeah, it's better now. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Let me ask um, your surveillance videos. Did you put those in for security? For security, yes. 100%. All right. And does your system, is, is it con does it run constant, like 24 hours a day? Yes. And does it rewrite over itself, or does it archive the video footage? How does that work? I'm not sure about that, man. You know, I, I, if I have problems, I call Barnes Alarm, and they know they fix it. And they know it how to access it? Yeah, they like... I, I don't even know how to work it, to tell you the truth, man. It's All right. sponsored Fair by enough. Barnes so yeah. Let me take you back to November of... And you're, you said you're familiar with this treehouse structure, right? Well, it's not there anymore, but yes. How close to your business was that structure? Uh, it's like uh, there was an empty lot next to me, and then that that property. You know, so it was two, you know, one lot, and then it was two, two lots, you know. So if you had to estimate footage, what are we talking here, football field length or less? Yeah, less, less, yeah, it's really okay. close, yeah. And so you you had this surveillance system that you use uh, for your business, correct? Correct, yes. Now, let me take you back to November 17th of 2017. 
Do you recall that date? Yeah, uh, I do. I, you know, I, 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 I had just bought the property. You know, I, you know, it wasn't uh, that long, and uh, I see like this tape everywhere. You know, like you know, what happened? You know, because you know when I got there, there was cops all the time. You know. When you got to work, or did you live in there? Oh, you don't live down the, there. When I bought the property, there was mm-hmm. always cops because I used to call them, you know, because I'd be like, you know, these these, these people are doing this and trying to clean up the place, you know. Uh, my business is going there. I didn't want a bunch of sure. you know, peop, you know, bad people or whatever. But uh, uh, So you bought the property in and around, right around that time? Around that time, yeah. And, and uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it was Weird because you know the, there was a lot of people coming in and out of the house, and there was one man that was cool, man. And I always used to talk to. He had long beard and white hair, you know, and, and he just walk around without a shirt, and he would say, "Hey, how's it going, man?" You know. And, okay. And I think that's the guy, you know, that we guys, you guys were talking about. And, Do you know a man named Matthew Bonnet? I don't remember his name, you know, because I, you know, I think that was the, you know, the guy. You know, okay. The, you know the. Now, did you go to work that morning, and when you went to work, you saw activity over there? I did. You know, I, I saw tape, you know, a bunch of police officers there more than ever, and, and I was like, what's going on? And, oh, somebody got, you know, somebody. <laughs> okay, stabbed over there, right? <laughs> That's what I'm going to say, you know, but. All right, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, it was bad, you know, and I, I was sad because the, I, I met the guy, and the guy was cool, you know. Was there a lot of chatter going on about what had happened there? Yeah, yeah, you know, it was obvious, you know, like there was a, a lady, Paul, Paula, you know, and that, it, what it was, it was I, I mean, you, it's it's obvious, you know, I understand the cops should have been already busted, those people already before any of this stuff happened, you know. You could see people going in and out of that place, you okay. know, and then especially that lady, you know, she would go in there all the time with, with a bike and she would stop over there, did you, over there, you know. Did you per- would, I'm sorry, did you personally know her? No, I, I just knew who she was because okay. I knew. I, I asked the cops. I was like, who's that lady, you know? Okay. And, I, and it's like, oh, blah, blah, this and that, you know, but. Now, Mr. Cosme, at uh-huh. some point, did the police come over to your business to inquire about surveillance cameras? Yes, they did. And I and I told them, I don't know how to work it, but you guys can go ahead and go in there, get whatever you need, man. And were they able to pull surveillance tapes? I believe so. From I the evening before? Yes. And... You, you gave them full access to your system? Yes. And they came into your business, I guess, and, and, yes. and effectuated that? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. But you weren't there at the overnight hours when something happened, right? No, no. You I caught this no. the next morning. at 5 o'clock, and that's it, you know? Okay. Nothing further for you, sir. Thank you very much. Is that it? No, no, no. For the direct examination, uh, there might be some cross examination. We'll let Mr. Tucker have that opportunity. Scott, right? Yes, close to right? COSME. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I have your name right. You. I, I remember uh, seeing it on the video, but I. Didn't, oh, I, don't, I never knew if I pronounced it right. All right, so um, you say you have video surveillance on the, on the entire operation, your entire operation, correct? Okay, and you knew Paula, right? You knew, uh, knew Paula, the, the chick on the bike, right? I didn't know her, you know, I just know of her, you know, I know, oh. I, you know, because that's, I bought the property and, and I was like, yeah. I want to know what's going on around my bis- my place of business, you know? No, that makes sense. It makes complete yeah. sense. And, um, you know, so you were looking to, to just see, man, make sure that nobody's messing around with the boats, nobody's messing around with the, the outboards. I, I mean, I, that's right. I love outboards, I noticed. Um, okay, so. Um, so yeah, you know, you put these security cameras up. Have you ever seen me over by there? Who? Me. Over by over by your shop or over by the over by the treehouse. You know, I see a lot of people, man, and you look familiar to me. You know, I do live on Stock Island. You know, yeah, you look familiar to me. You know, and you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It, it was a long time ago. It was well. a long time ago. You know, so um, no, and uh, I get what you're kind of saying. You know, same thing with Paula. It's like, okay, you knew her, but, with but Paula, you can tell her, you, man. Yeah, but she knew her, but you all but you, over the yeah, place. But you, yeah, I got you. All right, so, um, but yeah, you, you know, I look familiar to you at least, right? You kind of knew me from you know, around, I guess, right? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd say that if I saw you every day, you would be, you know, I could, I, you would be more familiar to me. Yeah? yeah, like I saw Paula. Oh yeah, no, I get it. Um, you know, I get that. Um, but okay, now, 
you know, you gave the tapes over to the police. You gave them all the tapes, though, right? Or at least that you know of, because yeah, I know you don't access, have access to whatever they yes. needed. You know, and the so they took it, not not you giving it over. Uh, yeah. Okay, just making sure because I, I was I wanted to clarify, you know, whether they were the ones who went in and got it, or whether you went and retrieved it for them. No, they they did it because I I really don't know how to work this. Okay, system. no, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm bad with that kind of stuff sometimes no. too. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's about all I have. I mean, you're, 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 thank you for your time. Okay. You're welcome. Can't, right. can't do much more damage than I've just Any done. Redirect examination. State. Um, redirect. Uh, yes, Mr. Cosby. So I just want to clarify: the officers didn't take these tapes against your will, right? Against my will? Yeah. Of course not. You know, that's what they're there for. You know, they're there for surveillance, for anything that happens. I, I have my, my cameras faced out to the streets. I can look all the way to the other marina because when I first moved, like I said before, I said that Stock Island, they call it Stock Rock, you know, but because there's a lot of crime and people go there to do bad things. It's changing, you know, it's changing good, you know. I love Stock Island, but... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's stuff, stuff like that happened. You sure. know, like I, I, I think that was like one of the last really bad things that happened. Fair enough. There. And you made those videos available yes, willingly of course. to the police. That's what they're there for. You know, All right, for wonderful. Me. Judge, I have nothing further at this time. All right. May the witness step down and be excused. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, sir. May you step down and be excused. Next witness, uh, David Fernandez. Please step forward through the gate. Approach the deputy right here in front of the witness stand. Stop right there. Turn and face the clerk. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in the cause now here shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of the God? Please have a seat on the witness stand. Speak loudly and clearly so we're all able to hear you. Filled the uh, beverage, beverage mug, beverage pitcher. Okay, yeah, back to uh, what I might call a more professional witness, one who's more seasoned in, in testimony. Not necessarily more believable, but Judge, more seasoned. Can we sidebar real quick? Yes. Well, good. We're going to take the sidebar, a little opportunity to show you how our thumbnail is coming along uh, for this for this video. So uh, this is what we have so far. We, uh, we started with a tree house and, and a little sunshine. We have added a couple elements. Uh, you might have to look closely. I'll zoom in uh, just so you can see. We have, we have the tire tracks because those were mentioned outside. We, we now have the bike. I think that's Paula's bike that she's parked it next to the tree house. Uh, there's the $100 bill on the ground that the detective talked about. We have a key lime pie. Now, the key lime pie is actually sitting on the rope swing, and because of the perspective, it's hard to tell this. But uh, the, the way it works is, let's see if I can click right here. Not that one. Um, I need, I need behind this. Well, the, there, there's a rope swing and there's a stack of, of like suitcases behind the rope swing. So the key lime pie is on the rope swing. Uh, we've got the trailer, which the tree house was built on top of. I realized the tree did not belong, but we need the tree to know that it was a tree house. Um, so if you, if you hear of items in this trial as we move along that are important to, uh, Oh, hang on. We'll get going again right around 2.45. So we'll see you back then. Follow the court's cautionary instructions. They just took a break. Uh, but if, if something comes up in court that uh, we're going to skip, we're going to skip ahead just briefly. Let me jump back over and see what's going on. We need a tarp. Tarp's going to be difficult to add. 
it was like in the treehouse. Flashlight. We need stairs. Oh, man. A white handled knife. Outside the courtroom. So, do you need the witness up here or. Yeah, Judge, I'm just going to put this in to make sure that he knows. Because I'm going to have this witness step down and play it for the jury. So I just want to make sure that we'll go on scene. Okay, so you want to make sure that there's nothing there that shouldn't be there? Is exactly. that the idea exactly. that you start publishing something that's inadmissible? We start all over again. We don't want that. So I, just, I literally need like three minutes, and I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I understand, but it seemed like it. No, nope, I agree. Give him a break. Obviously, Mr. Tucker can be here if he cares to. Yep. If yep. not, 245. All right. We'll be back. Okay, so they're going to they're gonna take a little break here. We're going to go back to uh, to designing our our uh, our treehouse. Um, you, you want it nighttime? Let's see what we can do here. You just opened the whole deal for me in a minute. Thank you. Visuals really sorry to me. Yes, Purple Haze. Glad we could help out. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that. Um, I'm not sure if I can use Bud Light if, because um, brand names, brand names in images are, it, it, it gets into a, an interesting area. Legally. Legally. And, and I realize there's a lot of things in here. Obviously, the skull caps we could add, but I don't know where to put that. And and also we have to find I'm going to spill this or break this mug accidentally hang on it's going to go right there for just a minute uh, just a blue can let's let's first check we wanted to look what was the one we were looking for before that we've got the bike um, let me turn off our law 101 thing we don't need that for right now And my computer is just struggling. It's Firefox, what can I say? Quit Firefox. Okay. Something about Firefox is not... Uh, it's got a memory leak, guys. It's got a memory leak. That's what we call it. So uh, we missed a couple things. Have you missed anything, Pam? Oh, my goodness. This is one you're going to want to go back and watch. It's, uh, it's incredible. It's really incredible. Hold tight here. I've got to get the 101 turned off. And it's taking its sweet time. There we go. Now it's gone. All right. Uh, we need to make it nighttime. Uh, so our, our day scene has to be a night scene. So let's switch it up here. We're looking for night sky with the moon, maybe. So look at some options. Ooh, this is a nice one. This, this is a really good one. I'm liking this. Uh, we're going to do a couple things to fix this up. We need to flip it horizontally because um, we're going to go that way. Uh, we're going we're gonna to crop off this bottom. I realize the water is appropriate, but let's get rid of the uh, daylight is gone. The sun has to go because now we have the moon. And let's bring the night in place and just uh, expand it out a little bit. Like, say, so. Move that up like this. Maybe a little smaller. There we go. And now we'll move this to the back. Let's bring it to the back. There we go. Boom. So the treehouse is now, it's now not nighttime. I'm going to shrink this down. We're going to need the real estate this label is taking up. Um, but it's nighttime in the treehouse. We'll adjust a tiny bit. There's the moon. Uh, flashlight. We'll bring a flashlight in. Oh, the first one is beautiful. Look at this. This is why you pay for the pro version, guys. These images are... You, you can't get better images than this. Let's flip that one a little bit. We're going to... It's going to have to be laying on the ground. Uh, probably about this angle. And shrink it down. See, it's a little bit bigger than the $100 bill. That looks like about right. Now we'll put it down here by the bike. Oh, no, it's going to... Hmm, the, the, 
this one doesn't work. I thought it was perfect, but uh, the, the beams blend in with the grass. So let's, let's see. What else do we have? Do we have better flashlights? This is this this one's so good. Is there, if there's a way we can use these, let's see. Let's put it up maybe like like yay, like so. We're gonna skip past this break in just a minute. We're just uh, taking a minute to update the uh, the thumbnail. Maybe maybe like this. There we go. Lay it on the ground over here. It's over here by the tire tracks. And that way we get the light and it has to be a little smaller because it's obviously off in the distance. There we go. All right. Uh, now where were we? Um, let's go back to trial. We're, we're on a break. So let's, uh, let's skip ahead just a tiny bit. There we go. All right, ready, camera two. Are we coming back? I think we are. Let's uh, let's go back. The law one one on one counter is is what we have for the suitcases are not their own image. Um, I'll I'll work on that. I'm not I'm not I like the trailer, but the suitcase. Not it. The flower pot with the white handled knife on the other side of the tracks. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll give it some thought. I can I make We're no back. guarantees. Um, Thank you, Judge. We were able to, we're ready to go. Just out of curiosity, I saw Jill. I don't know if anybody touched base with her about the, what Mr. Tucker said, that the medical note was sent to Jill. That was, she was in here. I don't know if anybody had a chance to check with her or not. Judge, um, she did say she got it and she was going to forward it, but I, I, I will find out. We'll okay. We'll I, mean, it's, tomorrow. I just came to mind as I saw yep. her. So. Thank you. All right. <coughs> so, let's bring in the jury. This evening, Weather Watch is going to be uh, doing a live stream with some of the weather that's happening. You do want to be following that, especially if you're concerned. And you should be, because we have some pretty nasty weather pretty much all across the United States uh, this weekend. If you haven't just had nasty weather, you're about to have it. That, that's, that's pretty much how it breaks down. There's our defendant. He's pro se, representing himself. No lawyer. He's doing it on his own. We are counting how many times the judge, or in some cases the, uh, the opposing counsel, has to edumacate him on the, the finer details of, of lawyering. I am scared. We, we get like tornadoes or something, and it's like worse than the first round. If, uh, if you missed the, the final, I'm going to spoil it here. Uh, Leila Me, the final, how the, uh, the reckless driving in the mom's Prius case went. Uh, jury came back with a conviction for reckless driving. The judge then went as light as she possibly could on him. Um, literally only charging $104 of fees. Thank you for your could have charged 5000 States now ready to start their direct examination. Of no jail the witness time. Who has already been placed under oath and is on the witness stand and ready to go. No reporting to Thank a you, judge. Officer. officer Fernandez, good afternoon. Are you officer or deputy? Uh, Sergeant Fernandez. Okay, I'm wrong on both accounts. Sergeant Fernandez, good afternoon, sir. Can you state your full name for the record? David Fernandez. And Sergeant, how are you employed? Uh, with the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you worked for them? Since October 28th of 2008. 2008? Yes. And your current title? Uh, Detective Sergeant. All right. And, very well. And you, uh, you, are you stationed out of one location or do you travel up and down the Keys? Right now I'm stationed out of Marathon, Florida. All right. All right, Sergeant. Well, thank you for being here today. I want to take you back. Um, first of all, when did you become a, a Detective Sergeant? Approximately year and a half ago. Okay, so before that, let's go back to 2017. What title did you have at that point in time? Detective Lower Keys. Detective Lower Keys, okay. And you were based, that, does, I guess that involves Key West? Uh, Stock Island area up to Big Pine, our lower sector. Out okay. of, our office is out of headquarters. All right, very well. And that's over on Stock Island, right? Yes. Okay, so Sergeant, let's talk about back in 
uh, November 17th of 2017. Were you working for the sheriff at that point in time? Yes. And were you working as a detective in the Lower Keys? Yes. And were you at some point called to assist in an investigation of an event that happened over on Stock Island? Yes. All right, and this was a stabbing at a place called the Treehouse, is that right? Yes. Um, are you familiar with that location? Yes. Okay, can you tell the jury what exactly was that location? It uh, looks like a run-down kind of vacant property. There was a trailer on it and a, like a balcony on top of the trailer. Um, it's hard to see in and out from the road. We've responded to calls there throughout my career here. Um, is it actually a, a dwelling where people live? Yes, there, there's it's people come and go from that location, except I believe the trailer. There may have been someone staying there a lot longer, but the tree house is known for people coming and going. I guess people who pass through vagrants or people who don't have a permanent home? Yes. And there's no running water at the tree house, is that right? That I know of, no. Okay. Electricity? That I know of, no. All right. Sergeant, you were asked to get involved in this investigation uh, to track down some videos. Is that accurate? Yes. All right. Tell the jury, how did you, how did that request come to you, uh, and what action did you take when you got the request? So it's from the lead detective. Uh, it was either Detective Malone or Detective Pitcher that there's available a video available from, uh, I believe it's Lower Keys Electric on Second Avenue, and then also video from Cosme Marine on Laurel Avenue. And were you able to go to those locations? Yes. And what was your purpose in going to those locations? Retrieving the video, a property receipt, and then turning it over to the lead detective. All right, and did you in fact do that? Yes. Now, when you went over there to collect the videos, did you watch the videos? Yes. Were you asked to watch the videos? To, to be able to upload it into a disc or a USB, we would normally watch it, make sure what, what we have and what we can see. All right. Yes. And as a matter of fact, you watched those videos prior to coming to trial here today, is that right? Yes. So this time I'm going to have our term pre-mark a thumb drive as a state exhibit. I think I might have one. Right, we're, we may be able to see the video a little bit, depending on if this prosecutor decides to stand and block our view. Hopefully he does not. Law 101 for the Sergeant, prosecutor. Now you were in my offices yesterday, correct? We're just yes. counting defense. these time. videos? Yes. Do they fairly and accurately represent the videos that you brought, uh, that you obtained through this investigation? Yes, they do. Were they altered with or tampered with in any way? No. At this time, Judge, I've already published them to the defense on the break, and I'd seek to move in with some previously marked uh, as golf for identific identification. Is there any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, so admit states exhibit G for identification into evidence. That would be number seven. Number seven. So I don't embarrass myself, Judge, I don't have my, my helper here. So you want to publish them now? Yes, sir, I'm sorry. I'd like to publish uh, to the jury and have the detective, if you would, detective, step down and uh, have you uh, go ahead and bring them up for us, because I know you know this is better than I can. Okay. Do you mind if I turn over around there? Tucker, you can position himself, or we can position the screen so he's able to and the jury's oh, no. see, so uh, there yes 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 now we're now we're cooking with fire you, you can pull up that chair there where the bales can help you to pull, pull up. how many people does it take to play a video just want to be sure that jurors if you're all able to see the screen where on the uh, exhibit is being published yes all right go ahead Thank you, Judge. Um, Sergeant, thank you for stepping down. If you could bring up the first video. Beautiful. Thank you. And 
Beautiful. Let's go ahead and play that one. Here. These are the videos you want to obtain during the investigation? Yes. And what area are we seeing right now? So where this vehicle is coming down that second street, and this would be second avenue. So where would the treehouse be in, in reference to what we're looking at here? The treehouse would be down second street, the direction of this truck. <coughs> And then you would have Maloney. So the treehouse is over there? Correct. Yes. Where's Tom Thumb? Tom Thumb is the same direction. It's a treehouse. It's up that way. Oh, oh, Mr. Tucker, you'll have your chance to uh, cross examine right now. Uh, please don't. Clarification. All right, Sergeant, if you could just rewind it 10 seconds so we can see what, what we just watched there. Can you tell the jury? What evidentiary value did you find from this video? So my understanding at the time was there is a statement made by a co-defendant of his movements throughout that night, and it was corroborating his statements. And this video would uh, depict that. So the importance of this video is the person we just saw walking across the road there? Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. The video goes on for, I think, almost 10 minutes. Do you recall if there's anything else on this video of an evidentiary value that uh, that would be something that was germane to this investigation? No, I do not. Okay. Let's stop this one then. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we do that, timestamp. What time is this video? 2017, which would be 8-17. And the date? Uh, November 17th of 2017. Okay, so around, for those who are not familiar with military time, around about 8, 17 in the evening, right? Yes. And that's when we see the person walking across there. Now, in relation to where the treehouse is located, are they walking towards it or from it? Walking towards it. Okay. All right, yeah, so let's bring up the other one. We had a truck drive by down towards the treehouse and one person in like shorts and a t-shirt walking by but we haven't identified the truck or that person uh, clearly, where is this video taking what perspective are we looking at here this is filming so the this merchandise. is Laurel Avenue what that building what you see on the corner is CVS on Stock Island and this business belongs to the building here building. Yes. So that's CVS? Correct. The one that's right on US 1? Yes. Okay. And I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What, what other perspective are you giving us? This is Cosme Marine, which is on the corner of Laurel Avenue and 2nd Street. Uh, where would the treehouse be in relation to the vantage that we're looking at now? So the treehouse would be just a couple properties down Laurel Avenue, right in this area. Down that way? Yes. You said a couple of properties? Yes. Can you estimate footage or it's tough, right? So next door to that is a motorcycle repair shop. And then it's either right next to that or the following property is, is pretty close. Um, I would have to fast forward if we want to get to that. That's going to be my next question was, so now, is there anything of an evidentiary value Reveal from this video during your investigation? Yes. And take us to the part that you're referring to. So, the same thing, my understanding is there was a statement made by one of the co defendants, and it was to corroborate his story. Can and you show us where on the video we see anything of an adventure done? here is a vehicle that's going to come and approach in front of Cosmo Marine and then stop right in front of this vessel here. Okay, 
And do you know what kind of vehicle that is? Can you tell from the video? It looks like a truck to me. If I rewind. With the front truck. The direction it is and also it appears to be a, a bed of a truck to me. What's that? Sorry, that, it, again, right now the questions are coming from the, the uh, prosecutor here. And again, Mr. Tucker can ask any cross examination. That's a lawyer in 101. And that's where you can see a reflection here. <coughs> like movement or something of light and no light on that area right here where the mouse is pointing in this area. And if you keep watching, it continues. Okay. And what do we see there? So here we see two people walking from the direction of the truck towards the treehouse, which correlates with the movement you can see near that lighting of the truck there. So those two individuals we see walking, would they be walking in the direction where the treehouse would be located? Yes. So they parked the truck and walked to the treehouse. We look at the swagger. Well, was there anything, I, let me ask you, is there anything else of evidentiary value after what we just saw? I don't recall. Okay. Um, they're, they're, the video looks like it's another maybe 10 minutes or so. I don't recall anything on this specific video. But. Very well. All right, we're good for now then. So they never went back to the truck? Yeah, they can leave up that sign. So, Detective Fernandez, when your your job is to retrieve these videos, is that right? Yes. And uh, you did that, correct? Yes. And did you put them into the, or upload them into your data system so you'd have them, or they would have them as part of this investigation? I did not personally upload them. I uh, transferred them over from our property from a property receipt. All right. Did you have anything, uh, any other hand in this investigation at this point after retrieving these videos? Um, so I retrieved the videos. Uh, I did get information from a, a citizen that provided some information. I was in there, okay. but for the video part, that's, that's, that's it then. All right. Um, Sergeant, I have no further questions for it this time. Thank you. Here comes the uh, spicy examination. Class. Detective Sergeant Fernandez, it's been a long time. How you been? Good. Thank you. Um, you can position the podium as you, that's good for okay, you. Okay, good. Actually, up here would be a little bit better for me, I'm probably sure. Right. I don't want it to fall over, though. All right. Now, this video here, right? Um, now, you see two guys get out of the truck. That's true. Do you see anybody sitting waiting in the truck? No. So you can't see that there's actually a driver in the truck, right? No, I cannot. Good. That's, that's all I need from this video. Video previous, you said that the only thing that was evidentiary value was the guy walking up. That I recall, but my position was to, to retrieve the video. Okay, but you did watch it, right? Uh, very little, as okay. I did today. Do you remember um, at the time what the video was, you know, what it was purported to be when you first got it? I remember watching just what we showed today in court. Yeah. You don't remember Captain Phelps calling it something else? No, okay. I don't. Just a second. Um, okay, so um, if, I, if I remember correctly, um, you know, that video has a little bit longer to go on the other one, and there is some other evidentiary value on there. Um, but we'll go ahead and you, go. You, of course, are entitled to go back and check it out. Whatever you sure. uh, care to on this exhibit, it's in evidence. Would you just like me to? Yeah, if you would. No, that's okay. All right. 
right. Little little uh, advice there. You're entitled to actually show the evidence yourself. I said this was originally to corroborate uh, code of assessment, correct? I would be speaking on that. That's what I believe. I That's believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they they should be objections all over the place on both sides that are not being made. Judge, I just I think the podium's blocking a view for some of the jurors. Okay, so we'll try to position it in a way that's good for everyone. Bailiff Butler is useful moving furniture as well as filling now, mugs. Has anybody who they are in this video? I do not. Let's get to that some more. Time. No idea where, but they're looking for something that happens on this video. He thinks it has evidentiary value. Keep going. Detective is Okay, the, our, our uh, court reporter here is uh, asking me to ask you gentlemen to speak louder, please. Again, we don't have the benefit of the mic, so no we, all right. There we go, right here. Now, right here. this is about evidentiary value, too, correct? Um, if I remember, uh, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with this video. And it's a pretty, pretty big part of the investigation, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, I remember correctly that was identified as Roy Wilson. I do not know. Yeah. All right. Well, so, went back up to the treehouse. That was what you're saying. That way is up to the treehouse, right? Correct. And that way is that, correct? Correct. And that's going towards where? The warehouse? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So that's pretty much the evidentiary value of that video. <laughs> The one question we have always had, and I'd love to have, you know, ask you since you're here and you collected it, is uh, why didn't we get more video of this? I can't answer that. You were just told to go get it. Yes. You, know, you weren't told to get specific times or anything like that, no. right? <clears throat> All right. You were just told, you always wanted to have it. I'd ask you why you were there. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, no further questions. Anybody redirect examination? No, sir. All right. So, is this witness subject to recall, or is he to be? No, good. As far as I'm concerned, he could be excused. Thank you. You can step down and be excused. So the video showed those what appeared to be the two people who got out of the truck, reportedly. Further witnesses for the state. Walking down the road. Okay. So why don't we approach the bench here? Okay, so they are going to uh, they're going to wrap up for today, meaning yesterday, which means we get to start uh, the next day. We're going to give them just a minute. We made made a little tiny update. I'm not sure if you're going to like this or not. Uh, to the uh, to the scene, the scene of the crime. We moved the the trailer a little bit. We we had a had it dragged back a little bit, a few inches away from the tree, so you can see the suitcases separate from the tire swing. Uh, we also uh, got a chalk out outline. I, or I I jumped the gun. A little bit. I jumped the gun uh, and put the chalk op outline on the ground um, where the, where Matt um, was uh, the homeowner or the trailer owner was uh, was located. So you can't see that. I didn't. Sorry. It helps if I do this, huh? I switched my view, but not yours. There it is. Anyway, we're 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 coming along nicely. It's it's uh, it's going to be a work of art by the time this trial is over. Uh, you need a close up. Close up looks like this. I mean, we've got we've got a chalk outline down here by the. 
the chalk outline actually came with the ketchup stain. I'm not sure why they, they put the two together, but the, the two were together. Um, we've moved the uh, suitcases are now separate from the tire swing. There's our key lime pie indicating the, uh, the location in Key West as well as the courtroom decor um, and then everything else. So we'll, we'll, we'll add to this as we go along. And it's nighttime now, of course. We've updated. It's no longer daytime because we realize this, this crime happened at night. Um, might, might down here, I'm thinking way down here, we might put like a boat, a boat, you know, on a trailer, something like that. But we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later. All right, so now we go back to, to court. They're doing the sidebar it's scheduling, I believe. Let's see what the, what the outcome is. TC, thanks for five All months right, of members support. members of the jury, uh, we thank you so much for your attention and patience during the course of the day, but we're going to uh, call it a day. Um, I may have mentioned to you previously, and if I haven't, I'll mention it now, that uh, trials are a function often of logistics, travel, timing, and the like. So the state uh, anticipated that the witnesses that they had here today would fill the time. Uh, we've got the you know, a while before five, but uh, there's no more witnesses lined up. So um, good news is we have a short day for you. And the good news also is that we're on schedule. That's I, I try to focus on uh, many things, including what I call the big picture. And I want to be sure as the days unfold that uh, we're not wasting time, which we're not, and that uh, we're going to do our best to adhere to what I told you originally. And, we're doing those things. So I would say tomorrow at 9.15 would uh, be a good starting time. Um, enjoy the remainder of your day. Uh, follow the court's cautionary instructions, and we'll be uh, ready to proceed with further evidence in the state's case in chief. So we will be here at 9.15. I'll look forward to it. The uh, notepads stay right there on the chair. The bailiff's going to collect them, secure them, and they'll be ready for your use tomorrow. Have a good evening. All right, as they bail, as they bail on this, we're, we're going to catch up with today's proceedings, which have already begun, and they, they start with the bang as well. So let's, uh, let's give them just a minute to wrap up here in court. Then uh, jump over and added one beer can. We need to add a few more. Apparently, apparently you can't just add one beer can. If, if, if Bud Light was consumed on scene, apparently more than one Bud Light was consumed. All Not right, sure jurors a, are a, going. A so I told them 9:15, feeling that we could be here at nine to again address any potential questions or issues. Hopefully there won't be any, but at least we'll give ourselves that cushion. So. As far as the um, thumb drive is concerned, is that going to be... Um, oh, that has to be. That's in evidence. So. Right, I understand. That's what I mean. So we probably want to take it out of the equipment and put it in the envelope and yes. give it to the clerk. And just so I'm clear, your system is lost, right? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, unless there's something else, uh, well, have a good evening. See you tomorrow at 9. Okay. All right. You got everything? Yeah, we're all good. Okay. There we go. There's our defendant. Handful of pens. Charger. Doing a little cleanup on the uh, the defense table here. Looking uh, quite smug, my dad. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and kill that feed. We're going to jump ahead to today's video so we can catch up there. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where where are we? I think we have, I think we're on this one. Let's go up and rewind quite a bit. 
quite, quite, quite a bit. Um, to the right here. We've got a few minutes of nothing happening, so we're going to take that. Now, we have, uh, before, we, before we jump to court, I was going to show you, we do have a, a small update to the, uh, the thumbnail. We have this little, uh, I, I got a blue can. Is that is that close enough? I mean, does everyone know what we're talking about um, when we have a blue can here? And we might need to uh, make a couple more of them and move them around a bit. Uh, so this one's going to be over here a little bit, like so. Um, this guy we're going to put over here by the bike. I think this one should be standing up. Well, at least I'll just lay it down like so. There we go. There we go. We've got the cans. We'll work on the satellite dish uh, next as we as we get started here in court for the next day. Satellite dish. Uh, we don't need. Um, it's it's going to be like a direct TV version, right? So TV dish, there it is. Boom. Oh, it was right on top, right where we needed it. Let's see if there's a better one. But man, this is this is our this is our baby right there. Of course, the color it needs to be gray like the the actual dish. So let's let's tone this one down to say like a a nice gray like that. And let's see, size wise, it was mounted on the roof, so we'll put that one right up here, a little bigger. Even though it's proportionally, it's out of it. Uh, but that, that'll work. Color wise, needs to go a little darker. Unfortunately, it it needs to be nearly black to really to really pop. That's not it. We have to choose a manual color here. Let's go. Yeah, let's go right right there. There we go. Okay. With that update, we are ready to uh, ready to proceed. We'll go back to trial here. Uh, no, no, no negotiation. Um, it was we hang thought. On, hang on, hang on. We need to we need to back up because I I missed a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna have audio on. It's gonna start in just a minute. This is this is current day. This is today, so we're a little bit behind. We are catching up. Uh, the pipe. I. Falasumi. I need to know. I call me sheltered. I I, I led a you know a reasonable life. I don't know what a cracked pipe looks like. Morning, please. Morning, sir. All right. Well, we're making progress. I came out at nine, which is when I told the attorneys and Mr. Tucker to be here. I told the jurors nine fifteen. So. I was speculating that perhaps there was a misunderstanding or maybe there was uh, negotiations for a settlement ongoing that uh, <laughs> no, Judge. necessitated everyone's absence. They were so late. what happened with you guys? No, sir. Uh, no, no, no negotiation. Um, it was, we thought Your Honor had said 9.15 and we took that to mean us. And so uh, that's what time we planned. Our apologies. Okay. Well, uh, so Mr. Tucker is... Hallelujah. It's a bad start when the prosecutors uh, forget to show up to court on day two of their murder trial. But that's where we are. Um, they're here now, so we're just going to get everyone settled in. And we'll uh, we'll begin. Let's see, a corn cob pipe instead of a corn is corn cob and the crack pipe interchangeable? <laughs> Reverend Beasy, <laughs> you can't expect me to know what a crack pipe looks like. I'll tell you, I think I I found I'm not sure if it was a crack pipe. I think I found a bong, like a like a mini no, a, the bong's the big one, right? It's one they can put like vodka or whatever in and then you smoke through I, I think i did find a crack pipe i think i it was a it was a little glass pipe a small small pipe that was uh, hidden while well, i was metal detecting i found it in a in a playground which is where you find crack pipes i believe um this trial is a hot mess it's 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 bizarre it's crazy it's got a little bit of everything happening here and uh and we're liking it so yes that's it okay so i'm trying to remember what it looked like i did i did I did pick up the crack pipe, uh, not because I I wanted it or 
or wanted to show it off or anything, but I didn't want somebody else, namely a kid, to find it. And so I picked it up and I put it in my metal detecting bag uh, because I, I pick up a lot of trash when I'm metal detecting and then I go and dump it. And I realized at some point while I'm out metal detecting, if a cop were to pull up and be like, hey, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm just metal detecting. Like, What's that in your bag? Uh, paraphernalia. I realized at that point I was probably committing a crime by having like, the, the paraphernalia. So I just, I went and I took it and I threw it in the garbage so that broke. But. See, somebody's calling on the phone. Call uh, We have a crack pipe specialist on the phone. Uh, <laughs> there's Mr. Tucker. Uh, calling from, uh, calling from Northern Wisconsin here. Uh, name shall not be identified. You need a straight hang on, hang on. Mr. Tucker was late too. Um, I guess both yeah, you and the state. Yeah, backpack though. I guess understood the instructions for the wall be here at nine. Uh, Any bandwidth title outfit? Here at nine fifteen. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Any event. Um, please endeavor to be on time in the future. Okay. I, uh, We're going to pause for just a second. Ivan, tell me about the crack okay. pipe. What what am I okay. supposed to know about this? So this is what you need to know. Crack pipe, straight glass pipe. It's about, I don't know, three to five inches long, depending on the quality. Okay. Um, it, 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 literally a straight glass pipe. And you know, chore boy, the stuff you clean dishes with, mm -hmm. you, you know, that gets stuffed in the end because that's what you set the crack on. Because you don't want to just blow the crack right into your mouth because, well, that would, that would be wasting crack. What a waste well, of crack. Well, it's, well, the hurt. The hurt is the second, but each crack's defensive, okay? You don't be wasting crack. Uh, you don't just go throw gold in the ocean, do you? Um, <laughs> <Okay>. and, so, <laughs> and so you uh, you, you get your straight glass pipe about three to five inches long. I know we aren't uh, necessarily I don't want to know. For, I don't uh, want to know how to use it. I just need to know what they look like. You have straight glass. Straight, uh, straight glass. Literally, okay. like so. Yeah, if yeah, straight if glass, mine, if mine yep. had a bend in it, what would that have been? Just a pipe? Meth pipe. Meth pipe. Meth oh, pipe. meth yep. pipe. That the makes bend. it. Is that better yeah. or worse? Well, the bend. The bend is where. So you put the meth in the bottom, and then you light from the bottom. With crack, you light straight down the straight down the hole. That's why you need a tour boy stick in the end, uh, so you don't suck it right through. I, with the meth, I think with the bend. I think it's worse. Yeah. I think it's worse from a legal perspective. I think meth is worse. Um, I don't. Maybe they're they're all the same schedule of drugs, right? Well, I mean, in, in two thousand twenty four, meth is worse. If we were in the eighties, crack would be worse. You know, interesting how time somehow affects the severity potato, of drugs. Potato, potato, right? We started on yeah. yeah. Well, well, isn't it also interesting that they first and started uh, first started uh, installing ATMs at the same time the crack ed ed epidemic went through? Like, why else do you need five hundred dollars at three in the morning? Well, I mean. <laughs> Well, so. it, interesting. Okay, well, it was just educational. Oh, the, I appreciate the clarification. It's educational when they're talking yep. about this. That's what we want to know what is happening. So thank you very much. I will let it go at that because any more than this, so I'm here. be in trouble. But uh, all right, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Appreciate you. All, all right, right. we're, we're going to return to court. So we'll see you. Bye. Bye. All right, uh, enough, enough with that. So for educational purposes, they talked about uh, what was being used in this treehouse. Uh, we don't need to know exactly how it happens, but uh, we'll see if we can add that to the... It's going to look like a straw, guys. It's going to look like a straw, apparently. And uh, that's where it is. I have to just make a quick change to, um, to my uh, settings on this, on this stream. Nothing to be concerned about, uh, per se, but I uh, just want to make sure everything is accurate. Oh, it's going to be on the monetization tab. Okay. I don't know. It's, it, is, it is what it is. Um, sometimes the information in, in court case includes, uh, you know, some, some, telling, some telling things. But let's see, playlists... Not made for kids. Age restriction. Here we go. Yes, restrict my video to viewers over the age of 18. Save. Let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, basically, uh, here's what we have. The people we have with us in the stream, that's pretty much all we're going to have for the rest of the day because at this point, the algorithm is not working for us. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to go ahead and continue uh, 
up until our lunchtime. And then maybe we can try again later this afternoon. We'll try again later. <laughs> uh, Greeter's like, no, now I can't watch. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I just had, to, uh, had to do this. We're going to start the feed just right here. Keep stopwatch here. Be on, be on time to court. This is, understanding, but this this is, is lawyering 101 as well. So we're going to say this is 13. It's got to stop. So, uh, All right. Main event. Um, here we are. State versus Tucker. You can't be mad at Mr. Tucker for being late because the state was also late. And I did receive the, uh, what should I call it, the note from Janice M. Adams, Director of Care Management, Lower Keys Medical Center. Uh, and I don't want to be a stickler here or be unreasonable. Uh, all what I have says Paula Belmonte is a patient at Lower Keys Medical Center. What additional information do you need? So, is she going to be a patient next week? Is her condition such that she's just physically unable to endure the rigors of travel and appearing live in person? Those are the questions. So, in other words, um, if you would, Your Honor, um, if I might. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, I understand totally that 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 note is definitely vague, and you definitely need more details than that. I would understand that. Um, if you recall, I didn't I didn't send the note. I didn't I didn't see it before Your Honor saw it. So let me go ahead and I'll I'll get with them and make sure they send you a much more detailed explanation. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to really pry into Ms. Del Monte's personal health information. I, I mean, it's not news that, unfortunately, the woman is very ill. Yeah. There's no question about that. That's yeah. been a fact that we've all operated with for many yeah. years now, frankly. But well, look nevertheless, when it comes down to this trial and her personal appearance, uh, that's pretty important. I Oh, definitely, Your Honor. And Seems like it would be... I think they could also do it where they don't give away any of her privileged me medical information, but they could also put it in a way that, you know, you, Your Honor would know that she is, is definitely not capable of showing up here in person. Um, you know, one of the things, just to let Your Honor know, it, it is a condition that is on top of what we already knew was a life-threatening condition. You know, so, and she was under quarantine. That they could at least put in there that she was under quarantine. Yeah, I, I don't really need to have any details about what specifically it is. But if, if the doctors say this woman is uh, going to be in the hospital for the foreseeable future, even if she gets out, it would be uh, a threat to her health to travel to the courthouse, be in the courthouse, get on the witness stand, endure the rigors of personal cross-examination. All that can be provided without... Um, compromising any confidential information. Yep. Moreover, in terms of the law on this ongoing issue, I've done some research, had staff do some research, and there's a case from the Florida Supreme Court, uh, Harrell versus State, 709 Southern 2nd, 1364, that's 709 Southern 2nd, 1364. Mr. Tucker's not even writing this down. To me, it's right on point. It's it talks law, about uh, the utilization of um, remote transmission of a of testimony Zoom. in lieu of a deposition to perpetuate. Now, that was before the days of Zoom, but they were talking about satellite transmission. And ultimately, uh, the court left to the sound discretion of the judge in so many words, um, but I'm not really sure that it was a valid reason for the witness not to be able to appear, either due to illness or being outside the jurisdiction. And, you know, an analysis of the uh, interests and procedures uh, which would be best in 
who's calling the witness and the like. So ultimately, I think it comes down to uh, an exercise of sound discretion. If technically it can happen, and if she's unable to be here, and there can be the provisions where we're going to have the most assurance that it's going to go as smoothly as we can hope for, again, without being able to control everything, you know, there's always the unknown. It seems like it would favor the Zoom, but if you all want to look at uh, that case, I will it might be instructive. Yes, sir. So, otherwise, uh, state is ready to proceed? Judge, we are ready to proceed. I just want to check. Our, our witness went to the, the office, and I think she's walking over now, so let me just check and call and see if she's here. What about the defendant? Uh, Yes, I'm ready to proceed, Your Honor. Okay. And the jurors are here, but let's just wait till Mr. Mansfield makes this check. We've got the mug shot for Mr. Tucker. I'm going to prep that for you so we can share that in just a moment. Uh, the, the news of this morning, other than the fact that both prosecution and defense were late, is that uh, the Paula who used to get around uh, quite a bit, is, is not getting around as much as she used to. Uh, she's, she's in the hospital yeah. and, uh, and just uh, and, and I'm not doing well at all. So the judge is saying, he cited some case law, says, look, we've got some precedent for a Zoom, for a Zoom hearing, a remote hearing. That might be something we have to consider. Um, and uh, he cited the case law. Mr. Tucker was too busy plugging his laptop to, to record that, uh, that citation in case he wanted to. But I think it's going to go in favor of that. Just to understand that Paula, as far as we understand, Paula is right. the defense witness. Bring in the jury. All right, so let's bring in the jury, please. <laughs> Judge, let's bring in the jury. He's not in custody. He's out on like $2 million bail or something. Uh, he made, uh, he's made friends with the, uh, one of the co-owners of, of CrossFit, co-founders of CrossFit, and she put up the bail. Yeah, a couple of you noticed that he did come in late to court carrying a Starbucks mug, which, uh, or a, a Starbucks to-go cup, which means he probably made a stop on the way to court. Not a good look. Not a good look. The judge didn't mention it directly, but uh, yeah, you, you might want to not do that next time. Uh, it's a good thing you muted this morning, uh, Eric. It was a little rough. We ha we've had some crazy stuff this morning. You have to go back and watch it, unfortunately. It's a rule. But uh, but it was good. Okay, we're waiting for the jury now. Just quiet while the, they herd themselves into the uh, the Key Lime courtroom. Which I think, is, I think that's the name for the courtroom. We're going to call it Key Lime courtroom. Some courts have numbers. Some have letters. Some have numbers and letters. This just has all letters. Key Lime. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen of the jury. Great to see you all here this morning. Thank you for being here on time. Um, sorry I had to wait a few minutes to come out, but as I've tried to explain, you know, frequently there's things that arise uh, that the judge needs to address. And they're not for the jurors' consideration. And, those things happen. I try to uh, expedite them to the extent that I can, and I'm always aware of your time. I don't take it for granted. So thank you for your patience this morning. As I say, it's good to see you. I know it's been a long week. You know, we've had a busy week from my vantage point, a productive week. And so now is, today is Friday. Uh, and as you know from my scheduling uh, announcements that uh, Monday is a... Uh, national holiday, it's a state court holiday. We won't be in session. So after today, the next time we'll be in session is Tuesday. But for today, um, you know, the state commenced presentation of its case in chief yesterday, and we're going to allow them con to continue with that today. So please continue to give uh, what's presented to you your close attention and focus. and. With that, uh, State, your next witness. Yes, Your Honor, State, we're called uh, Deputy Danielle Malone. 
Daniel All Malone. Right. Deputy Daniel Malone. Deputy Daniel Malone. Danielle, sorry. Uh, Selena, this is actually in Florida. Key West, Florida. As you can see from the key lime uh, paint on the walls and carpet in the courtroom. Please come forward, ma'am, right through the gate there. You would approach the deputy positioned in front of the witness stand. Say stop right there is good. Turn, face the clerk, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give in the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? All right, please have a seat on the witness stand. So, good morning. I, I did note that you uh, brought what looked like some sort of binder you carried up to the witness stand with you, and that's all right, except you cannot refer to that while you're testifying unless you're specifically asked and allowed to do so. I just, yes, sir. Uh, all right. And please speak loudly and clearly. Thank you, Honor. May I proceed? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Please state your name again for the record. My name is Danielle Malone. And where are you currently employed? The Monroe County Sheriff's Office. And in what capacity are you employed there? I am currently employed as a communications supervisor in the 911 center. How long have you been employed with the Monroe County Sheriff's Office? Since January 2007. So that's approximately, what, 15, 16 years? Yeah, I believe it's 16. Um, have you, have you always served in the communications division or have you served in other areas? I've served in other areas with, within the agency. Please explain for the jury what other areas you've served. When I first started, I was a deputy sheriff trainee, went through the police academy, and then I was on road patrol for approximately four and a half years, and then I moved into a canine handler spot, which is also road patrol just with the dog. Did that for about four, four and a half years. After that, my dog retired and I went back to being road patrol for about six, seven months. Then I went into the communications department for approximately nine months. And then from the communications department went into the major crimes detective bureau and was there for, I think, two and a half years. Okay. I'd like to direct your attention to November 17th of 2017. Uh, were you working in the major crimes unit at that time? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you have an opportunity to become involved uh, in, in, in a case that's commonly referred to as a treehouse case? Yes, sir. Okay. And what was the nature of your involvement in that case? I was one of the assisting detectives to... Uh, to investigate the case? Yes, to investigate the case. Okay. And during the course of that investigation, um, were you ever asked to uh, retrieve and, and obtain videos that may be relevant to to this, this case? Yes, sir. Okay, and did you in fact do so? Yes, sir. And were those videos provided to you by Detective Fernandez of the Monroe County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Okay. It seems like perturbed that you asked. Yes, you've got permission. Approach already. So if you want, I'd like to take a look at that exhibit piece and then the interior. Take a look at that item. Yes, sir. And what is that? It's a cosme it's a flash drive with uh, Cosme video surveillance. Are those the ones that were provided to you by Detective Fernandez? I believe this is a copy of, of a copy it. of it. Yes. Have you, had, have you had an opportunity to review that? Yes, I have reviewed this flash drive. Okay, and does it very accurately represent the video footage that you retrieved in reference to this case? Yes, sir. It is time to move uh, states. H. States H into evidence. Is there any objection? Um, yes, sir. Just only because I haven't seen what videos are on the tape, I don't know what's on, on the flash drive. 
Well, did you want to confer with the prosecutor? Or yeah, just for a second, because I'd, I'd like to see what's on the t what's on the drive, just if I could. Oh, okay. you're talking about the, the following two? Yeah. Okay, as long as it's just those videos, that's fine. I haven't seen the videos. I've not actually reviewed uh, the discovery. Oh, look at that. I requested the videos thousands of times. He never sent that. He said. Moved up. Exhibit H. Is there any objection? Uh, no. All right. So H is admitted into evidence as the next in order being number eight. Number eight. Well, she gets this taken care of. Uh, let me just say, I love having hardware to stream from because I am well, on rebooting my my live streaming computer while we speak, and the stream continues. All right, you can you can do it. If the court may allow me, I think I can use one of our investigators just to while I ask questions. He's going to work or the video work the mouse. All right, that's fine, Mr. Tucker. If you don't have a quick view from where you are, then you can. Position yourself. Wheel your chair on over. Where you were yesterday during a publication of a video. I appreciate that, John. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he didn't make an objection. Oh, look, is he wearing a key lime shirt? Everyone's the key lime is the color down there. This is this is what you wear. Defendant takes his front row seat in the uh, the theater here in the Keyline courtroom. This lime green would definitely keep people awake. I'm uh, I'm finding it's one of the least offensive things happening in the courtroom is the color of the walls. This is <laughs> a lot of what's going on is just like an offense to justice uh, overall. I can green screen the courtroom walls and the floor, but it will everything that color will go. I can't I can't selectively say just the wall, just the floor, just the shirt, um, anything with a reflection of the wall, like uh, say like on on Mr. Tucker's head, which is looks newly polished, looks great. I'm not I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That would also get keyed out. So what I'll do is I'll I'll have to switch to a, a background color and then run the key and put the video on top. All right, let's roll. I'm going to leave it for most of it. It'll look like this without a background color. But we'll get to it. Mom, Grandma, thank you so much for your continued support. Appreciate that. Welcome to the gallery. Tech support's going to try turn it off and on again, see if that fixes it. Detective Malone, while we're setting up those videos, I just wanted to ask you a couple of quick uh, groundwork questions. Did you have an opportunity to review the videos for evidentiary value? And based on your training experience, they did reveal some type of evidentiary value that you can explain to the jury, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, well, there's no question. Whoa, whoa. Mr. Muller, to the exact location of the video that you would like to Can I have a copy of my report? Because I have the time stamps. I can do that on refresh your recollection. Yes, sir. Do you have your report with you? I do. Okay, Judge, may she refresh, may the state refresh your recollection? Yes. Yes. Yes, she can. Okay. Would you mind if I take a look at that, Your Honor? Uh, what, uh, what, sir? Uh, whatever report she's referring to. Great. The state would need to show to the defendant whatever document she's using to refresh recollection. Thank you. I'd like to see everything in that binder. That's what he wants to say. I'd like to see the entire binder. Can you explain the jury? What exactly are we looking at right now? 
We're not looking at the still of the video camera from Cosme Marine, which is a business that is just off right next door to the tree house. This is the the marine lot here. Right here is a vacant lot. I'm sorry, Mr. Tucker. What I was wondering, uh, this is an, an official objection. I was just wondering if there's any way we can make it bigger for the jury to see. Because it's they've got it in a window that's just there we go, full screen. That's what I was asking. Okay, so this is this is the marine repair shop with their boat and their their fence, their lot. This is their covering directly across the street where you see the lights here, here, here. This is the parking lot of CBS and then the CBS building. Right here at the time in 2017, this was a vacant lot. And right next to this boat is the fence for the yard for the, the tree house for the residents for this. Upon reviewing this video for evidentiary value, what juncture at what time soon would you like jury would you be able to put the video for this year? The first time stamp would be nineteen forty three. Based on my interview, interview, based on the interview with the getaway driver, John Travis Johnson, he advised that he pulled up with. Actually, you can say I was objecting, Your Honor. I'm objecting, Your Honor. She's speaking for the other way. She's I'm going to sustain the objection. That's here. Right. That was hearsay. To sustain what would you want the jury to see him? We're going to see a pickup truck pull into view and then pull up right in front of these folks. Here comes the motorcycle goes the other direction. I think it takes a few minutes to get there. It'll be at uh, 1943 in about 23 seconds. value does that have based on your investigation? That it is consistent with the vehicle pulling up initially and then leaving and coming back a few minutes later. It's consistent with the vehicle that, that's alleged to have gone to the tree house in this case, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anything of evidentiary value on this on this video? In at 1945 and 15 seconds, the truck pulls back up in the same direction that it came from. Yes. 
see you in, in between, that little strata between the two bolts, that floats the light from the vehicle. And then you're going to see one figure appear here, ahead, and then the second figure appear here, walking towards the tree. Is there a second video that you uh, yes for a minute, you guys? I just start that. Is there any anything of value based on the training and investigation in this case on this video? It's at 1951 and 17 seconds. Okay. What would the jury be looking at at that portion of the video? When, when this portion starts, you're going to see from this direction where the tree house is, right next to this boat, you're going to see somebody come out here with a flashlight. Something or someone? Somebody. Okay. That has a flashlight in their hand. And you're going to see the flashlight bobbing as they go up this hill, this bank, to the CPS parking lot. That might have been our witness, Roger, with the flashlight. And right now he's like stepping over Matt. Must have got my timing wrong. <coughs> sort of like watching Mystery Science Theater uh, with the, the back of the heads, a little commentary. If I'm actual, we're waiting for that. Okay. 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 That's, the light. That's, the, that's the gentleman going up in the parking lot. And at the right of the screens, the, the truck that pulled up is still there, correct? It, it, it appears to be, yes. So just to recap, we see... Okay. Objection, Your Honor. That's it's speculative. Yeah. Well, not about speculative, but it's ask and answer, so we'll go to the next question. Very well. Is there anything else of evidentiary value on this, on this video? On this right? video, this section of the video. Okay, then let, is it, is, let's move to the second video that you reviewed so that we can play for the jury, please. Is that, is that a one Describe for the jury 15. what they're going to be seeing in this video, please. It's not speculative, but this it's asked to answer. This video is where that video just ended. This is picking up right, right there with the video. Video files are sometimes too large to do all at once. So, especially surveillance, you get them in, in sections, and this is the next section did of have, this. Did you have an opportunity to review this video for the entry back? Yes, sir. And do you need to refresh your recollection with respect to the part of the video that's relevant for the jury? Yes, look, if I could just look at the, the times. At, should be, Okay, I think it's is the time step 51 and 34, so it should be the very like last second of the first video. I'm sorry. The previous video. The jury's view is a little bit better. When, once we see the flashlight come up here, then we're going to see a person wearing all dark on, and it's very quick, and it just happened. <laughs> I was covering the screen with my hand, and some, there's something happening behind it. Let me just tell you that when it occurred. see somebody come out from the treehouse. Right in here. Don't blink, you guys. Stare, stare, stare. There and it is. Boom. Run that in the direction of where the truck was, where the truck had stopped. Okay. Very well. Thank you. And then on the next video. Oh, man, man. He has, he has, he has a nice question. Oh, just, excuse me, Judge. I was confirmed with my. I understand. Problem. And on the, on the second video, did you do the second video for evidentiary value? Yes, sir. Okay, can you put that video with me? 
far as timestamps to uh, have a good one, sir. Uh, 1951-51. And we're going to see somebody come out this area and walk right here. And they're going to walk up this way. And they're going to eventually come up into the town. But we well, just see Chin. That, that was one of the subjects that was in the trailer at the treehouse. With respect to this video, is there anything anything else of evidentiary value? Yes. We're on uh, day two. 1952 30. You're going to see the gentleman with the flashlight. That's going to be up here. He's going to come back down and walk back towards the treehouse. Just walking out, and he's going to be <coughs> back on the street again up near the CVS parking lot. Again, objection on it. She's saying it's the same person. She can't possibly tell that. There's no way she can tell that. I, I'm going to overrule the objection. Um, I can certainly cross examine her. Yeah. And they're coming up into the CVS parking lot. And then, right after. Uh, at <coughs> 1954 and 13 seconds, you're going to see a subject again come from here wearing all dark clothing, again heading in the direction where 22nd Street, where the truck was parked in between his boats. He's going to be lumbering. I, I guess that's the best way to describe it. He's not really, he's not running, he's not it's walking. A, it's a but swager. He's he's swagering. We'll see when it come, comes out. He's got swagering. Like McJager. Okay. And believe that it is everything that's on these. Very well. Okay, thank you so much. Shirt. Is that an attorney in a polo shirt in court? Or he's, a, he's the uh, tech support. In these videos, can you just play for the jury? Did you do anything else in this case? I also did the um, initial interview of Paula Belmonte. Okay, well, we'll, we'll address that in a moment. Um, with respect to collecting any uh, samples of DNA for swabs and testing, did you did you do any of that? Yes, sir. I I took the buckle swabs from um, Rory Wilson and Franklin Tupper. Mission approved. Yes. As far as far as collecting DNA swabs. From potential suspects, um, is that a formal class that you go to? Do you learn it at the Sheriff's Department? Please explain for the jury how you did that, how you learned that. Uh, this, when I came into Major Crimes, one of the more senior Major Crimes detectives walked me through it, showed me how to do it, and actually was with me 
the first couple times that I had taken local DNA swabs from subjects. It's called on-the-job training. Okay, can you please describe that process for the jury? So when we're taking a DNA swab, a buckle swab, they come in a, a sterile packet, and it's basically a Q-tip with a wood stick, and it, they're pretty, pretty long, about yay long. We ask the subject to open their mouth. We put on uh, protective latex or nitrile gloves. We have the subject open their mouth. We open the sterile package. We insert the Q-tip into their into their mouth, onto the inside of their cheek, and then we do at least three circles, going like one way clockwise, and then going counterclockwise in the other. Then we take that swab, we put it back into that sterile case, then we put it into a small cardboard case that is specifically for buckle swabs, tape that up, and then we put it into a, a brown paper bag, and that gets taped up. We also do a second swab. We take this, the exact same process, another sterile Q-tip, and have the subject open their mouth, and then we swab the opposite cheek and make them big circles, big circles, back in, back into the cardboard box that gets sealed. The box gets labeled with date and time that we took the sample, who we took the sample from, and then them boxes go into the brown paper bag that gets all taped up and then gets labels printed on to it with barcodes for tracking for property. You indicated that in this case you took swabs from Mr. Rory Hank Wilson and also from Mr. Franklin Tyrone Tucker, the defendant in this case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mission approach the witness, right? Yes. Sure, you've been previously marked as states. Uh, exhibit uh, for identification, I and J. Yes, sir. Look at them. Do you recognize those? Yes, sir. I see my initials on the tape and on the label that was that was made on this one, and the same thing here. I see my initials on the edges of the tape on the label. And again, the edges of the tape that's on the back side. And exhibit I, which is the swab uh, that was taken from the defendant in this case, Mr. Tucker, did you follow the same procedures you just described for the jury? Yes, sir. Did you deviate from those procedures in any shape, fashion, or form? No, sir. The okay, same questions for State's Exhibit J, uh, and that is the swab you took from Mr. Wilson. Did you follow the same exact procedures that you described for the jury here? Yes, sir. Did you deviate in any shape, fashion, or form in any manner? No, sir. Judge, at this time, the state will move in. State type for I and J and Ted. Is there any objection? <coughs> Admit those as the next two in order be? Nine and ten. Nine and ten. Have a moment, Judge. Yes. Uh, the judge in his one word responses when asked for permission uh, does sound frustrated or angry. Not sure why. There's our defendant. Nice, good close up right there. Good close up. He's, uh, he's practically a real lawyer now, having taken 15 Law 101 classes thus far in the case. It's reviewing. Uh, I'm not sure either his portfolio or the latest headlines on Yahoo News. I object to him using a mouse on top of his keyboard. Um, you indicated that you conducted some interviews in this case, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and without telling me the substance of those interviews, um, who did you interview? I interviewed Paula Belamonte. Okay, and who else? And Roger... Ragout, I believe is how you pronounce his last okay. name. And did you have an opportunity to interview Rory Hank Wilson? I was in the interview room at times during his interview, yes. Okay, so you participated in I, the process? Yes, sir. Okay, at this time I have no further questions for you. Thank you. Cross-examination. 
Yes. Is there any way I could get the? Uh, is are, are you deputy now or? Uh, no, I am. I am not a deputy anymore. Okay. Okay. Um, well, Miss Malone, could you please uh, come up and help me with the video again? You know, because I wanted to go through the videos that you showed to the jury. So we can go ahead and go over your testimony. So you want to uh, publish that uh, exhibit? What, yes, please. What, what's that exhibit? You know. Yeah, the, the last uh, video. Not also. Stay take. Okay. Is that uh, loaded up, or does that have to be? Uh, I'm asking the state. Your Honor, if I may, um, in order to do my cross examination, I'm also going to need the video, the first Cosme's video. I'm yesterday. sorry, sir. I cannot hear I'm you. I'm sorry. My, my, I'm sorry. This mic doesn't seem to pick me up very well. Um, Your Honor, I was also asking, if I may, uh, there's been a video that was entered into evidence yesterday with Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, Detective Fernandez, that you know, Miss Malone is, is, you know, Miss Malone is very well aware of that video too, and it's also, you know, part of my cross. So yes, sir. Um, you certainly can utilize whatever's been admitted into evidence. Actually, and, oh, can we also um, queue up? Oh, I'm sorry. Can we also queue up the? Really, I mean, it's you or the state perhaps can assist in terms of the uh, publication of the video. Yes, sir. We have no problem. Thank you. Um, I think we might so is, which one would you like to start with? Um, let's go ahead and start with the, uh, the first cos Cosmos video, if we could. Okay. What, that's number seven. That would, well, that would be the one from yesterday that Fernandez, um, Detective Fernandez put in. Apparently, he'd like to uh, use number seven. If Apparently, I correctly, the one that was admitted uh, yesterday. Okay, there it is. So. We could go ahead, and this is the first one, so let's go ahead and queue up to when the truck goes ahead and pulls up. I couldn't remember. Could you, re uh, could you refresh my memory, Danielle? Uh, 19... 1943. 1943. In about 23 seconds. Mr. Tucker, do you want me over there? That would actually help. I, I, I'd appreciate that. This is going to be the question. Do you think that looks like me? Yes, Anna. He's twice now. Our defendant has asked questions on cross examination of a witness that uh, that presented uh, non helpful information for his defense to the jury that was not previously presented. That basically uh, implicated him instead of cleared him, and no information up, had been right? presented by the the, the prosecution to that, of that nature during the we'll original that, right? testimony. Please speak up. I'm sorry, we all agree that the truck's behind the, behind the boats, correct? Yeah, all behind the boats, yes. Okay. Now, um, Ms. Ms. Malone, um, is this, you know, did you say that you could see the driver in this video? Of the truck? No. And never? Have you ever said that you can actually see John Travis Johnson sitting in the truck in this video? No, sir, I cannot see him. In this video. Did you ever say you could? No, I never said I could see him. I said I could deduce that it wasn't. Okay. Um, 
Uh, there's a, something else I'll have to qualify with the state later. Um, okay, now from this video, okay, you say this corroborates evidence of what? Again, just remind me. Evidence. Objection to the question, Judge. Oh, I, I, she testified. Over, uh, she, I'm, uh, 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 I'm sorry. Overrule the objection. So. Okay. Ms. Malone, could you go ahead and just repeat for us what evidentiary value this video had? Based on the confession from co defendants and their testimony stating who was in the trunk and what was happening with the drug. Okay. Thank you for your answer. And um, could you explain to me how that that testimony, you know, that this is a truck, we all agree on that, it's coming up. How does this, again, corroborate his testimony about who is in the truck? Because when he gave us his confession, he told us exactly what they did, what they did in the truck, who was in the truck, how they came up once to scout the place and then came back a second time and that's when the people got out of the truck and approached the Okay. So that confirms, again, that he admits that he went around once, he admits that he went to the scene, but how does that, again, how does this video, this video tell you anything about anybody that's in that truck? Based on everything that I knew and know, that's who's been in the, that's who's in the truck. Uh, again, Please tell me or tell the jury what report or what video you're referring to that tells you who's in that truck. Objection, Judge. Ask and answer. Yeah, ask and ask and answer. I'm going, to, I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay. Um, anyway, again, based on your training experience, you can tell who's in that truck. Okay, that's what you just said. Okay, just clarify. Okay, can we please go up to the next video? Okay, again, this video is what, are you, I'm sure you're very familiar with it, Ms. Malone. Could you please explain to us what this video is again? This is the video from the Florida Keys electric surveillance. Okay, and uh, David Fernandez was the one who was tasked with, with retrieving this video, though, correct? I believe so. Okay, I just refreshed my memory here. Okay, and so you, but you're well aware of what's on the video, correct? Yes, I have okay. watched the video. All right, please, if you would, uh, go ahead and just play it. We'll play it to when we see the person in the video. This episode of Miami Nights. Uh, should, should come with an ASMR, like, uh, audio feed as well. The wind through the palm leaves. Palm fronds, I guess. Palm fronds. Okay, can we please stop there? Okay. Now, based on your investigation, who is that in the video? I believe that is John Travis Johnson, but I'm not certain at this time. Okay. Right, just to, just to refresh for the jury at the time you were how, how what what level were you on the investigation as far as being in charge or doing decide making decisions please um, I, i'm just trying to again i don't know the ranks of the mcsl so i was assisting in the investigation i was an assisting detective okay and uh so in the hierarchy it would have been captain phelps D detective pitcher then yourself correct Oh no, I'm sorry. I forgot about Sergeant Kellenberger. He would have been in, he would have been in between, correct? Yes. Okay, so it would have been pitcher than you, correct? Yes. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I understand. Okay, so again, you know who was in the video based on the investigation, not just from the video and surveilling the video, but again from your position in the in the investigation, correct? Yes. Sir. Okay, good. All right, and who did you guys think was this was this person in this video originally when uh, when you originally were investigating? very beginning, when you were developing suspects? I, I remember well. Okay, do you recall Captain Phelps? 
or again, actually, again, I seem to remember, but we'll figure that out later. Um, but do you remember, man, Captain Phelps saying anybody was in this video? Sustain, sustain, sustain the objection. I'll withdraw. He sustained um, his own. He yes, let's go ahead. Objection. Again, from your understanding, this is John Travis Johnson, correct? Yes. Okay. Can we please okay, continue the video, but we're going to have to go. I don't, unknown, it's an unknown timestamp. Um, we went to it yesterday. I just don't remember the timestamp on the video. But that's John Travis Johnson. And which way is he heading right now? Billboard is not very often. Mm -hmm. So that's two departments. He should be headed towards Tom Thumb. And then from Tom Thumb is the fire station. And <coughs> it's a treehouse. Okay. So, yes. So, I, but it's all not that far, correct? I mean, it's like within a block of each other or something like that, right? Yeah, like what? Okay. Our block maybe do. Okay. All right. So he's heading up towards the treehouse, right? Towards, towards Tom Thumb. Fire department, treehouse, right? Yes, sir. He's at it in that. Okay. Judge, judge if, if, if I make it, we ask Mr. Tucker just to oh, I'm, I'm so, I'm I'm so sorry. And can have a clear and view if, of the uh, video. And, uh, and if I meet Kevin, you may, if you like, a closer look. And, uh, let's see, I hate to say which room, how far we would have to go. Daniel, could you remind me what time stamp the, the I, next I one is? I don't have these time stamps for this video. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Just trying to speak. I would like to say it's twenty three. So. Yeah, it's like 18, actually it's getting ready to turn 23 now, just might as well play it. I think for the rule of completeness, we should watch these videos in their entirety even though nothing happens in them. It reminds us of the Juan David Ortiz trial, where we had an interrogation video of, of nothing, nothing occurring. I think it was like the interrogation room for 45 minutes without anyone in it. Do you guys remember that one? No, maybe while we're waiting, you could... Uh, oh, yeah, I can. Okay, this is what we're looking for. Okay, wait, we let's oh, wait till we get is. in the light before we pause it. Here he is, here he is. Could you please pause it right here? Okay, now, do you know who the two individuals in this video are? I believe the one is still John Travis Okay, and... Uh, the other one, I'm not certain. Okay. Um, has anybody admitted to being the person in this video in your, during your investigation? She actually called for hearsay. This is nope. Whoa, that did not. He said, has uh, anyone admitted to it? I was uh, going based yes, on the investigation whether or not she knows that person is not just what's in the video. Same objection. Well, okay. It's a different question. I'll, I'll allow that question. Good job, Miss um, Malone. I'm sorry. Based on your entire investigation, right? You, you investigated the treehouse case until from when until when? Say it the same way. Um, that day until sometime in 2019. 2019. Okay. So you were. So 2017 is when it happened. So 2019 is when you finished, uh, or you, you, were with, you haven't worked the case since then, correct? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so during the investigation, do you guys ever identify who's in this video? Not to my knowledge. Okay, all right, we'll go ahead and leave it at that. But you do know it's John Travis Johnson, correct? Or at least that you believe that I believe it was him. Okay, gotcha. Okay, can we go ahead and queue up, um, re queue up the video, the last video? I forgot something on there. Sorry. Helps that he's holding the mic now. He's doing a better job. 
Number eight, the, the, the one that was admitted this morning. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And if we could go, I don't know if you remember the sign stamp when the truck comes up and they get out. 1943. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just okay. I just want to clarify a few things just to make sure. <coughs> you guys, I got to get up and open my window. It is so stinking hot in here. I think my computer's overheating. Hang on. So now we have uh, we've success successfully covered the two uh, furnace vents that are that are right, blowing hot air into the room. Okay. We've opened so the window in this video, and we have a fan see a truck, going. Right? That, so cool I would agree it's a truck. I think even the state said it's a truck, right? Okay, you know this is John Travis Johnson's truck because he told you it's his truck, correct? Yes, sir. Right, just making sure. Uh, yes, it, it stopped showing up. Jury's not having any. We made a change to the settings. I'm going to try to change them back. Okay. Just want to make sure. Well, tell me if you uh, are having any difficulty seeing. I can't see. You can't okay. see it. Should okay. we move this up closer, Your Honor? Excuse me. Uh, should we move the screen a little okay. closer, Jury? We're able to. Uh, you know. I'm thought it over and I thought our discussion about help you uh, see better. that's about as good as it's going to get and I do paraphernalia usage you know, remind the jurors uh, just like okay. all other evidence that's introduced during the course of the trial it will be available for your deliberations so merely because it's being published now isn't your only view of it so during your deliberations you'll have the ability to view like I said this evidence as well as all the other evidence that's introduced during the Old trial. Yes, sir. Is there any way you can enhance it, make a larger or more uh, Sir, please I enhance the video. Get a little answer, bit I'm there. sorry, Mr. Tucker. Sorry. Uh, please, that answer is. He shut the audio off. Why did he kill our audio? He literally asked for the video to be enhanced. Uh, like in the movies. Can you press the okay. enhance button so we can and see the details? We go ahead and full screen it for him, so a little better. It's easier to see. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and just play from there. I've got it blown up on my screen, on the big screen. Let's see if I can see what's happening. What's he getting at here?
The flashing stoplight is mesmerizing, but I just don't know what we're looking for. Oh, don't look down. It could happen at any moment. How many hours did they say this video was? Because my eyes are going to dry out from not blinking. There's the truck. Yes, the truck pulls up parks. Now, uh, again, say so there's two subjects that come out of the car, right? Yes, sir. This is, you know, apparent because you know, we can't see it, but, but apparently they came out of the truck. <coughs> okay. okay, could you please pause it right here? Okay, we see two subjects. I would assume, I'm hoping the jury can see this. Um, again, is that what you describe as two subjects? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and could you describe who those two subjects were based on what you see right here? It would be Mr. Wilson and Mr. Tucker. Okay, and how would you know that? Based on everything I know. I but not what's in the video. I'm, not, I'm asking you to testify. Can I let her finish her answer, Sorry. please? Did, Sorry. Anyway. Did you finish your answer? I know that it's them two people based on all the evidence that I knew at the time when I wrote my arrest affidavit. Okay. And, and to be clear, did you write your arrest affidavit after seeing this video or before seeing this video? Just, uh, just um, After curious. seeing this video. Okay. And you know that it's those two subjects based on not what's in the video. I'm asking you to testify exactly what's on the video right now. Not what you learned from your investigation. What can you see in the video? Two subjects walking to the treehouse. Exactly. Okay. Just making sure. Two, two subjects walking towards the treehouse, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and can go ahead and take this video off. Do you remember when Daryl Brooks had the, the next same one line of questioning? Series, if you would. I wanted to restrict the answers to just what you know about this from this video. Or using Windows Media Player? Seriously? Instead of VLC? I think that's no, I'm sorry. That would be the other one. That, yeah, that, I'm looking for the second, the Cosmo, of the Cosmics videos, please. Oh, they still have it up there. Uh, I guess we would have to return this one first. Yes, you have to return uh, your checkout item. Can we, uh, you can can we one. get the, uh, the flash drive that was with the videos that the state just submitted? So we're looking for number eight. Yes, it's just that the series started with this video and then two other videos. with number seven. Yes, I'm finished with all the videos on this one. Okay, so we can exchange number seven for number AJ sent me a uh, a twelve. See this? Is this the one where we see the subject? Twelve days old. Right. The flashlight up the cool. hill. Is that is that this video? No, that's the very tail one. I mean, you do at one point, but not the initial time. Okay. Let's take a look at this. So we'll, let's take a look at this one, and then if we need to, we'll go to the other one. AJ, thank you. It was very funny. It did not share it. We didn't do a lot of live streaming around then, but. Uh, 12 jurors sitting, 11 clerks coughing, 10 lawyers leaping, 9 cars are chasing, 8 mushrooms cooking, 7 coins detected, 6 jars of pickles, 5 hot mics, 4 letter trees, 3 stray cats, 2 snot bubbles, and a gavel being thrown down. Uh, great 12 days of RA. I appreciate that, AJ. That was, that was funny. Okay. It's coming down the hill. Whoa. I see. Brandy raid. Okay. So according to your investigation, who was that subject running down the hill? Uh, Mr. Tattlepoint. Okay. Just making sure. So that's according to the investigation. But again, again, just to clarify, can you see that that's Todd O'Quinn in this video? No. Not okay, that just making sure. Is. Okay, that's but that's based on your investigation. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, if I remember correctly, um, you see another subject come out. If I remember correctly, if you would refresh my memory, is this? Yes. Okay. Again, can we pause for a second? 
Okay, who's this? Who do you suspect? We're going to catch you based all on your investigation. That that is. I believe that it is Roosevelt Washington. Okay, you believe that's well, Roosevelt Washington. Okay, but from the video again, you can't see that that's Roosevelt Washington, right? Correct. Okay, just want to say, okay. clarify those two things. Okay. Well, um, and welcome to all the 13th jurors who are joining us. You remember. We have a pro se defendant in a murder trial, commonly referred to as the treehouse murder. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll let it go to that point. This is a quiet witness I away from the microphone. The defendant yes. is the one may, please. on the yes. left of the screen. We're watching security camera footage from the boat chop shop. <laughs> Here, this is located in Key West, Florida. On, um, in a, I, I would say a seedy part of town. Uh, we're watching this footage. There was a uh, a, a robbery. And to, be, to clarify, um, Miss Malone, you're reading from the official affidavit that you wrote, correct? Yes. Sir. Okay. Robbery and assault. A neighbor tried to intervene, and that resulted oh, in the murder. There's a person that just ran up the hill. Could we please back it up a little bit? Hey, who is that guy? Wonderful. Thanks for joining us on lunch. It looks like Brandy's on lunch right now. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, just a quick, uh, a quick word. Brandy, if I remember correctly, she's very, very close to hitting the 15,000 okay, threshold. Right there the top. Oh, there, right there. See if you haven't subscribed to Brandy, I highly recommend you. Can you pause that, please? Um, again, according to your investigation, who do you believe that that is? That, that one, I'm not sure who that was. So it's an unknown party. And they could, you know, Again, even though we've accepted that you know these people are running from the treehouse, you can't actually see that, correct? What the treehouse? Yeah, the treehouse proper, the the property. No, you can see kind of where the fence is here. Right, but you can't see the gate where people go in and out or anything like no. that. Okay, just checking. And so you don't know who this subject is, though. But we're going to assume that they came from the treehouse too, correct? Probably yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, again. I think she believes I think there is a, another one on here, if I remember there's correctly. One, one more okay. Go ahead. Ten seconds. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. While they are talking, I uh, just want to let you know we are we are keeping the thumbnail. Right, right there, if you would. Okay, if you back it up just a little bit. Our thumbnail for this video. So we want to make sure for we this trial. Is the best view, we're sort of documenting we all the events on it, so. We'll show you that in just one minute. It's uh, it's a work in progress. The counter in the right bottom there, right. Pause. Oh, back up. Okay, so we can kind of see the top of the head here, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and we both, everybody, we all, we both agree that that's a subject walking away from the treehouse location, right? Yes, sir. Where, you know, not necessarily from the treehouse, but from that location. Okay, um, again, so this subject, according to your investigation, again, who is this subject? That subject is. Rory Wilson, okay, um, and again, but you can't see that that's Rory Wilson, right? Is there anything in this video where you can actually see that's Rory Wilson in this video? His body shape, feral chested. Okay, it's a big man, but there's a lot of big men out there. Can you see that that's Rory Wilson? Without doing all everything that I know? I, again, not, not based on your investigation, just the video. Just, well, just from the video, not from your investigation. I'm saying looking at this video right now, you can tell me, based on this picture, that that's Rory Wilson. No. No, she can't. That's, that's all we need. No, just no, okay? Just and no. Then, but based on your investigation, you're, you're thinking that might be Rory Wilson. I know it's Rory Wilson. Okay. Gotcha. I know for sure. Just checking. Thank you, Nurse for God, for gifting the, the membership. Tina, also, Cosmos thanks for the videos. super chat. Yeah, that would be number the numbers the second one. While they're pulling up that okay. video, we're gonna keep the audio going. Mm -hmm. Let me just show you. Here's our thumbnail that we're working on for this video. This is the treehouse okay. murder trial. Uh, we've got a, a actual treehouse trailer, bicycle, key lime pie, a flashlight, Thank beer cans, a hundred dollar bill, and tire tracks. All of these featured prominently in this trial. Uh, more to come. More to come. We'll add to that as needed for our thumbnail. Uh, this uh, this particular defendant, Mr. Tucker, Franklin Tucker, is doing a, a, a reasonable job, a reasonable job uh, representing himself. 
I, I imagine our score for him will drop over time, but uh, only 18 times so far in this trial, which we're now into the second day of, has he had to be instructed on how to do his job in defending himself. So, uh, so better than most, I would say, at this point. I believe his name is Franklin Tucker. We need to add a motorboat. We need a tarp in the picture. There's a few items we have not added yet. Obviously, the crack pipe. Uh, we're still working on that one. Not sure how to do that with YouTube's terms of service, but uh, we'll, we'll work on that and see if we can get that in there. Isn't that Franklin? Franklin Tyrone Tucker? Is that it? Blue Cans beer, yes, officially Bud Light. It was the, the drink of choice. Bud Light and a little bit of uh, sometimes Captain Morgan and crack. Crack, Bud Light, and, and Captain Morgan was consumed in the treehouse in copious amounts based on previous witness testimony. Use a test tube. Ooh. I wanted something a little little fancy maybe like like colored glass like when they they use all the different beads they melt the tube and oh this is back to the first video I, I want it to be like the one i found okay. yeah i was like sitting, i'm looking at it i'm like something should happen by now okay so we're back to the first video again Ooh, but go ahead it. it's i keep on referring to it as the second video only because I, as i've looked at it it was always the second video but if you could bring up the ones that they actually put up today and we'll go ahead and take one from there this is the one that was introduced yesterday it's the same Oh, it's the same video, the which same is video. different on this one. Okay. It's All the right. same and video. And so we have that one. We saw the one where, again, you believe it's Rory Wilson. Um, is there anybody else that's seen coming from that direction on those videos? In that, in that manner? Or no. just in any manner. Now, again, different subjects coming from, to and from the treehouse. Or at least the treehouse location, you know, the same direction. There's the gentleman that we introduced, Mr. Washington. There's the gentleman with the flashlight. Okay. And then... Okay. Let's, let's get down to the point. This, was, this will be better to, to, for everybody, I think, at this point. I'm sure we're all sick of watching these videos. Yes. Okay. In those videos... Argument will, will sustain the objections, disregard the commentary. Okay. Um, sorry, Your Honor. Apologize to the prosecution. Um, okay, we looked at these videos. Um, in these videos... Just taking these videos as a video that you're watching right now to clarify, you cannot identify a single person in those videos, can you? Erasing the knowledge. That Erasing your knowledge. Erase the, the investigation. Just be the jury. What can you see in these videos? Subjects going to and leaving the treehouse? Okay. Area? The area, the location. I'll, right, I'm just clarifying, correct? Talking about the location, okay? But you can't identify a single person <laughs> in those videos. Correct? Absent all knowledge of everything. Absent your knowledge. Yes, you can't see faces in the videos. Okay, good. That's all I wanted to clarify. Okay, if you would, um, we can go ahead and we're, we'll, be, we'll be done with the videos for right now. I am going to have to cl um, clarify something with the state or qualify something with the state later. Um, if you would, thank you. He's bringing his mic over to uh, talk to. Actually, I don't need a phone. That's important. Um, yeah. No mic. You don't need a mic to I'm confer. Asking questions about it. All right, Jennifer. Jennifer, did he say the S word? <laughs> We've heard a couple words in this trial. There might be some more. Thanks for four months of support, Jennifer. To put up the document to impeach the testimony and something else. Hear him say impeach right. testimony. Danielle, I'm um, Miss Malone. I'm sorry. I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, Miss Malone, now, we just, you just told me that you agree. There's nothing, you can't identify a single person in that video, right? I agree, Matt. Judge yeah, uh, okay. I'm going to sustain it. That's okay. established. Okay, good. I'm just making sure we have that established. Okay, and... But when you wrote your, your affidavit, you did put that at timestamp this, timestamp that, you could see exact people, correct? Yes, sir. 
Okay. And those two, you know, the, the people, I'm sorry, the people that you attributed it to in your affidavit, who would those be? The, the subjects that I named as getting yes. out of the truck? Okay. Yes. That would be Rory Wilson and Franklin Tucker. Okay. Rory Wilson and Franklin Tyrone Tucker, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Um, and you said that your investigation led you to write that in the affidavit, but to put those time stamps in there saying that you could see those people in that video, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what was your investigation prior to obtaining these videos? I believe I would have to look at an exact timeline, but I believe that was day five. It would be day five in the investigation. Yes, sir. Right? Okay, day five in the investigation, what, what evidence did you have saying that I took part in this crime? The confession of John Travis Johnson, the okay. getaway driver. Okay, and what tells you he's the getaway driver? He told us. Okay, so you're basing it solely on what he told you? No. Okay, what, what other evidence did you have to suggest that he's the getaway driver? Oh, that he's the getaway driver? That he told us. Okay, that he told you. That's yes, it. Yes, sir. Simply as that. Okay, and, you know, was he the one who actually said it first, or did one of the other investigators say it before him? I don't recall. Okay, you don't recall. Just making sure. Now, were you were you actually present when John Travis Johnson was, you know, when, when he was actually interviewed? I was present for some of it, not all of it. Okay. Um, okay. You, uh, you, uh, if I remember correctly, you were present and reviewing videos. If if my memory serves right, on when John Travis Johnson originally. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. It's a horribly phrased question. I, I, I take it back. Um, okay. You were there for part of the interviews with him, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember reviewing videos with him? Yes, sir. Okay. If those, if, again, just to verify, were those the same videos that we were just looking at for the most part? Yes, sir. Because I can't remember any other ones, so. Okay. Um, now, when you're reviewing these videos with John Travis Johnson, does he at one point point to the video in the Keys, Fuller Keys Electric video, right? Does he at one point point to the subject in that video and say it's him? I, I don't recall. You don't recall? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I'll have to have you queue up another video. Um, okay. So you don't recall at this point, but you did say that, you know, you just, because of the investigation, you knew that was John Travis Johnson in that video, not because you could see him in the video. Objection asked and answered. Sustain the okay. objection. Okay. The point's been made multiple times. Okay. Okay. Good. Just like I'm um, okay. In your arrest affidavit, did you write that you could see me at certain timestamps doing different things in the video? Yes, sir. Okay. Was it you know, again? What in your investigation led you to be able to say that? It was the totality in the of all the evidence, witness statements, confessions. Okay. That we had well, obtained. May, may, may I? Um, again, specifically. So I'm I'm, I'm, okay. I'd just like to get more specific. Mr. Alvarez is witness here, so I, I think we're going to have one or the other. If okay, you, can we come we, sidebar? We can come sidebar. Is that seven bows? Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, the defendant has a. Uh, <laughs> look at this. The bailiff steps up because he knows this might end in fisticuffs. Uh, but. Uh, the defendant has a hard time following the court procedure with letting each side explain. He's really quick to get in the argument. And he wants to be like, but judge, they're the ones who started it. You know, uh, he's not very good at, uh, at letting this, let this proceed. And I realize most judges will do this. Most judges recognize under the law, you have the right to defend yourself in court. Okay. It, it can be awkward. It can be clunky. It can be extremely time consuming, but there's a right to do that. Um, assuming you, you, you know, are capable of, of, you know, rational thought and, you know, there, there's most people have, will be able to convince a judge they could defend themselves in court or they're willing to, to, to do that at, at their, at their own risk. The judges usually in this case, we saw this with judge Doro and we're seeing it here uh, now in, in the, uh, the keys, the Florida keys, the judges will be more lenient with a pro se defendant because they aren't taught, they aren't educated, they don't know the, the proper wording or terminology and necessarily the process. And so, but they have to walk a gentle little line, right? They've got to be like, we can't help him too much. We can't like do his case for him. 
but they'll they'll try to sort of like guide a little bit or nudge and say, okay, is, is this what you're getting at? Is that I you know it sounds like from the way you're wording this that you're you're asking to present some evidence and you need to say what the evidence is and it has been admitted, um, and so ooh, he's allowing that. And the prosecution okay. is uh, jumping no, all over. I'm sorry, Miss Malone. Um, back to the events oh, report and the basis. affidavit that you wrote, correct? Okay, let's get back to that for a second. Um, did you ever write in that report that, that, that witnesses had made statements with my name in them? Uh, yeah, I do believe so. Okay. Which witnesses used my name and, and when they were telling you the story of whatever they saw you know whatever they witnessed which witnesses actually used my name objection here sir uh, i'm going to overrule the objection so you can answer the question man okay um, she says roger in rory wilson's initial interview with us he put you in the warehouse planning the robbery by name uh, John Travis Johnson also said your name. So both suspects, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, just checking. Um, okay, so anybody else beyond the suspects? Not that I recall. Okay, not that you recall. Okay, good. Um, okay, so you were familiar with that. Okay, let's get let's move on a little forward. Uh, that same truck that we, uh, I can't say it's the same truck. Uh, let's let me back up. The truck. There's a truck that you search later on in the investigation, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And when you went to search this truck, what truck was, you know, what truck, why were you searching this truck? It was John Travis Johnson's truck. Okay, it was John Travis Johnson's truck, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and, you know, okay, what, how, do you remember, I remember, if I remember correctly, you were the one who actually signed for the search warrant on that truck, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so you probably know better than I would. Um, when, uh, when, uh, how long after John Travis Johnson was arrested was it before you went and searched this vehicle? I would have to look at the report for exact, exact dates. In approximate. But he was arrested around November 22nd-ish, and I believe we did the search warrant around December 5th or 6th. Okay, so how many days is that? Could you add those up for me? Uh, Approximately, uh, I would say approximately 15, 20 days, something like that? Yeah, probably two weeks. Okay, just checking. Okay, so where was the truck in just these checking. 15, 20 days before you searched it? At one point, it was at an address in Big Pine. Okay. And then it was moved to uh, Mr. Johnson's boss's house. Okay, and moved by who? And this is after Travis was arrested, right? Correct. Okay, just checking. Okay, but moved by who? Uh, it was towed by Mr. Johnson's boss. Okay, over to one of his lots, correct? Yeah, to, I, I think his okay, good. house or lot. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, and, okay, so after it got towed over to this lot, did the police, you know, did they decide to impound it? Or, I'm sorry, the sheriff's department, did they decide to impound the vehicle or take the vehicle or, or secure it somehow? No, we just conducted a search warrant of the vehicle and okay. searched the vehicle. And this is after it had been sitting there for 10, 10 15, 20 days, whatever? Right? Yes, sir. Okay, just check. Okay, and when you went to do the search of the vehicle, was there anybody else with you? Uh, there was quite a few people. Okay, could you recall any of them off the top of your head? Uh, Detective Underwood was there. Okay. Uh, Deputy Hoverson was there. I believe retired Sergeant Hernandez was there. Okay. Retired Sergeant. And Captain Phelps. And Captain Phelps. Okay. And, uh, okay, so, you know, did you do a video of this, you know, when you guys searched the vehicle? Did you do a video of that at all? Or yes, remember? Sir. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and find that one, too. I'm going to stop you right there, Mr. Tucker. I, I think it's time to take a morning break. That would be. So, members of the jury, um, we're going to take a 15-minute break. Again, the same like procedures that we've used in Thank terms you. of those who choose to stay in the jury room, those who choose to uh, go beyond uh, the rules that apply in terms of uh, communication and the like. Uh, 11 o'clock, we'll ask you to be back and go from there.
as they are, are getting set to uh, to take their break. Let's see if they need to do anything before we actually split. This defendant is is so sure of himself, and he's honestly he's doing better than most that we've seen. We've seen a lot that do a lot worse than this. He's done a lot of checking, just checking. And oh my goodness, his his uh, affirmations and agree, agreeing with testimony is like, uh, I don't remember seeing you there at the crime scene that night. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I remember. During the break? Or just no, I'm not to speak to All right, so you're going to be back on the witness stand, obviously, but you can take a break. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right, we'll be back at 11. Judge, one quick thing to address in the court. Uh, we're, getting, we're getting messages from people that Mr. Alvarez and I's conversations here at the table is being picked up by the cameras here and people could hear it out there in the viewing land. Um, viewing land. That's not going to work for us. No. So I don't know what can be done, but maybe they either have to move their mics or move something, but people yeah. can hear our conversation. Yeah. Again, I have no technical expertise, but uh, that that's absolutely um, unacceptable. Um, you know, we Accommodated, and I know that. Okay, so now they they killed the audio altogether. So apparently, we're not going to we're no longer going to get to hear the uh, council conferring with each other, which you shouldn't before. But it was because the, the defendant walked over carrying a cordless mic while they were discussing things. Yes, we heard that. And then the other time, when you turned around to talk to uh, somebody, and you literally were three inches in front of the camera, the camera auto focused on you, and we—I mean, a blind man could have could have sight read your lips, um, doing a little lip reading. Uh, it was almost—it uh, was almost braille. It was so close. Uh, so yes, we have heard and seen a little bit of the discussion that happened on that table. Well, they have a quick break. Well, they have a quick break, which we're going to skip. It's not going to be a full fifteen minutes. Um, we're going to we're going to go back to uh, to our our thumbnail because we have to update a few things uh, first. Let's get rid of the uh, law one hundred and one overlay. Oops, that's the wrong one. We want this one right there. Okay, so here we are in the overlay. I've added some crack uh, to the uh, to the scene. Or I think we want to put the crack uh, down here on the ground. I think that's where crack goes. Is right there. Is that is that sufficient crack, uh, so everyone knows what we're talking about? Or is, does the crack belong maybe up on the treehouse? Um, uh, is that is that where the crack would be? I mean, not, having having not, uh, I'm not a connoisseur of crack. Oh, it's a little bit off. Let's see. Let's put it right over, like here. Is is that a good location for crack? There we go. Got a, a little crack showing. I think I think if we have a crack and also we have pipe on the uh, on the scene, that might be too much. Too much. We need more crack. Okay. the The case is unfolding. We're we're building it as we can in Canva. Um, so I, I figure a little bit of crack it needs to be there. We've got the Bud Light, Captain Morgan. Not sure if, if Captain Morgan needs to also be present, uh, but uh, this is this is what we have so far. So we're gonna we're gonna keep that ready. Let me let me skip ahead through our our little delay because we we can do that through the miracles of technology and time travel. Uh, here we go. Three, two, one, landing about right now ish. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna jump back to court. Well, let's see. Cut. There we go. And, and there's law counters back at 101. So break time's over. We're back uh, in just a moment as the judge is returning to the bench. The flashlight looks like beer. It should be purple. I, I, the pl flashlight doesn't need some work, Becca. I, I'm with you on that one. I'll take that under advisement. Actual crack, actual pipe. Uh, that's that's why we went. We're, we're trying to stay monetized. The jurors are in the jury room, so any resolution of this? Uh, yeah, just, we're, we're okay with it now. I think, I think we're all right. One other issue for the court, just for the court to consider, and Mr. Tucker showed us the courtesy of letting us know that he thinks he's got a lot of uh, cross-examination that will take the rest of the day and that we wouldn't get to any other witnesses. We inquired as to what the nature of that cross was going to be, and he indicated 
his intent to go into depth on the IA investigations in the case and the findings of, of whatever findings those are, it's our okay. objection is going to be that it's not relevant to the facts in this in this particular trial or to the evidence that's being presented, and that it's IA going to contain a lot affairs. of hearsay. I mean, you, the, the, the results of those reports and, and any reading of those reports, that's hearsay. So yeah. um, the court wants to address it now or wait until it happens, but... If I, if I may, Your Honor. Oh, you may. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, he says reports, the only IA report I plan on using for this cross-examination is an IA report from this case where it was sustained that she mishandled 35 pieces of evidence in this case. And again, these are including videos. So I would, you know, I would consider that highly relevant. I mean, I guess we'll get to it, but I, I don't consider it relevant. I, I, if there's some showing of a tainted piece of evidence or a chain of, com of uh, custody well, that's been compromised. We don't want to show any this, taints. Uh, it's not, the trial is not about. Your Honor. Whether, yes, sir, I am speaking. I'm, the trial I'm, is I'm not about putting the investigation on trial. It is specifically the facts and circumstances. So as I said, I'll certainly make, let you make your yeah. proffer. I'll, when we get to the point where it's, um, you know, becomes a subject, we'll deal with it, but my strong inclination is that that is not relevant. Your, your Honor, if I may. Yes, sir. Okay. The, the, again, I, I don't understand, maybe it is the layman in me, and maybe you can educate me on this, um, how that the, look, it's the credibility of the investigation that is what is the evidence they're using against me in this trial. How is that not credible if the investigation was not conducted, you know, on on a, any kind of good standard. It's not the credibility of the investigation, it's the credibility of the evidence. That's that's what's at issue. But, like but, I said, if you can show that there's been a uh, bit of evidence that's been tainted, if there's been a witness mm -hmm. that's been compromised, but to, to say, oh, this was just an investigation that violated all these standards, no, sir, that's not relevant. Well, I, I would imagine that, again, 208 pieces of evidence were mishandled. That was what was sustained in this investigation, including DNA, including video, including physical evidence. And yes, right these are phys this is evidence that the prosecution is actually putting into evidence in this trial. Okay. Well, I look forward to your showing or objection that some evidence is, in fact, that's being admitted or offered is um, not authentic. It's uh, been compromised. Uh, that, that's fine, but in terms of how the uh, internal affairs may have uh, assessed the investigation, that in and of itself is is not relevant as a, a general proposition. Uh, again, it's not the investigation that's on trial; it's the evidence emanating from that investigation. And so, for specific pieces, I know I'm repeating myself, but for specific pieces of evidence that uh, simply uh, doesn't withstand uh, the foundational requirements, um, I'll be happy to make an appropriate ruling. So that, okay. that's about as much as I can show right Okay, now. I'm just trying, I'm trying to you know, navigate this line, Your Honor. Well, I, I know you are, and I'm not saying that you're doing anything wrong. And just like any other case, uh, there's uh, disputes, disagreements, and the judge is asked to make a ruling, and I make my best ruling, and like I said, if we get to a specific part, and there's an objection, and we need to go uh, outside the jury, we'll do that. If you need to make a proffer, that is a showing of what you uh, would like to have presented absent an adverse ruling, you can do that to preserve the record, but... Um, that's how it works. So, okay. in any event, uh, with that said, bring in the jury, please. Bring the jury. Okay, a little bit of a uh, little bit of lessons right there. A little schooling happened. Uh, nurse for God, they have not yet found Mr. Frog. They've not found him. Uh, Buttercup, thank you, thank you for the donation, Princess Buttercup. Good to have you back. Uh, they have not yet found Mr. Frog. He has a court date coming up, uh, which I am anticipating he's going to miss. He has, he has missed court dates in the past just to see who serves him. 
or who tra- comes to arrest him afterwards. So I think that's going to be the happy to get. <laughs> I don't think they're looking very hard. Thurston County is just like, oh, please, can we just can he just move somewhere else and maybe somewhere else's problem? We'll just write this off as a loss. I don't think they want to deal with it. He's it's it's sort of a thorn in their side for the legal system, uh, partially because he knows enough to make himself very, very frustrating for the legal system, meaning the courts. Uh, Holly Mack, he's alleged to have unalived someone. Uh, he's uh, he's charged with murder. He's representing himself. This he's actually out on bail. He uh, made friends with uh, one of the co-founders of CrossFit, and she bailed him out. I think on like two million Back or something. On the record, the, uh, and here he is. Remains on the witness stand under oath, subject to continued cross examination. Okay, Ms. Malone. Um, let's see, I'm not exactly sure where we left off, but let's go ahead and we'll get back to the investigation. I didn't take any right. notes. Yes, sir. Okay, and at this point, you had the Cosme videos. Um, at that point in the investigation, how far in were you again, did you say? When we got the videos, I, I believe we were at day five. Day five. Okay, so you got these videos the same day that Travis Johnson was arrested, correct? I believe so, yes. All right. And now, prior to that point in the investigation, you're at day five. What other evidence did you have to say that I was in that video? You said it was based on your investigation, so. Again, John Travis Johnson's confession. So John Travis Johnson's word that it's me in that video. Yes, sir. Okay. And any other evidence that said I had anything to do with this prior to that video? Mr. Rory Wilson again stating that you were part of the planning okay. of the robbery of Paula Belmonte. We'll take a look at that later. Um, so at this point, you're taking Travis Johnson's story and Rory Wilson's story. Correct. That's your evidence at this point. In, co- in combination with Todd O'Quinn's statement of the way he went up to the CVS okay, yelling for the police, yes. And oh, Todd O'Quinn's statement, and Todd O'Quinn was who? One of the people that was in the, the house with Matthew Bonnet, in the trailer with Matthew Bonnet. He was in the house, in the trailer with Matthew Bonnet. Uh, he's he, the gentleman we saw running up the hill. Did- yeah, with the flashlight, yes. Yes, okay, so he's that gentleman. That's the, that's the man we're talking about. Yes, sir. Okay, did that gentleman also say he's 100% sure it wasn't me over and over again? I don't know. He didn't say that to me. All right, it was said, okay, and we'll have to man, pull up that video. Um, okay, so you're saying that Todd O'Quinn never said that you know of that it wasn't me? Not to me, no, sir. Okay, go ahead. And now, now you did do the, the lineup with Todd O'Quinn, correct? Yes, sir. I did one of the lineups. Okay. And did Todd O'Quinn, was I included in that lineup or? No, sir. Okay. And who was included in that lineup? John Travis Johnson. Okay. Did Todd O'Quinn ever point to John Travis Johnson's picture in that lineup? Yes, he did. Okay. And what did he point to him as, as in that lineup? As being the person objection, that. Yeah, I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay. Okay, um, what question did they ask when they were doing the lineup? What, when they asked him to point to a picture and say, and identify anybody, what, what were they asking him? What were you, you know, what were you guys asking him? Objection hearsay. Okay, you, the objection. okay fine. Um, Ms. Malone, he points to John Travis Johnson, correct? Objection. I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay. Okay. Um, Again, we won't be redundant here. Um, this is Ms. Malone. Okay, we've already we've already established that yes, you know. Again, you, John Jackson Johnson's the picture that he pointed to, right? Objection. I'll overrule that objection. I'm just, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I'm going to sustain the objection. So I was just looking for clarification. Okay. Anyway, that's the an answer. Okay. Let's move on then. Um, okay. So, John Travis Johnson, Rory Wilson, that's your, that's your evidence suggesting I have anything to do with this at this point. Objection, okay. asked and answered numerous times. We'll proceed. Okay. Um, now, you said that based on your investigation, that's how you're identifying me in that video, correct? Yes, sir. 
He said okay. it's like 600 and your investigation was John Travis Johnson. Okay, anything else besides John Travis Johnson and Roy Wilson? Okay, there. I don't believe she answered that question yet. Actually, she did. Okay. Well, okay, so then we can move on. All right. So that's the extent of the investigation at that point that you know of. Okay, anything else from the investigation prior to that as far as, you know, your handling of evidence, your handling of videos? Uh, what was your duties in the investigation in those first five days? Well, mul multiple we did uh, the first day okay. that that night that might be the easiest, i was directed to go interview the the living victim paula lamonte in the hospital i stayed with her the entire time she was in the hospital um and then i went with sergeant kellenberger and we went and found roger uh ragu at his place of business, the QS Golf Course. Uh, this would be the awesome. first night, right? This testimony. is the first night. Go back anything, else the first, or anything else the first night? Not, not particularly. I was. Well, can, I, well, can we put a pause right there for just yep. a second? I'm so sorry. Um, okay, so the first night you went to interview Paula Bellamonte at the hospital. Yes, sir. Okay. And during that interview with Paula Belmonte, did she tell you anybody who she thought, any suspects, any any, any identifiers? Detection here, signal. Sustain. Okay. Let's put this down. Okay. There, the audio guy is reactionary, so he's turning the sound hey, down every time me. they start whispering, but it's too late. I'm objecting. I'm going to sustain the okay. objection. Okay, I was asking because she's the one who completed the interview. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right, so again, you did that, then you went and you did another interview. What did you do after that? We canvassed the area, that street, Laurel Avenue. Okay. Uh, I believe when I went home that night was about 4 or 5 a.m. the next morning. Okay, and then you came back the next morning and... Uh, next morning, I don't remember what time, but it wasn't. It wasn't late. It was before noon, I, I believe. We came back to the scene, um, and I believe it was that day, the next day that Kiwa CSI finished up with the actual scene. So it was the second day. Yes, the second day. Second day. And uh, you came at around noon, you said. I. <laughs> I don't remember the exact time. Um, now, it was uh, when you did come back on that second day, uh, you were were you at the treehouse or were you canvassing someplace else? What were you doing again? I was at the treehouse. I walked almost all of Stock Island. Oh yeah, I can believe that. Okay. That that day, looking for. Okay, so you know, you guys were just looking for evidence around yeah. the neighborhood. That kind yes, of sir. Stuff. Okay, gotcha. All right, you, were you there for Detective Pitcher's interview with Todd O'Quinn? That the at, at initial the house, night? You know, at the treehouse location. The, that initial, the, the first night I was there for, oh, okay. I believe, a, a very small portion of it. Of Todd O'Quinn's interview? Yeah, the, okay. initial, the initial one that night, yes. Oh, thank you. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, Okay, the second, uh, I was talking about the second interview during the daytime he did at the treehouse, and I would assume you would, you would have been there just because, you know, it's about the same time. I don't believe, I don't recall being there for that interview. I just didn't know. I put like eight miles on my shoes that second day while I was stuck on them. Oh, I'm sorry. So you weren't, so you weren't there. Um, no, sir. Okay. Now, were you there when they brought pa Miss Paula Bellamont, pa Bellamonte? to the to the treehouse that day the second day second day no i brought her to the treehouse that that night when okay. she got released from the hospital okay. and, but not the second day and, and why'd you bring her back to the treehouse that night uh they wanted to get i believe fingernail scrapings fingernail scrapings. <coughs> okay and but you didn't bring her back the second day no okay and you weren't present when they did no okay good all right, and um, were you there when Miss Anathea Clay was there? 
Maybe. On the second day? No, not on the second day. Maybe the, the, that initial night. Oh, the first night. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the first night you were there when they brought Anathea Clay to the crime scene. I don't, I don't know. If the, I, I wasn't there when they brought her to the crime scene, but she may have been around okay. that night. Okay, and according to your offense report, your affidavit, who is Miss Anathea Clay? Anathea Clay was... I guess a roommate at some point with Paula and Matthew Bonnet. Mm -hmm. I'm not certain where <clears throat> she stayed on the property, but she stayed there at some point and had just left like very recently Okay, and, for uh, that incident. Okay, but in the affidavit you wrote, was she ever named as a suspect? Yes, Paula stated that she believed Anathea Clay had something to do with setting up the robbery. Was Paula the only one? That's Just asking what she wrote in her report. I'll overrule the objection. That told me that, that she's the only one I remember. Okay, I'm just, I'm referring back to your affidavit again. Like, remember we were talking about your affidavit earlier? Mm -hmm. I'm referring back to your affidavit. In your affidavit, in your statement, you know, about the investigation, did you say that you know somebody Jackson else besides besides that actually named her as a suspect? I, I don't recall. Okay, um, we'll have to take a look at the affidavit again. Um, okay, so you've got Anthea Clay. You know you know you saw her the first night, correct? I think I may have saw it, okay. seen her. Okay, good. Um, and on that first night, okay, you said Paula named her as a suspect, correct? Yes. Okay, and they brought her to the crime scene that night. You were there for that? No, I believe I was with Paula still. I thought you said, uh, I'm, just, I'm a little off. Okay, maybe it's just me. Um, but okay, so they brought her back down there. You know, again, did you see her leave when she left the, left the crime scene? No. Okay, do you know where she came from when she, when, before she got to the crime scene? No, sir. Okay, and, but they, did, but they didn't arrest Anathea Clay. No, sir. Okay, just check. All right, so they didn't, they didn't arrest her. Um, did they ever bring her back in for an interview that you know of? I wasn't a part of it, but I, yes, I do believe they interviewed her at some point. Okay, they interviewed her at some point. Do you remember approximately what? I mean, uh, probably a year or so after. Okay. A year or so? A year or so afterwards? Yes, after sir. After what? Oh, after the crime happened? After the crime happened, okay. yeah, 2019-ish. Okay, so after the crime happened. And, you know, and she, you can't recall if she was named a suspect in your affidavit. Objection's been asked and answered. I'll overrule the objection. I wrote in my affidavit that Paula stated that Anathea Clay had set up the robbery. Okay. Were there any CIIs that they talked to in the affidavit? Yes. Confidential informants? Yes. Okay, and did this confidential informant say that Anathea Clay was a suspect? Objection, you're saying. If it's in the affidavit, I'll overrule it, if that's what you're asking about. That's exactly what I'm asking. I believe I wrote that in my affidavit. I'd have to So that would be a second person. To refresh. I'm sorry. I I'd have know. to look at it to refresh. It's... Okay, so, and we, we may very well do that. That might be a good idea. Yes, um, yes you need to do that. If that's your refresh point. the witnesses. Would that be fine, Your Honor? Um, Incoming lesson. Haven't quite asked the proper question, but in any event, we're looking at the report. Refresh your recollection, Detective? Yes, sir. You have your report there? Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you, thank you. The judge Honor. walks her through the, the the proper question was, which is, would looking at your report refresh your recollection? She says yes. Then, uh, do you have your report? And, and now she's able to review it. Now, now she can refresh her recollection and then testify solidly as yes, I put this in my affidavit. Let us know when you've reviewed it and your recollection has been refreshed. Then um, close it up and. Is your recollection? Yes, sir. Ma'am. Ma'am, uh, now we've refreshed your recollection. Do you remember a CI that says the same thing? Yes, the okay. CI 
stated that uh, Paula had set up Anathea Clay and didn't return it. And it sounded like it was a drug deal that didn't, money didn't get exchanged. So in return, Anathea set up the robbery as payback. Okay, so that's what's in the, the affidavit, is that, that Anathea Clay was setting this up as payback for something that Paul had done to her, and, you know, allegedly. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, and that's in the rest of the affidavit. So that's naming, that's definitely naming her as a suspect, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, again, you, you tell me, you just told me a second ago that they interviewed Anathea Clay, but it wasn't until way after, correct? Yes, sir, I believe so. A year and a half, two years, something like that? Is that I, 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 I'm not sure if I heard correctly. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I believe it was in sometime in 2019. So 2019, from a crime that happened in 2017? Yes, sir. Okay. And did anybody you know, that you know of, I mean, did they try to apprehend Ms. Clay? I mean, was there a warrant out for her arrest? I mean, she's a suspect. No. Okay, so to your knowledge, nobody ever put out a warrant for her? No. Okay, and uh, did they ever do any other work trying to find Miss Clay? I mean, did they, you know, have, what attempts were made to find this murder suspect? We never got to the point to classify her as a murder suspect, and I am unfamiliar with what attempts were made. That wasn't in my scope of the investigation to locate okay. her. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm, if I remember right, you're scoping the investigation. You're, you're right below the lead detective, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And it wouldn't be in the scope of your investigation to know where a murder suspect is. Again, Anathea Clay never became a murder suspect during the course of our investigation. Well, can you just tell me you had a witness that, that literally stated that, you know, she set this crime up as objection, payback? Objection, answer. Okay. I'm going to overrule the objection. Yes, we had two people that told us that Miss Clay had potentially set up this robbery to occur as The uh, bailiff's pouring water. Oops, I'm sorry. Bailiff Butler. Did you ever uh, make any attempts to interview her, you know, bring her in for interview or to talk to her? I did not. That was not part of my job in this investigation. Okay. Do you know of anybody, in, you know, besides yourself, who may have done this? I I don't know. Okay. So, to your knowledge, they don't interview her, pick her up, or interview her until 2019. I know that's when she got interviewed. Okay. And did they arrest her after the interview? No, sir. Okay. And uh, did the was the evidence still the same, or did it change, or is there a reason why she wasn't arrested? Because she never rose to the level of a murder suspect in this investigation. With two witnesses saying that she was? Objection argumentative. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, now, you know, did you know, I, I want to know a little bit more about the sanity of Clay thing, just a little bit. Um, okay, it's Treehouse, you know, was Miss, uh, I, I think I asked you if you were there, if Miss Clay, you know, when she was brought back to the Treehouse on the second day. Um, you said no, correct? Correct. Okay, good. Um, okay, so you weren't there for this, but did they find any evidence that you know of from Miss Clay at the treehouse on the second day that you know of? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, were you ever made aware of writings on a wall that were on the, on the treehouse wall? Yeah, in like 2019, I believe. You were made aware of those in 2019? Yes. Okay, so you didn't know anything about those until then? Correct. Okay, good. And what, what were these writings on the wall purported to be? Honestly, I don't. I don't, don't remember know. what they were. No, okay. sir. And do you remember what what evidentiary value they had? No, sir. Okay. Um, so you, but, and you, uh, I don't know. You said you saw pictures. Is that correct? I may have seen a picture, but not, not that I recall. It was like spray paint words on a wall. Okay, but you don't know who wrote them, and you don't no, know. No, sir. Okay, were you there for when they interviewed Miss Anathea Clay? I was not. So um, that would have been who who interviewed her? Just out of my refresh my memory. I believe that was Captain Phelps, Detective Corey, and maybe Detective Moeller. Okay. 
All right, so you know that would be Detective Muller, Detective Corey, and Captain Phelps. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And um, okay, you know, again, we're back to back to the beginning of the investigation again. So the first night, you said you went to you know, took care of Paula, um, and then the next night, you know, and then after that, it was Roger Rogat, right? And you interviewed him. Okay, so what did you do after on the second day besides canvas anything? I believe that was. That was it. Just canvassing for evidence, and you didn't find any? No. Uh, I didn't. Okay. What evidence were you there? Where, what evidence were you there for when it was gathered? I, and I believe it was the, the second day, they found a mask in a boat. Okay. But you didn't collect it. Somebody else did. And who was it that collected that evidence? Do I, I don't know. I wasn't there when they found it. I just... <laughs> Was told they found it. Okay, so you told they found it. Oh, you didn't actually see it. I saw it. Oh, okay. So. As we were waiting for the crime scene detective, whichever one it was, come and get it. Okay, so it's all coming back and tag it, right? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right, so and but you never found any evidence on that second day. No, sir. Okay, what what would you do on the third day? I don't. I believe more. Walking and canvassing Stock Island. Um, do you remember knocking on any doors? I mean, do you remember what neighborhood you were canvassing in, where you were? We were walking, a, g a good majority of the time was in Water's Edge Trailer Park. That's not, not there anymore, but it was um, just down the street from where the treehouse was. Okay in that area and then focusing on second street that goes past Tom Thumb, uh, the fire station, Florida Keys Electric, and then the warehouse okay. in that area. So just that, that, that little part of the neighborhood in Stock Island. Okay. Yes, that general area. Um, you just kind of reminded me something about the Florida Keys electric video. That was, you know, for the for the record, was that the video that I had you replay up there at the moment? You know, we were talking about John Travis Johnson, you know, that stuff. Yes, I believe that was the Florida Keys electric video. Okay, just want to make sure. I'm going to keep um, the audio I'm, going to show you the treehouse. How house, much time of the video did they give? How much time, how time did you guys collect? Do you remember? I don't know. Video? This is the treehouse. I don't know. You don't remember? Okay, yeah. Built above a little camera. I camp. collected that. I forgot. But... Do you know of any more than the seven, I think it's seven minutes, I think I want to say, but whatever that video is, whatever that video is in length, did you guys ever get any more from Florida Keys Electric that you know of? Not to my knowledge. Okay, so not to your knowledge. Okay, so we're back to, okay, your canvas in the neighborhood and you're going through all the different locations, you know, that are close to there, I guess. The, uh, was it the Tom Thumb, the uh, fire department, the treehouse, and you said Water's Edge Trailer Park. Okay, so you didn't find anything in those areas is what you sent what you told us you know this would be the third day correct yes sir okay so we're on the third day nothing there um what'd you do on the fourth day i created the animals oh wait that's a different story um the fourth day i believe i spent a good majority of the time watching surveillance videos okay watching videos and what were the surveillance videos? Did you collect them yourself, or did somebody bring them to you, or? Most of them were brought to us by different detectives. All right, you know, different detectives bringing them in from different places, right? You know, like uh, the CVS or whatever, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, gotcha. And, but you're reviewing them, checking them out to see what you find. Yes, right? sir. Okay, gotcha. And, um, okay, so while you're doing this, um, these surveillance videos, um, again, you know, which which places did you actually were you actually reviewing? You know, was I was it which videos? It was mainly CVS's. The CVS's videos. Yes. Okay. And did you collect all the tapes from CVS, or did they give you all the tapes from CVS? I I believe so. There's we haven't seen those yet. Hours upon hours. I seem to remember the same thing. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Um, now. But you believe they gave you all the video footage they had from CBS? Yes, sir. Okay. And there weren't any cameras broken? There weren't any cameras that were malfunctioning or anything like that? Not that I recall. Okay, good. And did you find anything in the CBS videos that you were reviewing? No, sir. 
Okay, so they weren't really of evidentiary value, is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Any other videos besides CBS? At that time, no, I don't believe so. I believe it was just the CBS videos. Okay. So just the CBS videos, this would be, uh, what, the fourth day? Fourth yes, day? Okay. yeah, the fourth day. So what did you do on the fifth day? The fifth day... The fifth day, I believe, is the day that I assisted with the photo lineup okay. with um, Tato Quinn. Um, we also got the Cosme video okay. on the fifth day. Okay, do you remember when you got the video? I do. I do not. I don't remember if it was in the morning or the afternoon. I believe it was late. Okay, I believe well, it was late. more in the evening. More in the evening. Okay, yes. so more than... And okay... Now, let's see, 17th, I said we're on day five, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, so that would be 17th to the 18th, 19th, 20th, and then 21st. Okay, what did you do on the 21st? The 21st. Well, oh, actually, that would be the fifth day, would be the 21st. That was the um, animals. Fifth day now, was animals, I'm pretty sure. Again, you just said that you were reviewing videos. Did you do anything else that day? Not that I, not that I recall. Did you guys perhaps conduct a no-knock raid on the warehouse on the 21st. Yeah, that might have been the 21st. Yeah. Hey, was, uh, was Mr. Wilson taken into custody on the 21st? <coughs> I would have to refresh my memory as to the exact date that oh. happened. Did they, okay, you were, if I remember correctly, you were there, so when I... When if I remember correctly, to the station I was there. On the 21st, was I brought in in handcuffs? Yes, I do believe so, sir. Okay, and now did you at one time say I was free to go? I don't, know if I, I don't know if I said it, but somebody did. Okay, and this is, but I'm in handcuffs, right? You can take him with I you. don't recall. Okay. Um, anyway, so I'm brought Pretty in on gift. the 21st. We established that because that was the night of the no-knock raid. Now, the no-knock raid, you took myself and Roy Wilson down to the headquarters, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Not you personally. Somebody else drove me. Um, okay. And this is where you did the initial interviews with the suspects, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And, you know, like I said, you know, at some point, because I remember, I actually remember we did the interviews together somewhat. But okay. In the interview process, was I taken out of the interview room and taken downstairs and put in a squad car? Still in handcuffs? You were placed back into handcuffs. And put down in a squad car, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and how long was I down there? I He's don't know offhand. What was the purpose of putting me down there? I believe so we can interview Rory. Okay. Um, now, was I still free to go at any time? At that time? No, I don't know. I would say no. You were in handcuffs in the back of a police car. Okay, and I was, was I in handcuffs in the back of a police car when I left the warehouse to come back? Or when I entered this, I should say, because you were at the station, um, when I entered the station, did I enter in handcuffs? I don't recall. Okay, this would be right after that. Okay, so were you at the raid itself? I was. Okay, and did you initiate the search warrant for, for, that, for that raid? Did I write the search warrant? Did you go and seek the search warrant? Yes. Okay, and you're, so you're the one who got the search warrant for it? Yes, sir. Okay, and what did you write the search warrant for, specifically? for any and all evidence that could be found at the, whatever the warehouse's exact address on 2nd Street. And the address of the, of the of, well, the warehouse is a big, big place. Yes, sir. Um, so was it the address for the entire warehouse or was it just that one, one spot? It was the address for the warehouse, but I, I do believe I specified the living areas where Rory Wilson okay. was at. Okay, so Rory Wilson's apartment. Yes. Okay, was Rory Wilson's apartment attached to the upstairs of the warehouse? Honestly, it was all attached. I mean, was it, was it considered the same spot? I mean, like, okay, a lot of apartments and apartment buildings are attached, but that doesn't mean they're the same apartment. Was it the same spot as far as was it the same apartment or was it a different apartment upstairs? To my knowledge, it was the same apartment. 
And, okay, what led you to believe that? Because I didn't know anything else about the warehouse other than it was sectioned off into apartments. Okay. And how long were you at the warehouse? Uh, when That night, I don't, I don't know, so I'd like to ask. Uh, maybe 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and when, when is this when they first came in? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, so you were, were you there at the front door or were you at the back? I was at the front door. Okay, and the front door. And now the front door is the one they took me out of, correct? I don't know. Okay, because I don't remember, but okay. So here's the thing, it's okay. okay. So you were at the front door, but you weren't close enough to see whether or not I was the one that they pulled from upstairs. Correct. I was there. I was there at the front to set the perimeter around the... So where I was at when they executed the search warrant was all the way out at the street. Okay. Watching the street and kind of the sides of the very large building of the, Good, yeah. the warehouse. Could you ex just explain to the jury, you know, the whole idea of the perimeter, what you're doing with the perimeter when you did that? Yes, sir. You no, know, I mean, explain to them what, what you're doing when you're doing that. What are you doing when you're setting the perimeter? Why do you do it? In case somebody, when we executed the search warrant, in case somebody fled out of the building, we would be out far enough to be able to detain them, apprehend them, find out who they are. Okay. So the, back to that. So the idea from the beginning was to detain me, right? To, de to detain me, not so just Floyd Wilson, but to detain me. I didn't know who you were, sir. Okay, so you didn't know who I was at that point? No, sir. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, you don't know, but you know who I was after I got to the station, correct? Mm hmm So when I get to the station, where do I go from there? Do you remember? What, after we were done with the interviews? After they brought me into the station, what did you guys do with me? Interviewed you. I'm going to object on a relevance basis. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm going to overrule the objection. Thank Be you. Before she goes too far, I just um, want to say to all the third tip jurors who joined us during Brandy's break, thank I'm you. In, She's about I'm to go live. Us. Thanks Coming for coming the station. What did you, you know, you're there, uh, correct? Hanging out with us. Hope to see you again yes, soon. Yes, sir. Okay, and who Appreciate else was there? Do you remember? Detective Pitcher was there. Okay. And anybody else? Probably Captain Phelps. Probably Captain Phelps. Okay. So Captain Phelps. The audio, when it cuts down like that, that's because they're hearing the uh, defense counsel, or sorry, the the prosecutor Typically, that would have been there. So, who brought me in? Who, you know, who brought me in? Where they put me? You know, was it wasn't you, correct? It was not me. Okay, so it wasn't me. When's the first time you met me? In the interview room. In the interview room. Okay, so we're in the interview room. You just brought me in. Um, you know, I would assume your your intentions were to question, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you guys ask me a bunch of questions? Yes, sir. Okay, and at the end of those questions, did they? Let me go, you know, from, from, you know, did they allow me to leave the, the station? Yes, after the interview, you were free to leave and you left. Okay, and so, so is, is, is it safe to assume that there wasn't, in your opinion or in, you know, the lead detective's opinion, whoever's making the decision, it wasn't enough to arrest me? Correct. Okay, and okay, so afterwards, you know, we, we you know, I'm obviously free. I get arrested the same, was it the night of the 22nd? Because I was in, I remember that 21st went to the 22nd. But okay, that night, what changed in between the 21st and the 22nd when I get arrested? During your interview and Rory Wilson's interview, you both put yourselves with John Travis Johnson. Well, that's, uh, yeah, we might have to watch that too. But okay, so the thing, thing, to watch. thing is. I will sustain the objection again. There's. No commentary uh, yeah. allowed. I'll, I'll watch myself here, Honor. Um, okay, Ms. Malone, you said that, you know, I was brought in because of that. What I'm saying is, is <laughs> our, our interviews were done on the 21st, right? Rory right. Wilson's and mine, the ones that you just said that we, we, we you know, we, uh, was it, we used uh, John Travis Johnson's an alibi or whatever, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and I was let go after that, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, but you're saying I was arrested for those same two interviews. So why wasn't I arrested at that point? Because we had not interviewed John Travis Johnson yet. Okay, so it was John Travis Johnson's interview that got me arrested. That was the final 
to put it all together, everything that we knew. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now don't get me wrong. You know, Rory Wilson allegedly testified that you know or made statements about me. You know, it's not a you know again, it's alleged that it's it's Rory Wilson allegedly made statements about me. Correct. Yes, he stated that you were there during uh, the planning of the robbery. I'm just asking whether or not he made statements. I didn't ask what he said. Sorry. Yes. Um, now. Okay, so that that is what you're alleging Anna, here. Welcome. And okay, when John Bailey. Travis Johnson so much allegedly made statements well. against me, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and those are the two things. Anything else in this investigation? So far, we're up to day five when I get arrested. Anything else in this investigation saying that may, you know saying I had something to do with this? The Cosme video. And the Cosme video, what you just said not too long ago, if I'm, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, that that Cosme video, you can't tell who's in the video, that you decided who's in the video based on the investigation. Correct. Okay, and your investigation was Rory Wilson and John Travis Johnson at this point, right? Correct. So you're saying that their word tells you that I'm the guy in the video. Correct. Okay, and even though you can't see me. He is so mad. You can't see me in the video. So it's just them t saying it's, it's, it's me that that's a good enough, right? Yep. I, I don't understand. I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe I should clarify myself just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little nervous or whatever. I'm, you know. But here's the thing. Video. We, when we established, when we were watching the video, we established that, yes, you could not see anybody in that video. Right. I could see people, body shapes, body, body shape. made. But not make an identification. Not faces, no sir. Right, no faces. Okay, and now you just testified that the only only investigation that you knew of, of me, right, was from Rory and Travis. And the Cosme video. Well, again, this is what we're talking about, this Cosme video. Cosme video, you said you can't identify anybody in it, right? So, okay, if you can't identify anybody in it, I'm asking how that is, is, is evidence against me at that point. At this point, I'm objecting. Yes, this is argumentative. It's been asked and answered. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, well, we'll move on. Okay, so I get arrested, right? Um, do you remember when they, were you there when they arrested me? Yes, sir. Okay, and, you know, they took me, if I remember correctly, took me over to the jail and... You know, that was that would that be testifying. Yes. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to sustain the objection. It's his testimonial. So you can okay. ask questions. Okay. Not testify. Did you see me again after I went to jail? When I got the buckle swab, the buckle swab. Now, you have to refresh my memory because I don't remember you taking a buckle swab from me. But did you, uh, you know, could you please tell me what day that was? I would have to look at. Now, the property receipt to refresh my memory as to what day it was. Okay, okay. I'd be perfectly happy to let you do that because I, I honestly don't remember, and I don't remember if you did do one on me. So, the thing is, is um, uh, do you remember? Again, you put it into you put it into evidence. Correct? Is there any other book of swabs from me that you know of? Not that I know of, no, sir. Okay, so that's the DNA that was used for the FDLE report. Is that correct? I would assume so. That's He's, not my purview, but oh, it's uh, about the process. You bagged it and you the tagged it, right? And, and turned it in. And then it goes from the evidence. that to whoever is going to do the testing or whatever. Yes, sir. Right, gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. So we're at that stage now. Did you interview any of any of the witnesses in the case? I was there when Roosevelt Washington was interviewed. Okay, Roosevelt Washington. Yes. Um, did he say I had anything to do with this? Objection sustained. Um, <laughs> so did he quick. have any evidence, anything of evidentiary value to add to your investigation? No. Okay, so no, nothing from Roosevelt Washington, right? And t please tell me, you know, tell the jury actually who, who Roosevelt Washington was and why you would even be interviewing. He was in the trailer with Matthew Bonnet when the robbery occurred. Okay, so this is another person who was on scene when it actually happened. Yes, sir. Okay. But he didn't have anything to say, really, of evidentiary value. No, sir. Okay. All right. So moving on. Any other witnesses that you, you you know, that you actually talked to? Uh, I talked to one subject, Odom. I don't remember his first name. Would that They're be one of the neighborhood canvases? Would it be Austin Odom? Probably. Okay, and um, 
Do you remember why he was of interest to you? Because we were talking to all kinds of people that were in the area, and he lived at the warehouse. Okay, so lived at the, the warehouse. To be, to, be, to be clear, was it thought that we were all living at the warehouse? I There's believe Paula Matthews stated that she thought him. Detroit lived there. The warehouse. She's gotten a trike lift there? That Detroit, Roy Oh, Wilson, Detroit lived there. Gotcha. Lived there. Could you please again tell them who Detroit, you know, AKA Detroit is? is the street name for Rory Wilson. Okay. Um, now, you know, you're saying because you got information that Detroit lived there, right? Now, how did you guys obtain this information? That was, I believe Paula told me that in the, her interview. She told you? That, that, she, that he lived in a warehouse, possibly on Front Street, but she wasn't certain, okay. but it was in that area. Now, could you, uh, if I let you refer again back to your affidavit, would you have wrote the same thing in your affidavit? I'm, I'm sorry, what? Did you write the same thing, what you just said to us in your affidavit, that you would find that out by Paula Bel, Belmonte's statements? I don't know if I wrote that in my affidavit or not. Okay, so you, but do you remember what you wrote in your affidavit? I remember a majority of what I wrote. It's just four pages long. Okay, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I was just not that one, right? That one you don't remember. I don't remember if I wrote that in there or not. Okay, just want to clarify. All right, so do you remember what else you wrote in that, that affidavit? Can you be more specific? Um, okay, about my part in the crime. Do you remember how, how I came about to be a suspect? Yes. Okay, and how was that? We had found out that Rory Wilson had been at Metro PCS to pay a phone bill with another subject. Um, was I a subject at that point? No. Okay, so I was nobody at this point. Correct. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to object. He asked a question. He's not letting your computer answers. Well, well it's just... I'm, I'm, I'm going to overrule the objection yeah. I, at this point. I would, um, I would, again, I apologize. I, I just... I overruled the objection. I didn't see a problem there. Okay. Miss uh, Malone, okay. Again, how did I become a suspect as far as, okay, you didn't know anything about me at this point. Metro PCS, phone bill. Please continue. We're, we're actual speed. They, I believe Metro PCS gave us your name, because I believe it was you that was actually paying your phone bill. Uh, and then two of the general crimes detectives that was assisting us went over to, I believe, the warehouse and talked to you, and you gave us the name of Rory Detroit Wilson. Okay. Did they say I acted suspicious or that there was something that, you know, the something I did that on made me a suspect at that point? No. Okay, so I'm still not a suspect, right? No, sir. Okay, and so please continue. Where did we go after that? How did, again, again, how do I become a suspect? Once we determined the legal name of Detroit, because that's, that's all that Paula could give us was street name Detroit, and there's shockingly quite a few people that go by the street name Detroit once we were able to get a name for him that's when we prepared the search warrant for where Detroit Rory Wilson was living at the warehouse when we executed the search warrant at the warehouse Mr. Tucker you were there okay but just to, again I'm not trying to, to stop you in your middle of your statement um, but since we're going to I just want to pause right there. Um, okay, so see any more. still not a suspect, Stop. right? No, sir. Okay, so the search warrant, was my name on there to be detained? I don't believe anybody's name was on there to be detained. I thought you said you went and got it for Rory Wilson's apartment. I did. Okay, so was Rory Wilson supposed to be detained if he was a suspect of being Detroit? That's the standard practice with the sheriff's office when we execute a search warrant every individual that's in that premise is detained okay please and this is my ignorance and i'm going to actually ask you to explain to the jury because i'm kind of ignorant of these 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 things um please explain to them the whole process as far as the search warrant thing you know what do you do to get a search warrant what you know what is it that you know 
again, how do you go about this process? You know, when you go from writing it to getting it to, to executing it? Well, based on, in order to get a search warrant, we get everything that we know at the time that we want to try to go and search a place. We write it out in an affidavit. We have to have what they determine probable cause. We have to have a reason why we're going to this house. We laid it out based on that Paula had identified Rory Wilson Detroit as the guy that held the knife to her throat and punched her a whole bunch of times in the face while demanding her purse. We now know who he is. So now we want to go search his house because she identified him and we want to see what evidence is in the house. Once we, once we as the detectives, once I wrote the search warrant, I then give that form to the state attorney because they're the lawyers and everything and they look at it and they say yay or nay as to whether or not there's enough to bother a judge with to sign the search warrant. The state attorneys at the time determined yes, we had enough. We woke up a judge and the judge actually met me at the sheriff's office headquarters, he signed the judge. search warrant. And then once we have that signed search warrant, depending on the type of search warrant it is, and this search warrant was for the residence of a murder suspect, we had our SWAT team execute the search warrant because when there's that type of crime, there's a danger to everybody involved. And they're trained in doing that and they do it all the time. Us detectives that don't do that stuff, we set the perimeter, which is what I did. I was on the perimeter. They executed the search warrant, which there's a lot of, they have to read it to the occupants. And again, whenever we do a search warrant, be it for, especially on a residence, everybody that's in that residence is going into handcuffs pretty much immediately okay. and they're detained is that that about it uh, yeah I believe so I think okay. I covered it okay, good thank you. thank you for explaining yep. that to them um, okay so now going back to the search warrant and how, it it and how you get it and all that stuff was it is it based on an address or is it based on the subject is it based on the person or based on the address Honestly, it depends on the type of search warrant. I'm talking about the one you wrote. Do you it remember? was based on the address. It's based on the address. So Rory Wilson wasn't actually considered, you know, you weren't, there's nothing in there saying detain Rory Wilson. Not that I recall. Okay, but did you have the intentions on detaining Rory Wilson if you saw him there? Absolutely. Okay, because he's a murder suspect. That makes sense, right? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so, you know, again, you're going there, you have the search warrant for Rory Wilson's apartment. And you're going there with the intention of detaining Rory. Okay, now again, is there any reason to detain me at this point? Because you're in the apartment. Just because I'm in the apartment, right? Yes, sir. Okay, would you agree that if you, again, if you went into an apartments, right, say it was apartment complex, what happens when you go into the wrong apartment? I don't know. I don't think I've ever done that. Okay, well... Again, uh, just again, as far as search warrants go, it has to be for that specific location. You can't just get a search warrant and go wherever you want, right? Correct. Okay, so it's very specific, right? Okay, they're having some audio issues. Oh, wow. Okay, was Roy Wilson renting the upstairs? I have no idea. You have no idea. Um, did anybody else know that was there? Not that I know of. So nobody knew this. Did you have a meeting before you go and execute this or... You know, do you guys just just go over there and knock on the door? No, we had a meeting prior. Okay. So you had a meeting prior, and you know, again, you're not again, you're not specific though. You're not very sure about which areas are what Rory Wilson's and which ones are not. Correct, because we're talking about a warehouse that was makeshift into apartments. Okay. Makeshift into a apartments, step above right? The tree house. Yes, so sir. big warehouse though, right? Yes, very okay. big warehouse. And lots of different sections of those, right? Lots of doors. I never like fully went inside it, so I couldn't. Okay. Well, based on when you were inside of it, did it seem like 
there were walls that separated out the different sections or was yes. it okay it was just big one big open room no there was walls and it, it was made into an apartment there was a bathroom and i remember so, that i believe there was a bedroom so you didn't search any of the other sections or the other apartments in those sections i don't i didn't search any did anybody search those I, apartments i don't know sir i'm just asking is i'm asking you like not okay i know where you guys executed the warrant right yes any of the other sections that we just talked about those sections in that warehouse where there's other apartments or other whatever people are running right did you guys search any of those no okay and again why wouldn't you search those because that's not where rory wilson lived right because that's not where rory wilson lived now, Rory Wilson, according to, you know, again, the documents that have been submitted, I guess, you know, he was supposed, that was his apartment in the back, right? I don't remember if it was back or front, but yes. Okay. And what do, you, do you remember him having any other door other than the one that was in the warehouse? There was, there was one in the front, and then there was one in the, the, the back of the no, warehouse. No, that's even why we said that, right? That you were at the front, yes. and there were other people who came in from the back. Yes, sir. Right, okay. And then that was targeted as Rory Wilson's, uh, Rory Wilson's apartment. Okay. Again, what, so you wouldn't know or have known whether or not the upstairs was part of Rory Wilson's apartment? No, I would not have known that. Okay. And uh, had, had the Monroe County Sheriff's Department, had it ever been to the, that, even that specific section of the warehouse prior to, you know, the no-knock raid on there that you know of? Not that I know, but probably. Okay. Just I'm curious because, again, I don't know whether you've got knocked on that door ever before. You know I mean? Uh, that's what I'm asking. Um, okay. So this is your first time at the warehouse, Rory Wilson's apartment. And did they take anything of any evidentiary value out of that that you know of? They took evidence, but I was not there. I don't know what all they took. Okay. So you didn't take any, but, but no. you know they did take evidence They from took there. stuff, okay. yes, sir. I don't know, and you don't know if it had evidentiary value or not. I do not. Okay, good. All right, so anything, okay, now we're up to, let's see, just before I get arrested, right? Or just when I got arrested. Okay, what was your involvement with the investigation after all the suspects had been arrested? Not much. Okay. And we talked about Anthony Clay, suspect still at large, right? Correct. Not a suspect, but somebody we wanted to interview okay you want to interview her but again i don't want to get redundant here um but okay so you know again according to your affidavit she's again been named a suspect by a few different witnesses yes okay but she's not a suspect to go and try and find that wasn't my every time the audio cuts out the uh prosecution team was whispering to each other um so what was you said there wasn't much involvement for you after this right as far as after what after rory and me and travis they were all arrested right but there's not much involvement for you after that no just a, like the search warrant of the truck the truck and the recovery of paula's backpack okay let's get back to the search on the truck because i you know that reminds me of that um, the search on the truck. We have so much Again, to cover still. You go there. We've already established that it wasn't impounded for like, what, 10, 15, 20 days? It wasn't searched. The objection's been asked and answered. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. Well, in that case, was the car, truck ever impounded? Same objection. I, I, we, we haven't established that it was impounded. It's been asked and answered. I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay. Okay. What happened to the truck afterwards? We left it where it was parked. Left it where it was parked. Okay. Did anybody ever come to collect the truck? I have no idea. You have no idea. Okay. Let's get back to the search of it. Um, now you said, you know, that Captain Phelps was there. You were there. <laughs> Who's CC? Well, um, I was just going to ask uh, about. Excuse me. <clears throat> let's see if there's something new that hasn't been asked. Okay. Who's C.C. Hoverson? She is a deputy that works in the training division. Okay. And why was she at this search of a vehicle used in a homicide? For learning training purposes. She was learning. 
Okay. Yes, sir. Now, did the forensics, uh, the, the forensics guy, you said uh, John Underwood that was there, if I remember correctly. Yes, sir. Did he search the vehicle? I don't, I believe he did. Okay, you believe he did, but do you know he did? I don't recall if he did or not. Okay, and you said the search, if you remember right, that you videotaped the search, right? So would John Underwood be on that video checking out the, checking out the, the truck? I don't, I don't recall if he Did searched you, the truck. Okay. You're not, you don't recall if he searched the truck at all. Do you remember, you know, I mean, I would imagine he would have went before you. So, I mean, you know, do you remember you gave a reason why or why not he wouldn't? I, I really, it was six years ago. I don't, I don't remember who. Did you search the truck? Yes. Okay. What'd you find in it? Uh, I would have to look at my report to do for everything. I mean, we found drug paraphernalia. We found um, some mask, some knives. Uh, okay, some masks, some knives, some drug paraphernalia. Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, was any of that taken into evidence? Yes. Okay, good. And did they ever again? Did it ever? Prove to have any evidentiary value for you? Not to my knowledge. Okay, so none of it actually. Allie B from Tennessee, welcome. Thanks for your continued support. The audio, I hope they get this sorted here. Did you guys do anything special with it? Did you? The search of the truck. How did you go about a stat? You know, again, is there a procedure for it? Is there something that, you know, a certain way you have to do it, anything like that? No, no, I, just other than the same standard, writing the search warrant, having the state look at it, saying yay or nay, and then having a judge look at it and saying yes or no, signing it, and then there's procedural things where we got to record us reading the search warrant. Like, in the case of a house, we'd read it to the occupants. In the case of an unoccupied truck, we read it to the unoccupied truck. And then paperwork that we have to give to like the owner of the truck, stuff like that, but nothing other than that. Okay. Ms. Malone, um, now at this point you are a detective, Detective Malone, right? Yes, Homicide sir. detective, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you think it would have been of, you know, prudent to take a vehicle that's been used in a homicide, you know, to impound it? Objection argumentative. I'm asking for our expertise. The homicide detective, I would assume they have. We're going to over, rules. overrule the objection. If you have an uh, opinion on that uh, question, you may render it. The, the issue with the trunk was the time delay and us actually knowing where the truck was. And we did have our crime scene guy do, like you could do blood, check for blood on, on stuff with, lights and glasses and he didn't see anything that would have been overly impactful so there didn't seem to be a reason to impound the truck didn't you just say a second ago that he didn't look at the truck all right i, I misspoke i don't remember what he did but now that as we're talking about it mm -hmm. i remember him looking at that type of stuff blood and What'd you say Look, else? Looking for if there was blood. Okay, but he did do that, right? I do believe so, yes. Um, and we'll go back and take a look at that. Um, okay, I, I think, excuse me, Mr. Tucker, but I, I think that this is about as good a stopping point for I think so, too, Your Honor. Thank you. We're going to find. So, uh, yes. We're going to break for lunch, folks. So, again, we thank you for your patience, your attentiveness during our morning session. Uh, we're going to resume at 1.30. Um, so follow the usual cautionary instructions. Return at 1.30, and we'll pick up from where we left off. Okay, so... They're, they're breaking for lunch. Realize we are catching up right now. We are playing catch up. Uh, this has happened today, but we're not all the way caught up. Look at that. There's gaff tape stuck to the wall over there. I'm not sure why they did that. That's a, that's like I'd say that's like three bucks worth of gaff tape right there. Ridiculously expensive stuff, but man, is it good. It is the best stuff ever. Uh, we're now at lunch. A couple of you have been complaining that I have not let you have a, a break. 
that you've not been able to uh, to go get some food uh, to to see to your sustenance needs. Uh, do we need a little bit of, a little bit of a break? It will be a short one. It'll be a short one because they've they've already come back. So we need to we'll be on delay. We'll still be catching up. It means we have to work late tonight. I'm going to leave this up to you. I mean, we can we can decide. Fine, ten minute break. Don't need a break. Um, it was painful. This is he's he's doing remarkably well. I have to say he's probably doing the best I've ever seen in a pro se case. He is not. He's up there with no notes, asking these questions. He does. I, I guess he's got some stuff on his computer, but he just sits there and off his mind. He's just nonstop talking. This is this is fantastic. No, let's catch up. Good without a break. Um, no break. Tell you what, uh, if if you need a break. So, uh, Take us with Thank you, you for that heads up. Uh, can I ask a quick scheduling question? You have the jury come back at 1.30. Um, I've had Travis Johnson here all day yesterday, and I haven't here yet today. Do you anticipate we're going to get – that will be our next witness. Do you anticipate that we're going to get to him today and get started with him, or do you think it would be more prudent to start fresh with him on Tuesday? Um, I'm just looking for some guidance from the court. Do you want me to leave him here waiting? It'll be 1.30. Mr. Tucker has more cross to do yet. We have redirect. It's got a lot of cross. Well, um, I guess it's kind of uh, Mr. Tucker's got to give us an idea of an estimate as to the well, length of his remaining cross examination. Thank you. Um, thank you, Your Honor. That's why I actually did say to the prosecution that you know I thought that this witness was probably going to take up the rest of the day. Um, I was honest <laughs> with them so about that. When we came when we came back from break. Well, uh, well. So I think uh, you could probably release, uh, you know, for today. Johnson, and just we'll see him on Tuesday. All right, sounds good, Judge. I'll make sure. Right. There is no court on Monday because of the holiday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um. So so we'll have we'll take a, a brief break here, well, a brief break from the video. We're going to skip ahead. We're not going to take the real break, but uh, understand we've got we have to go back and look at the uh, where are we at on our uh, on our treehouse. Let's see. Let's uh, clear this off for just a minute. Our thumbnail is is taking shape. I think we're adding a truck, I, and it, I chose this one. I don't know the color of the actual truck. I think it is darker in color. We want it to be sort of off in the distance, like over the hill type thing, or right on the top of the hill. That looks that looks pretty good. Um, so we've got that. Um, I was I was looking for a, a Captain Morgan type stance, you know, some sort of you know one leg up, you know. I, I, not that I know what Captain Morgan is, um, but I was looking for some sort of pirate to put there. Have not found that yet. So Captain Morgan is not on there. We do have the crack. We've got the um, the uh, the blue beer cans, which um, may or may not represent Bud Light. Uh, key lime pie representing the the courtroom decorations and the wall color as far as the paints and carpet goes. We've got the camper, the tree house, the satellite dish, uh, the $100 bill that was found on the ground, the bicycle. We have crack. Uh, you can see the crack right there at the bottom of the, you know, on the way up to the tree house. Uh, we have the uh, flashlight. We're going to work on the flashlight. It's got, it's, I, I realize it's, uh, it's not quite the best. I mean, up here it looks really good because you can see like the, the light coming off it and stuff, but uh, we'll, we'll find out a better place to put the flashlight um, and maybe change the color on that one. Uh, and then we have obviously the chalk outline with the ketchup, um, the spilled ketchup. So thumbnails coming uh, coming along quite nicely. We'll move this one up. It is nighttime as well, so that's good. Um, but uh, we'll do that. So I'm going to uh, see if we can skip through lunchtime and catch up because because we need to catch up. We're we're just late. We have to work late. That's all there is to it. Let's see. There was a little break here, right here. Let's jump straight to this and see what happens. Um, see if we get any audio. Oops, there we go. Uh, Deanne B, Dan B gifted a membership. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Yes, you can pause if you need a break, but then you'll have to watch on, on, on fast speed to get caught up. Uh, break breaks are for sissies. <laughs> Just kidding. With, um, your, your Honor, yes, I'd love some. Uh, My son's going to bring me food. Yeah, um, your Honor, the the rest of the, the questions I have from Ms. Malone are based on impeachment material. 
um, and I'm still trying to download a few of the videos. Apparently the connection's a little bit slow here on my computer. Excuse me? Oh, I'm, I'm just having a little bit of trouble with the technical aspect of it right at the moment. I was wondering if you might give me a few more minutes just to get these things downloaded and where they're supposed to be. How long do you think uh, you'd need? Maybe five minutes. Well, okay. I mean, if, if you think that's going to do it, I would prefer to give a little extra time than not enough. So. I, would I would appreciate that, Your Honor. If you... So if we uh, say 15 minutes, if perfect. We, like till another break, 150, and just uh, tell the jurors that they're, I assume they're all in the jury room. Yes, they are. That uh, we're going to need a few extra minutes, and they should just stand by. But uh, you know, it'll be about 150, but they can stay in the jury room, and I'll be back at that time. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. All right. So. So while they are on break, again, we're going to do a one little update. I'm looking for a good captain. It, it's not going to be the Captain Morgan stance, like the, the, you know, the, the iconic stance, because I think that's copyright. And we wouldn't be able to do that. But I was, I was thinking maybe just a little captain. And I think this little cute guy over here, um, this dude right here, he looks like a Captain Morgan to me. He's got one arm up. His foot, both feet are on the ground. But, you know, that's, we can't have everything. Uh, I think he's just going to be back over here like uh, in this area, Captain Morgan. Uh, we'll shrink him down because he's a little dude. He's like, he's, he's like what, 40 ounces? <laughs> is, that, is that how big Captain Morgan is? <laughs> I have no clue, guys. I don't drink. What can I say? Uh, all right, so we're going to let me skip ahead. We're going to skip this and, and catch right up. We are almost caught up. We really are so close. Um, we're, doing, we're doing quite nicely. You guys are, have been very patient. Let's see, a few more minutes, a few more minutes. Boom. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're about about to come back on this one. Um, behind the tree a bit. Ooh, I like that idea, behind the tree. Maybe, oh, maybe if we do this, maybe if we rotate him just a tiny bit so that he's like leaning out, like peeking out, so it'll be like this, okay? And then we, we tuck him in behind the tree, so let's say layer, layer him back there. Layer, send backwards, boom. Uh, a little further. He's behind. He's behind crack right now, um, which he needs to be behind the crack. But he also needs to be behind tree. Uh, send backward one more layer. Oh, now he's behind bike and crack. It's a slow process. We're moving very, very slowly through time and space. Send backward one more time. Boom! He's behind the tree. Captain Morgan is in position. I think that's perfect too, uh, size wise and everything. We're good. Okay, Captain Morgan is present. Uh, let's see where we are. Uh, court is about to begin in just a second. We've skipped ahead past this 15-minute break. It's got less, like the last 30 seconds or so. So let's jump in here and there we go. Perfect, perfect. Well, I gave some extra, extra time, so hopefully we're ready to proceed. I, I appreciate it, Your Honor. Um, there's one video that's still downloading. It keeps on wanting to resume or whatever, but I figured since we have, since I don't want to waste time, there's some things that don't need to require the videos. So I'd go proceed with those you know, this, and wait for the video later. This dang, this okay. dang courtroom Wi-Fi. Bring in the jury, please. Is detrimental to my case, Your Honor. Yes, everyone can use the intro music, but if you if anyone else uses it, you'll know. Like, you'll be like, "Hey, that's RA's music." <laughs> but it's legally they can use it. Anyone can download it. Paul, thank you so much. <coughs> okay, I'll I'll check and see if they have a pirate, but it's got to be it's got to be that sort of pirate, like that sort of drawing. It's got to stay cartoony. right here. All jurors present in the courtroom, Your Honor. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone. That's almost good. Good afternoon, That's members of the jury. Uh, welcome back from lunch. I uh, hope it was pleasant. Thank you for your patience. We had to attend to a couple other details, uh, so I know you waited in the jury room patiently, and I do appreciate it, but we're ready to continue with the cross-examination, and 
the latest witness, uh, that's State versus Tucker. If you can witness, please come back on the witness stand. Good afternoon, and I'll just remind you, you're still under oath. Yes, sir. All right, so we can proceed with the continued cross-examination. All right. Um, good afternoon. Thank you guys for being patient. It's been a little rough with technical things. Um, Ms. Malone, you know, uh, now you said you are no longer a detective, no longer a homicide detective. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And what what department do you work in now? I still work for the sheriff's office. I work in the nine one one center. Okay. Is that a civilian position or is that a uh, is that a batch position? It's a civilian position. Okay. And how how did you come to be in that position? I requested to go into dispatch. Okay. Um, do you recognize this line of approach? Well, it's state scene uh, the document. It's, it's impeachment. Well, regardless. May we approach? Yes. Yes, you can approach. Of course you can approach. Quit asking me that question. All right, so I wasn't looking. What is he saying? Have you seen this? This is impeachment material. Uh, he said basically everything else I have for this witness is to impeach her. Okay, I'm going to chase after her career. I'm going to chase after why she moved from position to position, which she did quite a bit. I mean, she was a dog handler at one time, like for four years. Uh, so she's been like, she's, she's played every role in the, uh, in the, in this whole situation. Uh, Laura, Laura Bronson gifted a membership. That one went to beautiful day. Congratulations, beautiful day. And thank you, Laura. Grumpy judge is, is doing great. <laughs> I'm loving it. Thank you for the sandwich. I appreciate that son. Um, let's see. Pepper also gifted a membership. Thank you very much, Pepper, not just for your support, but for being generous and letting somebody else enjoy that same privilege. Michelle Bachmeyer, you are the recipient of the, uh, the gift. We're not going to skip ahead through this because we're almost caught up. We're almost at real time. So uh, we're, we're nearly there. Good to have to do, it's going to have to do with her career and investigation, I'm sure. Yes, I, okay. He said there were like 208 pieces of evidence that were improperly handled or not following procedure. Um, prosecution has sort of objected. This probably should have been a pretrial issue, right? This should have been sorted out in motion and limine for, you know, I don't know. There should have been a little bit of pretrial work on this port part, but the judge is letting them go into this. Mm, mm, mm. Got me some chocolate milk. Thank you, son. I appreciate that. Gerda K gifted a membership. Whoa, baby bear just gifted 20. 20. That's two zero memberships. Uh, hopefully you've got that setting turned on because they're being they're just flying out the door right now. Uh Kathy, Army Mom, uh Angelique, just girl just a girl baking, 701, uh, Terry Downs, Tracy Glover, uh Smuffy O'Leary. Uh, Michelle Bachmeyer just gifted a membership as well. In the midst of this, they're still flying out the door. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fellow Sumi, Heather Loveday, Bunty McBunface, uh, Michelle Ellis, Dancing with Daffodils, uh, Jody Camo. Seems French, but I didn't pronounce that right. I'm sorry about that, Jody. Uh, Renee Marie, Lauren Elizabeth, A. Blaylock, Blaylock uh, Nix the Cat, Benjamin Gray, Katie. Uh, Veda Worship, Donna J. I think we got them all. I think we got them all. Donna, Donna E. Bug Duggar just gifted five as well. Gypsy Moon, uh, AJ Siller, okay. Tanel uh, Suzanne, Donna E. Uh, wow, and Ashley R. You guys, thank you so much for your generosity. That is that is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to all those who gifted. Congratulations to the winner. I'm glad you get to enjoy the privileges of yes. uh, of membership. Uh, just uh, it is a generous. letter you, of recommendation from, I believe it was Major Shabilia 
that I no longer be a major crimes detective. Okay. A lot of recommendations that, that I no longer be. You, this move down to dispatch was voluntary, correct? It was, yes. Okay. But Major Scapilia is your boss, correct? He's the boss of pretty much everybody at the sheriff's office, yes. Okay. And it's in this letter, he's making a recommendation that what? That I not be a detective, but I still was going to be a cop. Did he give a re You were still going to be a cop? Yes. Okay, but you just told me you're not in a badge position. Because I requested a non-badge position. Okay, good. I'm going to clarify that. Okay, um, Amanda, hey, what else did it say in this report, Chris, this recommendation you, for you? Why did, why did he give, what reason did he give as to why he didn't want you to be a major crime detective? Uh... I had fallen behind on paperwork on some of my cases in 2019. Okay. And how many cases was that? I don't know the exact numbers. Okay. Do you remember reading this recommendation? Five years ago. Okay. Would, you, would you like me to refresh you and let you look at it? Rejected your, would help if you're logged in as you when you're watching. That helps and then interaction also helps. So here's the impeachment. She got a letter of recommendation recommending that she not be in her position anymore. I, I don't call those letter of recommendation very often. Out of 17. Okay. And 11 cases out of 17 is what he says. And as now... He didn't say they were for paperwork. What did he say they were for? I, I didn't read that far. Okay. Well, Investigated deficiency, I believe, was one of the words he used. Well, did he say these are two examples? Objection here, sir. Waiting for a document. Yeah, I, I'm going to sustain the objection. Okay. Um, I think we've uh, gone okay. within the bounds of what I allowed with respect okay. to this uh, um, area. Okay. Um, well, being that you just read this, was it wasn't over paperwork, correct? It was over paperwork. Okay. That's, again, for impeachment purposes, Your Honor. You've been impeached. You've established the uh, basis for um, the employment situation and... Except for that is not the correct reason why she was fired. Or not fired, oh. It was demoted. According to this document I just showed you. Mr. Tucker, I've made my decision to strike his comments. Over the objection from the state, I allowed you to show her. I okay. allowed you to okay. uh, talk and question her, but that's as far as okay. I think the rules allow. For okay. Us. Did your boss discuss this with you at all? Major, no. Didn't, I'm sorry, he was major at the time, right? He's a lieutenant colonel now, right? Yes. Okay. Did Major Scabilia? Did he talk to you about why you were being demoted? Why he no, recommended your demotion? No, they sent it to me in an email. Okay, they sent it to you in an email? They didn't, yes. You didn't discuss it with you at all? No. So what he sent you is the document I have? Yes. Okay. And, again, so that's not exactly voluntarily Melanie's awesome. We've going done. down to dispatch, was it? Being removed as a detective is not a demotion. A detective is just a deputy that works in a specialized unit. Okay. I was being moved to road patrol at the time. As I stepped back from after being in major crimes for a little over two years and the things that I had seen and over the course of my law enforcement career, I knew for me, I couldn't do it anymore. So I voluntarily gave up my badge and gave up my job as a cop so I wouldn't have to see them things anymore. So you're saying it had nothing to do with this this, this recommendation from Chad Scabilia? No. Okay. And you know he never said that uh, it was it was an insufficient investigation. Objection here, she sustained. Okay. I'm asking if she ever heard that from her boss. I know what you ask, and I sustained the okay. objection. Okay. So, okay. Um, so there's a, in your mind, there was no reason other than you wanted to go down. I'm, I'm sorry. In your mind, there was no reason other than when you wanted to, go, you wanted to again, uh, switch to switch departments. Uh -huh. you, know, you didn't want to wear the badge. 
Correct. I, I did not want to deal with the things that cops have to see on a daily basis anymore. Okay. Okay. And let's go ahead and we'll go on to something else because I, you know, we can come back to this if we need to. But um, can I go grab something else, Your Honor? Yes. We have a. Uh, the curt response from the judge anytime he's asked a question. Yes. Yes. He almost cuts you off. He's like, yes. Quit asking. Uh, this is sad, um, but it is it is a part of the trial. If you have a witness that has uh, something that would call into um, question going the back credibility to the book of swabs, evidence. Right? Um, you collected so a book of swab from me. You said uh, you also collected one from, was it Rory? Yes, sir. Okay. It's Rory Wilson and myself. Um, would you, Alan, after those book of swabs went to the lab, did you ever get the results? Did you ever see the results of those, those book of swabs? Not that I recall. Okay, so when those the results went to somebody else. Correct. Okay, and do you remember who that might be? Probably Detective Pitcher, but I don't. I don't know. Okay, and did you and did you and Detective Pitcher? Did you guys work together, or you know, did you discuss everything about the investigation? I mean, were you, were you working the case together? In the first beginning of the case, yes. After the first week or so, no. Okay, so could you tell me who was working the case after that first week or so? Detective Pitcher. By himself? Yes. Okay. All right, just checking because I wanted to get the timeline here. Um, okay, so, you know, you didn't get the results from those. You just collected the samples. Yes, sir. Okay. Correctly before the lunch break, um, and I could have them read it back for me. I'm not only asking because of time. Um, did you say you never said that you know you saw Travis in the truck? That you saw Travis sitting in the truck in the video? That I said I never saw Travis sitting in the no, truck. No, that you said you saw Travis sitting in the truck in the video. I did not say that. Okay, good. And how do I'm not exactly sure. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, he's mumbling. I can't hear. He's what asking saying. how to uh, oh. place uh, some sort of drive in the mechanism. There. Judge, unfortunately, Mr. Muller, who was here earlier, had to go home because he was feeling under the weather. He was sick yesterday. He just came in mm -hmm. for the morning session. So, okay. I imagine you just stick it in the, in the USB port. You know, I don't mind. Take a look. I don't mind. Uh, you know, if we need to, uh, we can see if. Um, Carries here. Uh, is there anyone in the courtroom who knows how to use a USB thumb drive and a TV? Uh, anyone by show of hands? We need some tech, being, tech support. Uh, the head of our uh, tech department. So Paging tech support to Key West. Key West courtroom. The Key Line courtroom. Okay. Uh, hope, hope you do, but. Yeah, he got a little technical on us there for a bit, uh, but I, I was able to understand what he was talking about. I just had to Google some of the bigger words. Yes? What? Uh, I called Carrie's on his way. Okay, thank you. The uh, mechanism manager is on his way down to uh, to supervise the USB usage. You think of a hot swappable device? As we speak. Oh, damn. Here is Carrie. Carrie, sir. Would you mind assisting Mr. Tucker with uh, <clears throat> basically uh, operating the mechanism? He's got uh, some sort of drive in there. The, me the mechanism. Oh, you have to actually have to plug it in. That's the thing. 
Do, do, do. Thank you so much. All right. Any other questions while he's here? Or? Judge, can we have a sidebar before we proceed? Can we uh, just yeah, keep sure. carry on retainer for the rest of the day? Quick sidebar here. Um, I'll tell you this. The, the prosecution does not want this to continue. Um, we've, we've already impeached this witness. Okay. There's, there's a credibility issue there. They've raised the concern that her work product was not, um, up to standard. And thus, um, I, there's, there's good evidence before the jury that because she was possibly failing in, in some of the, the documentation side of her investigative, um, work that, that it could have tainted the, the evidence. Okay. That that's out there. Now he hasn't shown exactly how that applied to the evidence or, or how, which pieces were, were tainted from that. But uh, he's impeached the witness. He's now going to spend what uh, he thinks is the rest of the day doing the same thing to the same witness. So overkill much? I don't know. Uh, maybe he's going to try to see where it actually applies. We'll see how far the judge lets him do this. But the only other witness for today has already been excused. Uh, we've hit one of those points where I have to excuse you for a few minutes. I don't believe it will be too lengthy, but it's necessary. is going to go for a bit, which is great because we get to, while they leave, we get to take a look at our our drawing and see how we're doing on our thumbnail. Uh, we've got Captain Morgan. I put him over here behind the tree. Had to reverse him. He's standing on his, his pirate chest. So I think that's uh, I think that's as, as good as we can do with Captain Morgan. But uh, I, I think I'm going to veto the blue tarp. The reason being is because it would be up near the All top right, of this. So and the jurors the skies are gone. Already. So uh, we're, we remain on the record here, and un unless you all want to uh, review it outside, off the record, outside the court's presence. And oh, do we get to be here for the review? Please tell me this isn't a rap video that we're going to get a strike from. Okay, we need to we need to do a boat. Unfortunately, that's not possibly an abandoned boat. I'll I'll be looking for one. Let me if I find one, I'll let, I'll bring you in. That's a different idea. That's not the one I want to do. That's one of the ones that's downloading right now. I was making a mistake of thinking that's the one that I want to use right at the moment. We can go back to the cause of the cause and the video that's on there. Number one, then. He's still downloading the video. Okay, so let me just try to figure it out. So what was placed in there is not what you thought it was? Is that no, there's another, there's another audio that I was actually, it's, I thought this audio was the audio that's still downloaded. This one is another, another audio from the Divine Investigation different question. Um, this one here is the Cosmos Marine video that we've already gone over. The only thing is, is I wanted to clarify, there were two points in that. Yeah, to sure that, you know, if there were questions I didn't ask, we'll have it up. I just want to ask two questions. Well, in any event, I, if I, this is forthcoming, why don't you, I'm going to step down, why don't you listen to what it is so we don't have to at least go through that process if, if this is something you're going to use later this on. Video, this is the same video you guys entered in, I only put it there for speed purposes. So, that's all. If you want to ask the clarifying points, I've got about two, two questions. And okay. we'll go with that. That'll be done. Okay. Then this one here, this one again goes through different questions. So I'm sorry, I apologize for that. The other audio is downloading. Hopefully it'll be downloaded soon. This one here. Can't hear very well, but he's he's got the wrong video file. The uh, identification. I can't. I don't want. I don't want to do it without asking a question. Are you just gonna? Anyway, you know, I will put it off to the slot that that just put it while you're out, right? Just to to make sure that you guys are together. I think this is best off the record. It's more. <laughs> Probably should have been dealt with ahead of time, but nevertheless, uh, here we are. Probably. So if you want to take Probably a look judge. at a couple of things, so 
any issues you can raise with me so perhaps we can avoid breaking again when the jurors are here. So let me know when uh, they need me. Okay. Okay, so we're, we have the mechanism working properly. Carrie, Carrie from IT has helped us out there, but we, we now are, are still stuck with the download. Judge is like, I'm out of this. You guys, you guys figure out this tech stuff. This is beyond me, right? Witness is out. She's like, I'm, I'm out too. You guys figure this out. Let's see. Ship track boat icon sample on mod chat. Uh, let me take a look. Is this, is it a uh, clip art I couldn't actually use or? So I'll show you which one I was I was going for. Um, I I did this little uh, this little guy right down here. It's like a rowboat. I was thinking rowboat is is appropriate. I'll I'll delete that one and take a look at what you had offered up. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. I see what you're I see what you're doing here. Um, audio is still on for court, so we're gonna we're listening. As soon as they come back, Wilbur can hear it. We're not missing anything. Um, what did well? What am I searching for? Abandoned boat. Let's do shipwreck. Let's just search for shipwreck. Is that one word or two? I know it has an S H. Is, is it spelled like that? Shipwreck. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it right here. This guy. I like that it brought its own sand. This is good. This is good. Okay, we're going to have to move some stuff, guys. Um, I hope you're not too, too attached to the layout because um, we're going to have to <laughs> move the crime scene, actually. Crime scene's going to have to... Let's put him over here. Let's spin it over this direction. Maybe lay the, the body out that direction. Move the ketchup and all. Um, there. There's there's our, our body's going to be down there next to the truck. Uh, the boat. Let's see. Let's let's scoot this back one layer, guys. This is uh, this is uh, you you can't you can't pay to get uh, this sort of uh, training in graphics and graphic design. This is elite. This is next level stuff here. Let's send backward one more time. Why is it not? Oh no. Okay, here's the problem. The hills and the bushes are one. Um, so maybe we could do like this. Let's shrink it down. Right over there. Is that all right? Is that does that throw off everything? The flashlight needs to move. It can come down here. This case is actually uh, quite entertaining. Uh, it's sad. First of all, it's it's very sad. We've got somebody who's lost their life. Um, it's got uh, obviously people who have uh, lost the uh, you know the quality of life because of choices they made with drug use and everything else. Um, just crazy. Okay, so pirate. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've got a better. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Edit, undo. Don't do that. The tree has to stay right there. I should probably bind that to the the crack. The tree has to be anchored on crack. Um. How do we undo this? Tree on crack is what we need. Okay, move this here. Move this over here again. Now this one, I'm going to give it a little twist. A little twist. There we go. And then we're going to put it down like so. Maybe a bit smaller. Man, that was not it. Okay, this is this is hard because the layers get tricky to work with. Let's make it nice and small right down here, and it needs to cover up. One more down, down right there. Okay, there we go. Boom. Okay. Ah, uh, no, that wasn't it either, guys. Why'd you let me put it out there? was clearly not my fault. A little smaller. Boom. Like so. Sunk the ship. All right, now we're good. Punctured dinghy. All right, sorry, I was ignoring chat a little bit. Um, 
Michelle, Michelle Bachmeyer, if I didn't thank you for gifting a membership, thank you very much now. Crop another version of the hill just to overlay. We'll do that. Let me uh, let me bring back up. We're, we're going to go back to court here briefly because they're, they're getting ready. But uh, palm tree delivery, please. Oh, man. Will the palm tree look funny? Let me see. We, we might put a palm tree like behind the truck, like sort of... Uh, you know, so it's like up up on the moon. Is this is going to end up being like a Where's Waldo picture by the time we're done. This is we're only on day two, guys. We're on day two, and the thumbnail is is getting crowded. Um, I do have fun. I do have fun with artwork. There are no hills in Key West. Are there mounds? Is it like perfectly flat? I've never been there. I, I mean, I've, I've been to Florida one time, and I took you guys with me. Um, need some iguanas also, please. <laughs> they have to be mentioned in the court. They have to be mentioned in the, in the trial for us, to, uh, for us to cover them. Looks like Judge is back. Well, I said, we've got some specific objections, and I'm going to articulate to the court my understanding of what the defendant is trying to do. Okay. Um, the one video the defendant wants to play, he's his assertion is he's going to the witness, he says she testified that Travis Johnson gave corroborating evidence about uh, what was happening, about, being, about him being involved in a crime. A corroborating evidence about Mr. Tucker being uh, Mr. Tucker being involved in a crime. Mr. Tucker's assertion is that that's that she's going to be impeached because on the video, back when Travis Johnson gave a statement in 2017, after he gave his statement which implicated this defendant. After that statement, they asked him to watch the videos. He watched the videos and he said, I cannot ID this defendant in the video. That does not mean she was lying about having corroborating evidence. He is, he is very conveniently omitting the 90 minute interview he gave that he articulated very concisely that this defendant was involved in the planning and the execution of the crime. Now he wants to impeach her with the portion of that statement at the end, where after he gave her oral statement, they said, okay, now that you give back, and we believe you, we think you're credible, we'd like you to look at these videos. And they ask him to look at the videos, and he looks at the video, and he's like, yeah, I think that might be my truck, but the headlights look a little different, and I can't say if that's tie or not. That doesn't mean that she didn't have corroborating evidence. She did have corroborating evidence, but the video itself was not and she kept saying today in her testimony, I know who that was in the truck based on Travis Johnson's testimony. Travis Johnson's testimony articulated that he drove them over there, they got out of the truck, and went to the treehouse. But she never said that she could ID him in the video. She actually said this morning, I can't even see who the driver is. And I can't make out the faces of the people who got out of the truck. So where's the impeachment here? Well, let's hear what Mr. Tucker has to say. Your Honor, I don't care if she gave 90 minutes worth of, you know, other statements, you know, other corroborating, you know, again, where he corroborated his whole story. His whole story could corroborate everything except to when he gets to the point where he says something different. When he actually changes his story, that's when it becomes a problem. You know, and yes, she she was there right there reviewing the tapes with him when he says something different. So it's not corroborated. Pieces, what, so it wasn't corroborated. What difference did he say? He said he couldn't. He couldn't see if it was his truck. He couldn't tell who either individual was in the video, and that you know that it, again he couldn't identify that or corroborate that as the video of the incident. You're taking her testimony too. Um, you're, you're viewing it too narrowly. She's talking about the totality of what he told her, not one specific instance. So that that's not, well, uh, in my view, admissible impeachment. No, I, I, I know. And again, this is one this is one of a few different videos and audios, and we were just having a discussion about this. The, the problem, from what I understand, is that they don't want the entire the entire section or the entire video played just for the section where I'm using it for impeachment. Uh, again, a very simple one is the IA tape that I was going to play, the one that's still downloading. That one, yeah, she specifically says. I thought she we were talking about this one here. I, I, well, I mean, 
Yes, we, we've talked about all of them, Your Honor. That's you know, we were talking about all of them. I know, but and, I'm um, focusing on the one objection that's now okay, before me. The objection of the objection to that that specific that specific video. Okay, again, I would I, I gave you my argument. I, you know, okay. basically, you know, look, she he, she asked him to identify what's in that video. He cannot. Mm -hmm. Which again, you you can certainly cross examine Mr. Johnson, but the t way I construed her testimony was, and, and first of all, frankly, I've been extremely liberal in my view because a lot of this questioning of her arguably isn't even admissible because what her opinion is and what her conclusions are really aren't aren't the issue. But nevertheless, I've given great leeway, but to attempt to impeach her. Uh, by suggesting at one point that Johnson couldn't ID who was in that uh, vehicle, uh, she was talking about the totality of, uh, of his state. What he so I'm, I'm going to sustain the state's objections. Okay. Um, other I'm impeachment sorry, again, impeachment so videos. Sorry. You know, we were talking about, we were talking specifically about a hot mic video that they're they're aware of, they're aware they've seen it, I've seen it, um, where again Daniel Malone said multiple times up on the stand today that they didn't know I, was, I wasn't a suspect at the time they did the raid on the warehouse, right? She specifically said that, right? I still wasn't a suspect, right? This video, again, you can only get audio from it. You couldn't get the video from it, just the audio. But the audio, yes, she knew I was, a, you know, I was considered a suspect long before that, that raid ever happened. She was there when I was named a suspect. I'm just concerned. Excuse me, Mr. Mansfield. Right. I just concerned. I've got a jury waiting out here, I know. and it feels like this is a matter that is just can balloon here, and I'm, I'm not sure that uh, we're not going to have more discussions. So, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's you're on. ideally, like all this stuff, ideally should have been ironed out ahead of time, but anyway, that. Here we are now. So. Well, Your Honor, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I, I agree with yes. you totally. It's, um, you know, my problems with, with doing it earlier today is, again, you know, it was a technical problem because, okay, I have the things on my computer on wherever drive, whatever drive I have them on. Getting them onto the screen is a different story. The other thing is reviewing these things so that the state is okay with whatever I'm putting up there we haven't had a chance to do. And I would like to, I'd like to offer the state the opportunity to do that. But, you know, here we are. And, um, you know, it's like... Judge, if I may just respond to the other video that you framed just from impeachment. During the investigation, there are many names that are banned about their people of interest, people they want to talk to, what have you. At what point this defendant became an identifiable suspect, I don't know. It sounds like he's had a portion of the, where she says, we already... I don't know if she's calling him a suspect or somebody they were already aware of. I don't know that it's clear cut impeachment because I don't know where the inconsistent statement is. Okay. But having said that, I, I, we do need to listen to that. I, he refers to this hot mic. I'm familiar with the hot mic scenario. I don't know what portion he's trying to use. He said it's still down. Which? So I would, I would tell your honor, maybe we should send the jury home for the day and we stay and work these issues out and we pick it up. I, I hate to do that, but. Yeah, I don't see much alternative, quite frankly. And again, I'm not here to point fingers or assign blame, but normally the reciprocal discovery, the defense would say, listen, we got this, this, and this. Uh, they'd be viewed, it would be redacted in the event that there's portions that required redacting, and the judge would be called upon to uh, make these sorts of decisions once the respective sides had done what they could to narrow the issues. Whatever reason, we don't find ourselves in that posture, and I'm concerned that uh, we're, we're going to be going back and forth here, so I don't know how many more of these things, Mr. Tucker, you uh, have lined up. But there, There's a few, Your Honor, and, and to be honest, I agree with the prosecution. I think that is the best solution is that we can send the jury home and we take a look at these things so that way we don't run into these issues. And I will go ahead and make sure any any further impeachment materials, I'll make sure that they, they see long before we ever get there. Okay, I don't see much alternative. I guess uh, when I allotted uh, the amount of time I did, it kind of factored in these potential uh, delays. So... 
big picture, as I said, the amount of time allotted factored in some of this stuff. So I just don't want, if, if I'm going to be in a pay me now or pay me later scenario, whereby uh, saying, okay, hey, the jurors breathe a thought, sigh of relief, they go home early, but then Friday the 2nd, they're sitting here at midnight. I don't want that, but I don't think we're at that point. I'm oh, sorry. I Okay, so when are we going to ask him to be here on Tuesday? Um, well, <laughs> should be a full day. I don't, I don't see, I mean, we have, so like maybe the 9 o'clock, uh, and we'll get here at 9, or have them here at 9.15, and we'll get started. You, you all be here at 9, 9.15 yeah, yes. for the jurors, and yes, of course I'll be available to help if we need some court rulings about this okay. afternoon. All right. Okay, let's bring him in. Wow, the prosecution is so frustrated. And, and I think they're more frustrated by, by the fact that the defendant is acting like he's a lawyer. Now, I realize he's not a lawyer, but he has the right to do this. But just his demeanor, his confidence, his, his swage, swager, what do we call it? Swa swagger. So what happened was he brought impeachment material that he had not shown the defense. And they're like, we have a problem with this. It's like, well, I've got more of it. And he's like, we need to we need to go over this impeachment material before. Jury's now going to be sent home for the day. Uh, for the weekend, for the long weekend, because Monday is a holiday. And be told to come back at 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning. All jurors present in the court. Thank you. Welcome back. Please be seated, everyone. So, you must be wondering, what's going on, Judge? Uh, he told us to come back from lunch, and here we are, and uh, we've been basically hurry up and wait. I can't tell you what's going on. So that's the short answer. What I can tell you is I have it well in hand and that uh, we're going to uh, break early today. Something has come up and what I foresee is that in the long run, we're far better dealing with it now between the, Mr. Tucker, the lawyers and myself rather than keep on shuttling you folks back and forth. Um, not to worry. Uh, we're still on schedule. That uh, schedule that I gave you at the very beginning, we're still well within those parameters. So I'm sorry for any inconvenience that you've had to uh, suffer this afternoon. But again, not to worry. Everything is, uh, you know, normal. This is all part of the trial process. And I think the best way to handle it is to uh, wish you a good weekend. 9-15 uh, Tuesday. and. We expect that you'll be uh, presented with uh, more testimony at that time. So remember the instructions, follow them diligently, vigilantly. Have a great uh, three-day weekend, and see you on Tuesday at 9.15. So uh, I anticipate we don't have much Thank more you video much. for today. How'd you get involved in mine, Doug? All right, uh, see you all on Tuesday morning. <laughs> Courts and recess. I think that's where we're at. We're walking out. Here's the door. That means the jurors are gone. So um, my expectation is that uh, you all are going to have the opportunity what these uh, impeachment materials are, we're going to assess them, and if there are any specific objections, we're going to wind up. If they're not, so much the better. So there, there are, then I'll return and we'll raise them, we'll your argument, and make a decision, and hopefully. Okay, that's it. That's all we get. The feed has stopped. Um, so here's where we are. Let me let me bring this up on. Uh, let me turn that off because we don't need this. Pause that. 
All right. Uh, let me. We're going to go to camera seven really quickly, and I'm going to I'm going to use this moment to, and, and this thumbnail to explain what is going on in the in the courtroom here. So, it's, uh, I, if you can see, I did add a palm tree at your suggestion. So thank you. That was that was great advice. We are watching the Treehouse murder trial. Uh, this is a trial where Franklin Tucker is accused of murder, uh, specifically accused of the murder of a gentleman who was the owner of one of these trailers, this trailer here at the bottom underneath the treehouse. That was him. His name was Matt. Um, what happened? Well, Matt, Matt heard a ruckus upstairs in the treehouse where he had a, um, a resident. And now th there was no power. There's no running water. Um, there was, you know, there was, there was very little up there. I think there was like a bed and a couple chairs. Um, and there was a lot of crack and money up there and Bud and, and Captain Morgan. But he had a resident, a, a lady who, her name is Paula, who um, apparently has, has been around the town quite a bit. Or I, I think they said she got around a lot. I'm not sure what that means, but she got around a lot. And uh, Paula was up there and, and possibly sold crack out of the, the tree house, as they called it. This is down in Key West. And, uh, and so she's got, she's got a buddy. Uh, his name is Robert. Robert's over there like three, three, four, six times a week, uh, drinking Bud Light, Captain Morgan, and smoking crack uh, with Paula. Uh, he's over there one time, I guess in the evening, uh, night doing this, uh, and, and, you know, w with flashlights because they don't have power. Right. Um, and in, in come two guys in the tree house and they, they're up to no good. And they, they work over Paula and, and Roger. Is it Roger? Robert? I, I, I forget his name already. I think it's Roger. And, uh, and, uh, it works them over pretty good and say, Hey, give us the stuff. And, and, and Paul's like, help, Roger, help, help. And, and he's like, I will help you. Give him the stuff. Give him the stuff so they get out of here. Uh, well, so they, they get the stuff. The stuff was the, the crack and the, the money. Um, but while this is going on, they're getting worked over, and, and Roger's getting punched through a tarp and uh, um, down on the ground, knocked out of his chair. Uh, Paula's getting uh, struck as well, uh, threatened with knives. Paula receives a cut on her shoulder. Okay. Um, uh, while this is all going on, there's some, some stuff downstairs up, you know, up comes Matt. It's like, Hey, what's going on upstairs? You're shaking the trailer. You know, what's, what's up? Uh, he comes up, sees what's going on. And he's like, Oh, I see you're just, you're just talking to each other with knives and, and, you know, you know, things. So I'll just go back downstairs. So he goes back downstairs. Well, one of the, one of the two assailants is like, well, I guess now I have to follow Matt. He goes down and then you hear Matt call out. He's like, ah, glug, 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 stops. Um, apparently five stabs was, was his limit and, and Matt's no longer with us. Uh, so he's, he's down on the ground. Uh, the, the defendant who attacked him and stabbed him now goes back up to the tree house. They finish the robbery. They take the stuff, they leave. Um, Roger, uh, says, you know, Hey, I'm going to go do something. I don't know. He goes to CVS. I don't know what he does. He climbs down, steps over Matt's body, goes somewhere and comes back. Um, and, uh, and so we've, we've got this, this scenario, this all happens like two yards down from a, a boat chop shop type setup where this guy works on outboard engines and he's got, he's paranoid. So he's got a barn security system. Shout out to Barnes. Uh, the security system has cameras everywhere. It films everything outward. He's not worried about what happens at his shop. He's covered that, um, but it's filming outward. And so he's got these videos that show a truck pull up and people walking. And, and that's why we've seen some of these videos. Everything happens and it's sort of obscured. It's like, well, just off picture, this is happening. Just off picture, the truck stops. You can't see it because it's behind the boat. And then briefly, you see somebody walk, and then they go around this corner of the building, and that's where the treehouse is. That's what we've seen so far. There's not a lot of like video of the actual event. Um, we, the defendant, Mr. Franklin, uh, is uh, Mr. Franklin Tucker, I should say, is, is a pro se defendant. He's charged in this murder. He seems more upset with the process of how he got arrested and who ratted on him than actually the evidence that may pin him to the scene. So we're, we're seeing, as, as we often see in a pro se defendant, like we saw with Mr. Daryl Brooks, his attacking the process, and you saw his attack on the video. He's like, but at the time you watched the video, you didn't know it was me, so why did you, why did you arrest me? Because at the time you watched the video, don't ignore everything else, where everyone said, hey, that's him. Ignore that. Why did you arrest me if you only look at the video? It's a, it's a weird little argument. I, I, I can't, honestly, I can't get in his headspace to understand why it, uh, why, why he's, why this is so important to him. 
But anyway, so Frank, Franklin Tyrone Tucker, yes. Anyway, he's he's arrested at a warehouse down the road, a ways away where he lives. And the warehouse is like converted into like a whole bunch of apartments. You've seen those. They're usually turning into a fire and people die. Um, but they're very, very dangerous. Um, it's like a warehouse apartment complex, and he's arrested when they search for this other dude. Lots of names being thrown around. We've had some very colorful witnesses. We've had a couple. We expect several more because uh, one guy's already been convicted for his part in this, and another one... Um, the, the Paula, the lady who got the cut, she's going to be testifying if she ever gets out of the hospital, which she's um, battling some illness. She might be over Zoom, um, but she's testifying for the defendant, not for the state. Uh, it's it's this is it's just a crazy story. The pro se defendant obviously throws in another a level of of weirdness on this case. He's doing a good job. No, no, no. I, let me rephrase that. He's doing a better job than most pro se defendants, but it's still far from good. It is, it is far from a first-year lawyer straight out of law school. He's, he's not reached that level yet, but he's doing okay. And he has, he has reasoning ability. He has uh, language skills. He's got uh, a, a good mind, a sharp mind, so he's able to recall a lot of things. But uh, yeah, her throat was cut. It was, it was more of a neck, like a collarbone-type cut. Um, it, not as much as uh, this is – she didn't die. Paula didn't die. She was a surviving victim. But anyway, she's battling an illness over Zoom. I believe so. Aren't, aren't we all? Uh, yes. And Law 101, we have the Law 101 counter. We count something in every trial. And in this trial, we're counting how many times the defendant gets schooled in being a lawyer. Uh, maybe it's the judge saying, hey, here is, uh, here's how it works, actually. You know, they get a turn. You get a turn. I listen. I make a ruling. You obey. Uh, anytime something like that occurs... Uh, we're going to count that. And so far, we're up to 25 times in the two days that we've been in court. So, well, almost two full days. Um, we imagine that I'll probably be with this going as far as what? He said it could go as far as February 2nd. Okay, that was the timeline. If it, if it manages to get that far without a mistrial, which I'm, I'm beginning to have my doubts. Uh, we, we'll, we'll be up in the triple digits, I'm sure. Uh, although I'm sure he's also going to learn along the way, a lot like Daryl Brooks did. He learned along the, along the way being a pro se defendant. Um, anyway, it's, uh, it's a crazy case. The witnesses are going to get crazier. It's going to be nuts. And over all this, over all this, we are, we are keeping, uh, we're making our thumbnail for our video and it's each time we, we post the new video as we hear a new segment of the, of the, of the uh, saga of, of the treehouse murder trial, uh, we're going to use the newer, uh, the newer document. So this is what we have right now with the treehouse murder trial. Um, it's, uh, it's not much, but it's what we've got. So there are items in here that have, have, I think all of them have been mentioned to some degree or another. The, the key lime pie that is sitting on the tire swing right here, and I might move this. I, I might put the pie somewhere else. Maybe we can set it on top of the hood or something just so it, it shows up better because I like the tire swing, and I feel like I'm obscuring it a little bit. Maybe we could put the key lime pie behind the tire swing like this. Maybe we give it a little slant and set it down on the... Uh, there we go. We'll set it down on the suitcases. I think it needs to slant the other direction. Okay, I need to go full screen on this. Okay, key lime pie. Where's the... If we turn it sort of like this way, over there, and send it back one layer. Oops. Send back. There's keystrokes I could use to do this, but I'm, I'm too lazy. Um, there we go. It's gonna. So the, the key lime pie is now sitting on top of the uh, suitcases outside the the camper. Now the suitcases are not featured predominantly in this trial trial. It just they they came with a picture of the camper. But now we've got the the tire swing which is very good. So we wanted that. All right. So a couple other items we've got obviously the crime tape uh that's important. We have the uh the dish satellite because the the homeowner although he didn't run power up to this apartment on his roof, he did use the building to to attach his dish satellite so he could get good reception in his trailer. Um, which the, the upper, upper left floor did not have uh, TV at all. So we've got that. We have crack present, as you see. Uh, crack was, uh, was mentioned many times, many times uh, throughout this trial as, as being associated with the treehouse. Uh, the Bud Light, you know, we've got these cans. I, I, I feel I'm cautious when I'm using uh, company logos in, in artwork like this. And, and I, I figured I could not use, I could not use, um, oh, man. We need CCTV. It's got to be in the palm tree, doesn't it, Danny? 
Okay, so a little a squirrel moment, but we'll, we'll get that here in just a second. But I couldn't use actual Bud Light cans because um, I would get a call from a very, very rich lawyer uh, who was um, asking me you know, where, well, telling me where I could send the deed to my house if I used Bud Light cans in this. So uh, CCTV cameras. Um, I, know, I know in my mind, there it is. That's it. That's the camera. That's the camera. It's going to be mounted to the palm tree. We have to be filming this from the palm tree. There we go. So this is going to be right up here. Let's move this. We've got the cameras mounted. Bingo. It's like it was designed to be there. This is perfect. Okay, I, I don't know where to put the tarp because the sky is blue. And anywhere I put a tarp, it will be behind, you know, behind something. Anyway, uh... Yeah, that, that, that camera was just, it was meant to be there. That's, that was a match made in heaven. All right, the, uh, the next thing. Okay, do we cover everything? We've got Captain Morgan. We've got the crack. We've got the bicycle that Paula rode around town. Um, we've got the beer cans, the flashlight. I need to find a better flashlight, and I'll work on that. We'll, we'll keep the flashlight out and about. Um, let's leave it over here. Where did it go? Where did I put the flashlight? Oh, I shrunk it down. Honey, I shrunk the flashlight. Okay, we'll leave the flashlight over here. Maybe give it a little spin so it's laying on the ground a little better. Like so. There we go. Okay, flashlight sitting on the ground. Doesn't look like a flashlight. It's the handle that's the problem. You guys help me choose a new flashlight, and then we'll get to more important stuff. Um, flashlight spelled with an A. It's very important because the other one is not the same. This is a good one. Has the button. See, the button really, really sells it. Scale it down. Move it back to where we need it. A um, little smaller. There we go. And give it a spin. There we go. Flashlight right there. All right. Um, thank you all for helping me with my thumbnail. I think this could probably be a theme for all the trials we follow. Um, because honestly, this, this works for me as a visual reminder of everything that's happened. Uh, the, uh, I, I look at this, and I don't, I don't see a Where's Waldo or, or a, a Find It um, book. I look at this, and I see the whole trial having unfolded in front of me. So, so this, is, this is almost for my benefit as well. So as we get started every day, I can just take a quick glance at the screen and know where we're at. And you too could uh, could follow along because um, a lot has been added to this uh, to this thumbnail just today, and and as we as we as we go go along. So I, I can, I'm not going to update today's video, right? Today's video, the thumbnail already exists. It's very bare. It's, it's pretty much just like a treehouse murder trial, and you know the tree the treehouse, and, and that's about it, right? But now that we've got all this added um you'll know which is day two by by the end of the trial it will look a, a little bit crowded and it will le look less like art and more like a, can i find space on the page to paste this last picture i need to fit in so things will be on the moon there will be things flying in the sky those vines will probably be um you know there will be clips holding pictures of you know crime scene stuff everything all right um detective if there's a detective on here it's going to be Sherlock Holmes. I, I'm not sure. Not sure if we want to use a detective yet, okay? Because it's the witness we just had. I realized that she was sort of a detective. Um, we need we need a Sherlock Holmes type thing if if we do that, and it would be oh, so tempting to use that guy. So, you know, this guy's good. It's got to be it's got to be full color, okay? We can't go switch to black and white. That would be lessening the quality. This guy is ooh, this is tempting. If we put him behind the truck and made him like spying on the thing, would that be? So we'll, we'll flip it horizontally, shrink it down, send him back a layer. He has to be a little smaller. Um, in my mind, this is working, but we'll see if it actually does. Boom. There he is. He's, he's spying on him. That could work. We could, we could roll with that for now. Might might make some changes later, but uh, there we go. Detective is is watching. 
Inspector Cluzo. <laughs> all right, uh, that's that's our that's all we have right here. As as more things happen, we will add to the uh, the thumbnail, and it will progress throughout the throughout the trial. Uh, I realize just just realize I you guys have had some very very good suggestions, but um, I can't do everything, right? At some point, we have to say there will be no tarp. <laughs> <laughs> M. Lee Looney. It's not quite a brandy chart, but it's making me laugh. Uh, yes, brandy would, would have this uh, all, you know, there would be little strings connecting all the evidence, and, and you could follow it very clearly. The tire is a tire swing. Maybe make the rope thicker. The, the, rope, the rope came with the picture. So the, the tree house in the tree, um, it, was, it was already... It was already a thing. It was all together. And this is a clip art compilation. If, if it was something that I designed every part of this, I could, I could fix and make it better. But I, I just can't. A tarp on the RV. Okay, so just, just understand, Selena, we can try to do that, but we, we literally have to use clip art. I can't, I can't manipulate the tarp picture. And, and let me show you just what we have um, as far as options when it comes to tarps. Uh, there's, there's not a lot. There we go. I'm over here on this window. These, these just aren't, you know, we can't, go, we can't go with this simple. It needs to be, it needs to fit with the picture a little bit in, as far as detail goes. So it can't be line art. Um, it also couldn't be a photo. I mean, you, where, where does the tarp, tarp over here and back? It's, it would be hard to see. It looks like a paper airplane that's been fly, floating around. So I'm just not sure how to make that happen right now. So maybe if you guys find some, some better options. See, if, the, if there wasn't sand on this one, this would be a, a little better. Let's see, if you, if you click on, no, not that one. Looks like a turd. Sorry guys. Um, anyway, so not sure about not sure about that. The tarp is a tough one to do. Well, I think we need to do this every trial. <laughs> Can you enhance the rope? Uh, yes, there was a moment where the the defendant was watching a video and ba literally asked the uh, I'm not sure if it was the the um, the courtroom staff or the witness if they could enhance the video so you could see the detail in a, an obscure part of the picture. Okay, a tarp with Roger in it. Uh, we're saying no on the tarp. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a good tarp yet. Uh, let's see. Mandy, Mandy, can you give a quick overview of what the case is about? Well, this is it, basically. We've got it all in a picture. We have a, a murder that happened in the treehouse. The treehouse, the only part of this that is not accurate is that there was no tree. Okay, and I realize that is, it's, it's almost like false advertising, but the, the, the people in the area called the treehouse the treehouse. It was actually a, a house house because it was a, it was a house built on top of a house. It was a tree house built in, on top of a house instead of in a tree. And uh, lots of drugs involved, lots of shady characters, security camera footage at night, um, crack cocaine, Bud Light, Captain Morgan, uh, Plentiful. Uh, that, that's that's basically where we're at. And we've got a defendant accused of murder. Now I'm not sure if they're they're saying that he was the 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 individual who who did the murder or if he was just an accomplice. Okay, because I haven't got that far yet. But when we find out which one it was, you know, it, it really it, it might not matter according to the law if you if you're a participant. Even the getaway driver, because okay, there was a getaway driver with the truck. Um, the getaway driver could, in theory, be charged the same. But the getaway driver, mid crime, drove away. He was like, "I'm out of here. See ya." He ditched them. He did not, did not take them away. He had one job and and did not do it. So, all right, uh, we're gonna go back here, as as we're getting done. Did the bike have a basket? No, does this bike doesn't have a basket? Do we need a basket to make it a girl's bike? I think I've got it. I've got it set up as a as a boy's bike right now, right? Let's take a quick look at the bike options. I did choose the first one that was available. I think bike. 
Uh, let's see. Let's give me a few other options. Ooh, look at this one right here. Check, it's pink. And we're going to get rid of this uh, nice BMX bike and switch it for this beach cruiser with a basket. And that's, it gets a little small. Like the... See, now that's... The, the, the tone's wrong. I can't use that one. It's gone. It's gone. It's, I vetoed it already. Uh, pink. That's why pink didn't work. We need... Let's see. Possibly this one. Yellow. Does it, does it hide too much? Scale it down. Move it into position. Maybe give it a little twist to... Can we... No. No, it's just the orientation isn't right for our picture. This is the one I used, I think. Or, no, it's right there. That's the one. Okay, I'm going to use the, the magic of time travel and go back and fix and put the bike back right where it was with the one we had before. There we go. So we'll, we'll leave it like that. It works better for the picture. Can you add a shadow behind the bike? Uh, what I would be able to do is uh, copy that and paste it. Make a second one. Let's uh, transparency like so, and then drag it around a little bit. Give it a little twist. I mean, is that, is that shadowy enough? It looks sort of funky. Is that all right? That looks like a time travel, like a, a blurred bike. All right. Um, the, you guys, we've been having a lot of fun here. I've missed uh, what's happened in chat a little bit, so you'll have to to catch me up just briefly the pretty flowers the problem with one of the pretty flowers is the lines are the lines are too narrow we really need a, a bold drawing of a bike to match the theme that we have here Gonna wait for more to download that this is how i imagine them writing uh, with Roger on the front and, and Paula standing on the pedals on the back around town. I imagine that's how it went down. This one, could, this one might work. The spokes are a little... Now, the spokes are the same color as the grass. That doesn't work. But I'll, I'll look at it more. Um, boys can have baskets too, says Lee. And the odds are they did. Odds are they did. Um, where's the crack pipe? Uh, Ivan, uh, here's what we did. We, we just, we went along, we decided to be monetized instead of demonetized. And so instead we just put some crack on the tree. Um, that's, that's our crack right there. It's on the tree, right? You know, on the way to the tree house, knowing that, that this is the way, this is the way to crack is going up that ladder. That's how you get to crack. Okay. Can you do a buckle swab? Buckle swab, all it looks like is uh, right here. Let's see. Q-tip. This, this is our buckle swab right here. Although we would... Uh, yeah, where, where do you put the buckle swab? It looks like a, a bad tiki, tiki torch. All right, uh, enough of that. We'll leave it. We've, we need to stop building because the case has stopped for the day. Uh, what program is this? I use Canva. Um, this is Canva. I'm not, I might be able to give you guys a referral, actually. Hang on. Um, let me do a quick check and see if I can refer you to Canva. Uh, it might give you a special deal. Um, let's see. Canva, no, that's not it. Insights, no. Not 
shared. Hmm. I'm I'm checking to see if I can show you like if I can like I can invite members. I'm just not I'm not seeing it. Um Canva, C A N V A. It's uh it's an art program. I think I pay I think I pay five or six dollars a month. Or maybe it's fifteen dollars a month. But I make all my all my um my still images from that. So I use it a lot. Don't forget to save your it saves automatically. I, I love it about that. It saves and it's uh I can actually have it open on two computers and it's it updates instantly. So one person fixed I fix it on one computer and it's all automatically fixed on the other. Um Let's see, uh, way behind, but when they show two people walking near the boats, it looked like one of them had his hands in his pockets. The defendant walks the same way. Mm, it's got that same swagger. Uh, nosy Rosie, I'm glad you found the hot chocolate. It is delicious. Can we all add it together? Uh, Greeners, I wish... Well, yes, we could. We could, but I have to pay per each membership. And it costs more to add members than it, it costs to be a member on the channel for a month. So uh, it would get it would get quite pricey to invite you all to uh, to make the thumbnail. What's the defendant's name, please? Uh, Franklin Tyrone Tucker. I I will tell you this that uh, the the witnesses we've heard from so far, uh, like Roger, the uh, the accounts we're hearing from different people of that uh, were in this area. Mr. Tucker doesn't strike me as a, you know, what you'd call it, like a crackhead, a, a druggie, someone who's strung out. He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, doesn't strike me like that at all. He's he's very smart. He's educated. He's uh, he's good. I'm I'm behind, but listening to R.A. tell this story just made me cry. <laughs> Hopefully in a good way. Alley Cat, also known as I am I my own lawyer. He is. He's pro se, his own lawyer. If in Australia, if you work in education, Canva Pro is free using your work email. That is cool. I'm not sure if they do that here. Can you show his mugshot? If you did, I missed it earlier. I, I neglected to show his mugshot. I can do that now. Just one second. Let's bring that over. Let's see. We might. You know what we might do? Let's, let's, go, to, let's go to this. We might put his mugshot in the picture somewhere. This is the mugshot at the time of his arrest. Obviously, the little goatee, uh, less less hair, top and bottom. Um, now, he doesn't look the same at all. But that was him at the time of his arrest. And this was what, like five, six, seven years ago, quite a while ago. He's had seven years to clean up and study. Why is it taking seven years? Let's see. Um, Mrs. R.A. says, a recovery addict, your son just tried to feed your cat chocolate almonds. His generosity is going to have serious consequences. Chocolate almonds are Mrs. R.A.'s. Um, I need to go save my son. <laughs> just kidding. Um, you can use Figma to have everyone collaborate on an image. As long as the, the images are, um, are free to use, so I can use them in my production. And, and, you know, I'm using them technically. I'm using them in a commercial use for profit so as long as that's authorized we could do that everyone looks guilty in the mugshot it's something to do with the lens it's something to do with the lens of the camera in the in the jail or the lighting one of the two chocolate is bad for cats i don't think the cat would have eaten it no serious consequences for the cat chocolate is bad for them okay so did chocolate did he eat the cat did, did, did the cat eat the chocolate Now we have problems. We might have like a, a vet trip over the weekend. All right. Um, this is this is where we're going to, to bring it to an end because apparently I have to do some some pet ownership stuff. No, he was saved by the other kids. Okay, that's good. That's good. So no chocolate in the cat. Yeah. 
Are we going to stream on Monday? K Rab, it's going to be a holiday. Uh, so if we stream on Monday, it's not going to be a traditional stream. There could be some other stuff we cover. There have been some some pretty cool car chases here in this last week. Um, I think the ones from this morning got away and they were going like 120 uh, in a, a Dodge Challenger or something. That would be a fun one. So we might have some car chases. I'll just have to check. I'm not planning on being anywhere else. That sort of depends on what happens with the weather. Uh, if the tornado tonight blows the house away, we might not stream on Monday. It might be a day later. But uh, if, if we do stream, it's going to be a, probably a half-day stream covering some other stuff. If some documents drop in some cases, we might review those. But uh, that'll be good. All right. Um, can you put his mugshot in the pickup? Like as the driver? It's going to be hard to see, but I could. Um, let's, let's, go, let's go over to, uh, to do this. Let's do a quick upload. Upload files. We want this guy right here. Mugshot imported. Bring it in. Now, this is the coolest thing ever, guys. Watch this. This is, this is how I do this. Edit photo, background remover. Three, two, one, magic. Just like that. We now have, we now have uh, Mr. Defendant just there in the, uh, let's see, we only need, we only need a little bit. So he's just going to be looking out over the, let's shrink this down just a tiny bit. Honestly, this is why I pay for Canva. That, that one feature is why I pay for Canva. Let's shrink it down a little more, like so. Bring him down, put him in the truck. We have to rotate him a little bit. Got to zoom in. Okay, let's uh, let's see how this is going to look. Uh, let's take the top off a tiny bit. So that's okay. And the bottom, let's shrink him down even more. That's about the right scale. So now we send him backwards like this. Layer, send backwards. Oh, man. There's our problem. So edit, undo. We can't do that. That means we have to manually sort of... Okay. Now it gets tricky, okay? Because now we have to sort of crop to make it look like he's in the truck when he's not. So, so there's the top. And then the bottom window is going to be right here. That's that's the best we can do right here. Uh, I I will say I I think so now he's our defendant is in the is in the pickup truck. I'm not sure if he ever was. I mean I, there there hasn't been any testimony that he was in the truck, right? He could poke his head out of the truck. This is advanced art, bite me. Uh, I I'm on the introductory level. Um. That's not a recommended way to drive. The truck is parked. It's good. It's 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 staking out the position. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Clip art for the win. I appreciate your donation. Don't forget to spray. Kilroy was here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right. All right. With that. With that said, I think we're I think we're done with this for today. We're gonna we're gonna go back to to where we were. Put him in the RV. The RV doesn't really have windows that would work well. The fact that you can't make him out of the driver fits with the facts of the case, says culpristic. culpristic. Uh, yes, nobody could identify who was the driver. All right, guys, it has been a lot of fun. It's the end of the day. It saves automatically. It's, it's saved instantly. Um, it's saved in the cloud, Babs, so I don't have to do anything. Uh, the program is called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. I love it. There is a free version, but free has very limited art choices. Uh, let, me, let me show you. If you guys are interested, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to share. Uh, this, uh, if, we, if we were to look at, say, elements of art right here and, and search for a tent, okay? We want to search for a tent. Any item here that has a crown down here in the corner, that's the pro version. You have to pay for it. So you would, you would have to look and say, what, what pictures would I get for free? Well, you would get this one here. Uh, you'd get these ones, but these these first five you would not get. Um, anything with a crown in the corner, you would not. They would show it to you, but it would be like an opportunity to pay for the upgrade. So the free version is very limited. Um, 
it's it also limits uh, some of the things you can do on the download on, on the on the um, see well, I'm going to download here with a compress the file quality so it can be two megabytes or less. So there's there's we're ready for we're ready for um, for Tuesday when we start. But Canva is the program. It's a website thing, so it, your computer really doesn't need to do much uh, work at all. It's all done on the on the web on the cloud side. But but that's it. Um, I have my wife on subscription. Awesome. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for the great comments. I appreciate everyone sharing, especially the uh, your street names. That was hilarious today. Uh, it was it was wonderful to hear what everyone's street name is, <laughs> and to hear your suggestions for mine. But that's good. Hopefully, uh, we got you through the workday today. Whatever you were doing, we've made it through uh, tonight. Tonight, Weather Watch, are you going to go live tonight with the weather watching? Are you going to watch how the uh, Mother Nature is is wrecking havoc yet again across the country? Because if so, we'd love to send people your way. I'm, I'm not sure if you're uh, if you have a, a thumbnail up yet. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Waiting for an answer. Looking, looking. Let's see, severe weather threat seems to be dwindling quite a bit, so no weather. No weather. Well, that's good news for everybody, but bad news for you for your live stream. Uh, so if there's no threat, uh, no low live stream, I guess. It is the weekend. It's going to be a long weekend. Please be safe over the weekend. Tonight when you go home, please hug the people you love. Smile at someone. Make their day just a little bit better. And please stay safe till we go live again. Something crazy could happen. Could be over the weekend. Other than that, we will definitely be live. Maybe for a short one on Monday. And then uh, and then Tuesday we'll be back in court. That's when the next uh, session of this trial continues. Live out of the Florida Keys. Uh, the uh, the treehouse trial it's turning to be a really good one. So I'm looking for somebody to send to uh, Brandy's live. Do we want to go? She sent people to us on on lunch. We'll we'll send people back. Does that work? We'll all jump over and say hi to Brandy. Brandy is so close to hitting fifteen thousand. You guys, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, you guys have a great night. We'll see you guys later. I wasn't ready. I don't have my picture yet. Hang on, hang on. Because he's the guy. I was gonna, I was gonna go to the outro like, like this, and it would be like the treehouse. But no, let's go to this one. There we go. Okay, guys, we're gonna Brand raid Brandy. Make sure you hit the like button when you land uh, and say some nice things. Appreciate that.